The Life of Izuku Midoriya, My Hero Academia Izuku Midoriya, also known as Deku, is the main protagonist of the My Hero Academia manga and anime series. Even though Izuku is born quirkless, he manages to catch the attention of the legendary hero All Might due to his innate heroism and a strong sense of justice, and has since become his close pupil as well as a student in Class 1A at UA High School. All Might passed on his quirk to Izuku, making him the ninth holder of One for All. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Izuku Midoriya. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Background As a child, Izuku greatly admired heroes and dreamed of being a hero like his idol All Might once he got his quirk. However, by the time children his age manifested their powers, Izuku still showed no signs of developing any special abilities. Due to that, his mother took him to a doctor from whom he received the terrible news that he has two joints in his pinky toe, which meant he would never have a quirk. Later on, Izuku kept watching videos of All Might that night on his computer and tearfully asked his mother if he could still become a hero. She hugged him and apologized, words that Izuku would remember as not what he wanted to hear because they made him feel inadequate to those with quirks. Even so, Izuku still kept aiming to be a hero and to get into UA High School. This ambition led him to be constantly bullied and ridiculed by his childhood friend Katsuki Bakugo and his classmates who believed it was impossible for someone without a quirk to ever become a hero. Despite this, Izuku still considered the two of them to be friends at the time, always following him around. However, things escalated when Izuku tried to help Katsuki after he fell off a small bridge into a stream. Izuku offered a helping hand, but Katsuki's pride caused him to take this as an insult. He believed that Izuku made him appear as if he needed aid from someone who was beneath him. This would strain the relationship between the two for years to come. Entrance Exam Arc Izuku is attending class at Aldera Junior High while his teacher announces that all students will graduate this year. Once his teacher announces that Izuku is attempting to get into UA as well, Katsuki is shocked and furious. He berates Izuku and uses his explosion quirk to scare him, claiming that someone who's quirkless can't get into UA and can't do anything at all. After class, Katsuki takes Izuku's hero notebook, burns it, and tosses it out the window. Izuku leaves the classroom to retrieve his notebook and recollects about how he started dreaming about being a hero as well as how he found out about his status as quirkless. The same day, while walking home, a villain fleeing the scene of a crime encounters Izuku. The villain had apparently escaped All Might earlier in the day. The villain decided that, to avoid detection, he should take over Izuku's body. Just as Izuku fell into despair, All Might showed up and saved him. Stunned, Izuku asked for an autograph but finds All Might left it for him before he could ask the questions he had on his mind. In an effort to get All Might to stay, Izuku latched onto All Might's leg and hung on while he launched himself into the air. After a brief struggle, All Might agreed with Izuku that he would die if he had let go, and they soon landed safely on a rooftop, where Izuku asked if he could become a hero without a quirk, telling All Might that he always wanted to be a hero and save people. Suddenly, All Might's appearance drastically changes to a more skeletal, skinny form. Small Might, if you will. All Might reveals to the shocked young man that he was injured in a battle five years ago and can only stay in his hero form for a short period of time. He goes on to tell Izuku that professionals must always put their lives at stake to save the day and thus cannot openly say whether it's possible to be a hero without a quirk, as it may not be possible. He tells Izuku that it's not bad to dream, but warns him not to obscure the facts and then leaves. Devastated at the words of his idol, Izuku starts reconsidering his dream of becoming a hero. His thoughts are interrupted as he gets near the scene of a villain attack. Izuku recognizes Katsuki as the victim being possessed by the sludge villain that had attacked him earlier and feels guilty that he might have accidentally let the villain escape from All Might's possession. Izuku, having looked at Katsuki's pleading eyes, rushes towards the villain, attempting to save Katsuki despite being quirkless. As the sludge villain prepares to attack Izuku, All Might, inspired by the boy's action, shows up and defeats the villain before before Izuku could get hurt. The pro heroes at the scene started berating Izuku for his reckless behavior. Katsuki became so mad that he was nearly saved by Izuku that he caught up to him and told him that he wasn't saved by him at all before angrily walking away. All Might appeared and thanked Izuku for reminding him what it means to be a hero, and then explained that what he did was what most top heroes did in their younger days. This made him tell Izuku that he can become a hero as he offered him the chance to become one. All Might tells Izuku he's worthy to inherit his strength and that he has the power to transfer his quirk to people. To Izuku's shock, All Might then begins to train him at the Takaba Municipal Beach Park by moving large pieces of garbage around, such as trucks, large office drawers, various craters, and bookshelves. He explains Izuku has to train his body to be strong enough to withstand the power of his quirk, otherwise it can result in Izuku losing limbs. After 10 months of intense training, the day of the entrance exam arrives. 
At 6 o'clock in the morning, at the last possible second, Izuku moves the final piece of garbage of the entire beach. All Might is amazed as Izuku cleaned the whole beach and commends him as he cuts off a piece of his hair and gives it to Izuku, who is surprised he has to eat it, receiving his first dose, a very small piece of one for all. However, because the entrance exam is so close, Izuku must hurry to the school without getting used to the power. Izuku arrives at UA for the entrance exam, excited that he'll be able to have a chance at becoming a hero. As he runs forward and trips, Izuku is saved by a girl's quirk. The girl says she's nervous and asks if he is as well, to which he replies with a nod. Later, during Present Mike's presentation of the exam, Izuku gets called out by Tenya Ida for his endless mumbling, which he considers improper behavior. As the practical exam is about to start, Izuku gets intimidated by Tenya once again, this time for acting suspicious towards the girl he met before. Tenya berates Izuku, which garners attention from the applicants who mumble to themselves how Izuku resembled a failure for his behavior. During the practical test, Izuku tries to destroy a one-point robot, but finds himself too afraid to even move. Yuga Aoyama appears and destroys the robot. Izuku realizes that he's running out of time. Suddenly, a huge zero-point robot appears and begins destroying the area. Izuku tried to run away, but then he sees the same girl who helped him before on the ground about to be attacked by the zero-point robot. Seeing her in danger, Izuku mustered up the courage to fight the robot and for the first time uses one for all and attacks the huge robot with a devastating punch which completely destroys it and saves the life of the girl while shocking everyone else with his feet. However, Izuku's bones immediately break due to having never used it before and he begins falling. He tries to use Detroit Smash to land safely, but before he could activate it, the girl, whose life Izuku saved, uses her quirk to allow him to land safely. The practical test is declared over, much to Izuku's sadness, as he didn't get a single point before he passes out from exhaustion. While unconscious, Izuku is called amazing for taking down the giant robot by his peers, who wonder if he was intentionally looking weak, with only Tenya noting how Izuku selflessly protected the girl. Luckily for Izuku, Recovery Girl then heals his heavy injuries almost instantly. One week later, Izuku receives a letter that will determine whether he was accepted into UA or not. Izuku opens the letter in his room, and a screen with All Might on it appears. He apologizes for not contacting Izuku earlier, and informs him that he will be working as a teacher at UA. All Might tells him that he did fine on the written test, but that he scored zero points during the practical test. Izuku accepted this and prematurely assumed he failed. However, All Might tells him that because of his heroic actions during the practical test, he earned 60 rescue points from teachers, meaning he passed and therefore has been accepted into UA, much to Izuku's joy and happiness. Quirk Apprehension Test Arc Izuku, now a student of UA, talks with his mother before leaving home to his first day at the school. As he arrives at Class 1A, Izuku hopes not to see either Katsuki or Tenya again as he enters the classroom. He finds his fears realized as he witnesses both Katsuki and Tenya arguing with each other, much to his frustration. Tenya approaches Izuku, apologizing for his treatment and congratulates him on his feet during the entrance exam. Right after, Ochako arrives at the classroom, with her cheerfulness embarrassing Izuku. While observing the scene, Katsuki recollects about a skirmish he had with Izuku about the results of the UA entrance exam, with the latter managing to show courage against his longtime bully after being threatened. This is followed by the homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa, coming into the classroom and explaining to the students about the quirk apprehension test that they must go through. Shota further explains that whoever gets last place in the test will be expelled from UA High, putting massive pressure on Izuku. The students are tested on the power and use of their quirks through several exercises under Shota's observation. But because of his lack of control over One For All, Izuku is unable to use it in most of the trials, which leads him to performing below the standards set by his classmates. When the time comes for the ball pitch trial, Izuku, left with no choice, tries to throw a ball as far as he can using One For All, but Shota stops him by erasing the quirk. Izuku recognizes him by his goggles and powers as the hero eraser head. Shota tells the student that, with a quirk like One For All, Izuku will be nothing but a burden by putting himself in danger several times, and that if he doesn't find a way to prevent One For All from massively crippling his own body, Izuku's future as a hero will be put in jeopardy. Shota then allows Izuku a second chance for the pitch trial. Keeping Shota's words in mind, Izuku powers up only the end of one of his fingers and launches the ball at a considerable distance. He shocks his class with his display as he tells his teacher he's still standing as Shota is impressed with his feet. Izuku, because of his broken finger, underperforms through the remaining tests, eventually getting last place. However, after showing the results of the test, Shota reveals that he lied about the expelling in order to motivate the students to give their all, calling it a logical ruse, much to Izuku's shock. 
While Shota is leaving, he sees All Might, who tells Shota that he knows that he was actually planning to expel last place from UA. All Might then concludes that Shota sees the same potential in Izuku that All Might sees. Shota shrugs off All Might's words and says that the chance of Izuku becoming a great hero is higher than zero, and that he doesn't see anything more than that, claiming to expel Izuku if he sees his chance ever fall below that mark. At the end of the day, Izuku is joined by Ochako and Tenya, with the newly formed trio walking back home together, where Ochako tells Izuku that his insulting nickname of Deku, given by Katsuki, sounds like the Japanese word for you can do it, causing him to adopt the nickname. To Tenya's surprise, Izuku explained his views of his name has just changed. Battle Trial Arc As the hero class starts, All Might tells his students to wear their hero costumes and head to ground beta. Izuku reminisces about the time he had to order a costume of his own. It turned out that Izuku's mother had made the costume herself by hand after looking through some of her son's annotations, feeling guilt for previously not believing that Izuku would become a hero and promising to always cheer for him from now on. Wearing said costume proudly, Izuku stepped into the training field. Izuku gets teamed up with Ochako and is tasked to stop a team composed of Katsuki and Tenya from blowing up a fake nuclear bomb. They successfully infiltrate the building and look around the corners to see if anyone was coming, where Katsuki ambushes them. Izuku manages to save Ochako from Katsuki's attack, but half of his mask is burned off in the process. As Katsuki is about to attack him again, Izuku intercepts him, grabs his right arm, and throws him to the ground, knowing that he would use his right arm to attack. Izuku tells the surprised Katsuki that he memorized his moves, as the same notebook Katsuki blew up and threw away in the past contained notes of heroes he's analyzed, which includes him. Izuku announces that he's no longer the Deku who was a loser, but the Deku whose vibe is never giving up, much to Katsuki's fury. Izuku tells Ochako to go on ahead while he fights Katsuki, who tries to attack him again. Having predicted that, Izuku evades and manages to grab Katsuki's leg with the capture tapes, but Katsuki breaks free using an explosion. Knowing that he's at a disadvantage, Izuku retreats in order to think of a plan and contacts Ochako to learn about her location for the strategy. Eventually, Katsuki finds him and attacks Izuku with a greatly empowered explosion move provided from his grenade gear bracers. Izuku survives and calls Katsuki insane for doing that. Izuku decides to use his quirk and informs Ochako to grab onto something instead of hitting Katsuki. Izuku aims his Detroit Smash into the ceiling, destroying the ground of every floor above them, including the one Ochako and Tenya are on, but Izuku is forced to take the full brunt of Katsuki's explosion. Izuku is then taken away on a stretcher to have his wound attended to by Recovery Girl. After spending most of the day having his wounds healed, Izuku returns to his classroom. As he enters, Izuku is commended by many of his classmates for his performance during the battle trial. Ochako asks him if he's alright, to which he replies that he's fine. Izuku then asks her where Katsuki is. Although many of his classmates try to stop him, Izuku goes to find Katsuki. After Izuku finds him leaving school, Katsuki accuses him of coming to gloat. Izuku instead tells him his secret, that he obtained his quirk from someone else in order to convince him that he had not been deceiving him, but the latter doesn't believe him and swore to defeat him. USJ Arc Izuku is confronted by a reporter from the media asking him questions about All Might, but Izuku makes an excuse to escape from the reporter. In class, Shota Aizawa makes a remark about Izuku's performance in the battle trial and encourages him to work harder. Afterwards, Izuku is elected as class president after the class votes, much to his shock. In the lunchroom, Izuku is unsure if he's the right one for the task, but Tenya assures Izuku that he is, as he voted for him. As they continue talking, the siren goes off and everyone begins evacuating. After Tenya stops the chaotic evacuation, Izuku returns to class where he decides to step down as class president and give the position to Tenya, deeming him more worthy of the position than him, which is well received by everyone. Izuku changes into his gym clothes, since his hero costume was tattered during his battle with Katsuki in the battle trial, in preparation for the rescue trial. On the way to the USJ, Suyu compares Izuku's quirk to All Might's, which worries him, although Eijiro Kirishima dismisses Suyu's claim since Izuku's quirk hurts him, unlike All Might's quirk. Izuku then watches as the rest of Class 1A make fun of Katsuki, which contrasts to their time in junior high. They soon arrive at the USJ and listen to 13's speech. Suddenly, actual villains soon attack the USJ, which shocks Izuku. Shota goes to hold off the villains, though Izuku tried to warn him that he couldn't, but is amazed to see his teacher hold his own against the villains. Tenya then gets his attention by telling him to evacuate with his class. However, he's suddenly warped away by Kuragiri to the flood area of the unforeseen simulation joint. 
Sent to the shipwreck zone, Izuku falls in the water where he's about to be attacked by a shark-like villain who prepares to devour him, but Tsuyu saves him and throws him onto a boat along with Minoru. Izuku thanks her for saving him. Izuku then wonders about the villain's goals and then decides that their goal now is to fight. Izuku says that Tsuyu was teleported, along with him and Minoru Mineta, to an area, the Flood Zone, that allows her to be at full strength thanks to her frog quirk, and then deduces that the villains don't know what their quirks are. He then says that although the villains beat them in sheer numbers and experience, the one advantage they do have is the element of surprise. Izuku concocts a plan to defeat the villains and escape, and after telling Suyu and Minoru, Izuku uses Delaware Smash on the water while Minoru throws his sticky substance. The spread out water converges in the center along with Minoru's sticky balls, with the villains being pulled in, causing all of the villains in the water to be stuck together by Minoru's quirk. Izuku then escapes with Minoru and Tsuyu, with Tsuyu saying that he was impressive. After that, Izuku rambles that could have been dangerous. Tsuyu cuts him off and he says that their priority is to call for help, that they can take the water slide to the exit, but after remembering that Shota is at the central plaza fighting a large group of villains, Izuku decides that they should head to the central plaza and try to be of some assistance to Shota. However, after reaching the central plaza, Izuku is horrified to see Shota's condition after he's defeated by a monstrous villain. Izuku is surprised to hear Tomura Shigaraki announce that they're retreating and wonders why they came for nothing. However, this train of thought is quickly interrupted as Tomura attempts to disintegrate Tsuyu, but Shota uses his last bit of strength to nullify Tomura's quirk, saving his student. Izuku then uses the opening in an attempt to save Tsuyu by attacking Tomura. He uses one of his smashes on him, but this time, Izuku doesn't suffer from recoil. However, the attack was intercepted by Nomu, who isn't phased as Izuku realizes Nomu is the secret weapon against All Might. Nomu grabs Izuku's arm, but Tsuyu wraps her tongue around him. Suddenly, All Might appears, much to Izuku's happiness. Izuku is then rescued by All Might along with Minoru, Tsuyu, and Shota. All Might tells the students to take Shota to safety while he faces the villain. After seeing All Might in a bad position, Izuku decides to help him, but he's nearly warped by Kurigiri. However, Katsuki's attack stops him. Izuku is then joined by Shoto, and they hold down Kurigiri until Nomu attacks them to save the villain. However, All Might protects Katsuki even though Kurigiri was freed. Izuku then watches the battle between All Might and Nomu and worries for him as he's the only person who knows about the latter's time limit. After Nomu's defeat, Tomura and Kodogiri attempt to finish off All Might, but Izuku intervenes their attempt by running in front of All Might to protect him. Izuku's intervention gives the heroes enough time to reach the USJ, forcing Tomura and Kodogiri to stop their attempt. After Tomura and Kodogiri retreat because of the arriving heroes and 13's attack, Izuku is seen on the ground crying as he was unable to do anything to help. However, All Might tells him that isn't the case, because if Izuku didn't intervene, he would have been dead, and he thanks Izuku for saving his life. Afterwards, Izuku is taken to Yue's infirmary to have his injuries attended to. Yue Sports Festival Arc The next day, Izuku listens to Shota's announcement about the Yue Sports Festival. After the discussion, All Might arrives asking Izuku to have lunch with him. In the resting room, Izuku tells All Might that he's adjusting to his quirk, which pleases All Might. All Might asks Izuku to show the world at the sports festival that he's the next generation's All Might. However, Izuku's unsure if he's up to the task. All Might assures Izuku that he's not forcing him and asks him to remember his feelings during his training at the beach park. During the two weeks before the sports festival, Izuku trains himself. On the day of the sports festival while Class 1A prepares, Shoto Todoroki approaches Izuku, telling him that he's stronger than him and will defeat him. Izuku admits that Shoto is indeed stronger, but since everyone's giving it their all, Izuku will also give everything he's got. He then walks out to the sports festival with his head up high, stating to himself that All Might can retire. Once the obstacle course race begins, Izuku manages to get through the narrow gate while avoiding Shoto's ice. Izuku sees that there's robots in front of him and decides that now's the time to put his head to use, no longer shaking in fear unlike the UA entrance exam. Izuku grabs a metal plate and severs a robot's head with it using the robot's momentum. Izuku passes the fall but soon sees that he's far behind. Izuku gets on the metal plate and blasts himself towards the lead using the landmines he had collected. In the lead, Izuku sees Katsuki and Shotar on his tail using the two as balance. Izuku slams the plate on more landmines. This launches him once more and blows dust in their eyes, stunning them. Taking advantage of this, Izuku runs ahead and crosses the finish line in first place, which allows him to advance to the second event of the sports festival, which is the cavalry battle. Izuku then finds out that he's worth 10 million points in the cavalry battle. Because, you know, he got first place in the race course, which horrifies him as he's now the prime target. Because of his value, Izuku has trouble finding teammates, but then Ochako decides to team up with him, which makes him happy. 
Izuku then tries to team up with Tenya as he has great synergy with Ochako's quirk, but he politely declines, much to Izuku's disappointment. Mei Hatsume decides to team up with Izuku, I see he's building his harem, as she would be recognized for being on his team due to his rank. Izuku decides on his final team member and chooses Fumikage Tokoyami. The event begins and Izuku's team is attacked by Team Tetsutetsu and Team Hagakure, but thanks to Mei's gadgets and Fumikage's dark shadow, they manage to thwart their attacks. The team takes to the air, but they're suddenly attacked by Katsuki. Fumikage uses his dark shadow to block Katsuki's attack, and the team lands on the ground. Izuku says that they should have an easier time now, but takes those words back when they're confronted by Shoto and his team. Izuku and Shoto's team battle, with neither team having the advantage. In a surprise twist, Tenya uses his Recipro Burst, allowing Shoto to take his 10 million headband in an instant, shocking Izuku. Izuku becomes distressed, but thanks to Ochako's encouragement, Izuku remembers that his teammates' fates are in his hands and decides to attack Shoto with One For All as a symbol of their unity. Izuku uses One For All to blow wind pressure at Shoto, which distracts Shoto and allows Izuku to take a headband. However, Izuku took the wrong headband and his team fights Shoto's team for the last 10 seconds. The event ends and Izuku becomes depressed. Fumikage reveals that he took a 615 point headband during Izuku's scuffle with Shoto, which allows his team to move on to the last event, with Izuku crying in happiness. After the lunch break begins, Izuku is seen with Shoto in private in a hallway, with Izuku asking what it is that he wanted to talk about. Shoto asks whether Izuku is an illegitimate child of All Might or not, but Izuku states that it's not the case. Shoto then tells Izuku about him. Shoto's story leaves Izuku shocked and speechless. Although their goals are different, with his goal being trifling compared to Shoto's, Izuku says that he can't let down the people who have helped him get this far and declares that he will defeat Shoto. The final event is a tournament event and Izuku's opponent in the first round is Hitoshi Shinso. When Hitoshi approaches Izuku, Mashira Ojiro warns Izuku not to respond to his provocations. Before the first fight begins, All Might goes to see Izuku and advises him to smile in the face of anxiety and fear. A confident Izuku steps out of the ring to confront Hitoshi. After Hitoshi calls Mashirao an idiot for throwing away the opportunity to participate in the tournament, the fight begins and Izuku, who is angered by Hitoshi's insults, charges at him while yelling that he not insult Mashirao, but then suddenly and mysteriously stops moving. Izuku finds himself to be completely immobile. Hitoshi tells him that he's lucky to have been blessed with a heroic quirk. Hitoshi orders him to turn around and walk out of bounds. Izuku, under the effects of Hitoshi's brainwashing quirk, obeys Hitoshi's command and slowly starts walking towards the edge of the ring. Still conscious, Izuku tries to stop himself but finds that his brain feels like it's full of fog and his body is moving on its own. As Izuku is just about to step out of bounds, he sees a vision of eight shadowy figures, which causes Izuku to attack himself with one for all, allowing him to break free of Hitoshi's control. After a brief struggle, Izuku throws Hitoshi over his shoulder and rings out Hitoshi, causing Izuku to move on to the second round. Before leaving, Hitoshi warns Izuku to be weary of him. Izuku then heads to Recovery Girl's infirmary to have his wound attended to. After his wounds are fixed, Izuku tells All Might about the shadowy figures he saw. All Might hypothesizes that the shadowy figures he saw were the imprints of people who had bared the One for All quirk. All Might advises Izuku to go and watch the next match. Izuku, along with Tenya, go to their seats in the stadium to watch the match. Izuku watches the match and becomes worried when Ochako gets hit by Katsuki's explosions. After Ochako collapses and is declared the loser of the match, Izuku expresses sadness. Izuku leaves his seat and walks away. Along the way, he encounters Katsuki and congratulates him on winning his match. Izuku visits Ochako to see if she's alright. Wanting to be by herself, Izuku leaves the room and walks to his next match. Suddenly, Izuku runs into Endeavor. Endeavor tells Izuku to give Shoto a good matchup. Before Endeavor leaves, Izuku states that he's not All Might and Shoto is not Endeavor. The match begins and Izuku prepares to charge. Izuku manages to barely hold off Shoto's ice attacks with One For All's wind pressure, but breaks two of his right hand's fingers as a result. However, Shoto is still able to close in on Izuku several times. After seeing Izuku's injuries, Shoto decides to end the match and sends a wave of ice, but Izuku sends a blast of wind pressure against Shoto's ice with his broken right hand, destroying the ice. Izuku knows of Shoto's limit and berates Shoto for only using half of his power to win while everyone else is giving it their all. Izuku clenches his broken right hand and orders Shoto to face him man to man. In enraged, Shoto runs towards Izuku to face him head on, but Shoto's frostbite affects him, allowing Izuku to hit Shoto with a one for all enhanced punch, knocking Shoto down onto the floor and slightly injuring him. However, Izuku is hit by Shoto's ice in the process of punching him. Shoto manages to get back up and launches another wave of ice, but Izuku uses One For All's wind pressure to shatter the ice with ease. Izuku once again berates Shoto for using only half of his power and mocks Shoto's disowning goal. 
Izuku hits Shoto again. After Shoto gets back up, Izuku tells Shoto that the firepower he has is his power and not his father's. Shoto, moved by Izuku's words, activates his firepower and states to Izuku that he too will become a hero, causing Izuku to crack a smile, happy to see his opponent finally giving it his all, like himself. Izuku and Shoto power up for one final clash. Izuku's wind pressure and Shoto's heat blast creates a huge shockwave. After the smoke clears, Shoto is still in the ring, but Izuku is out of the ring. Izuku's grievous injuries makes him fall to the ground. Thus, Izuku is eliminated from the tournament event. Inside Recovery Girl's room, Izuku asks All Might for his forgiveness since all he wanted to do was help Shoto overcome his misery. All Might tells Izuku that his match was simply an unfortunate outcome, but praises Izuku for helping Shoto with his problem. Izuku leaves Recovery Girl's room with All Might and they walk down the corridor. Izuku admits to All Might that someone else is better deserving of one for all than him. However, All Might reveals that he too was quirkless, surprising Izuku. All Might encourages Izuku by saying that only he can truly shine with one for all. Izuku watches the final match between Katsuki and Shoto. During the match, Izuku yells at Shoto to keep fighting. After the fight, Izuku watches the closing ceremony of UA's sports festival. Tenya told him about what happened to his brother and that he has to leave the sports festival. Izuku wishes for Tenya to be safe. After the sports festival is finished, the next day at his home during breakfast, Izuku and his mother talk to each other with Izuku, saying that she almost had a rougher time than she did. Izuku's mother is happy about Izuku's quirk, although she's a bit uneasy about its risky recoil, but nevertheless will keep cheering Izuku on. Izuku decides that he must find a way to control One for All properly. Izuku's mother asks if he wants to watch a recording of the UA Sports Festival, to which Izuku replies that he will later on. Versus Hero Killer Arc Two days after the sports festival, Izuku is on a train to UA. While on the train, some of the passengers recognize him from the sports festival, acknowledging his prowess. At UA, Tenya is running and passes by Izuku, telling him that they should be at least 10 minutes earlier for school. After arriving inside, Izuku sees Tenya and remembers that recently his older brother Tensei had been seriously injured by a villain named Stain. Izuku tries to talk to Tenya, but he tells Izuku that he doesn't have to be worried about his older brother as he'll be fine and apologizes for causing him unnecessary concern. In class, during the hero informatics period, class 1A must decide on hero names. Izuku thinks of using names similar to All Might's name, but he wants to be more original and eventually picks a perfect name. Izuku reveals his hero name to be Deku. After Class 1A is finished formulating their hero names, Izuku is given a list of 40 workplaces he can choose from so that he can train from one of them. After the class period, All Might meets Izuku and tells him of a nomination from a person called Gran Torino, the friend of All Might's predecessor. All Might advises Izuku to choose Gran Torino for his workplace training, as he'll be able to advise Izuku on One for All's usage. Thus, Izuku decides to go to Gran Torino for his training. Izuku arrives at Gran Torino's address and enters his apartment. However, Izuku finds Gran Torino to seemingly be a foolish old man and prepares to leave, disappointed. Suddenly, Gran Torino jumps towards the door and reveals he was merely putting up an act, as he tells Izuku that he can't stand to see how Izuku uses his quirk, and tells him that if he wants to learn more about One for All, then he should stay and put his hero costume on. Seeing the man's real persona, Izuku compares it to All Might's and realizes he's indeed the latter's teacher. He accepts the man's offer to train. He and Gran Torino have a mock battle, but Izuku is not able to keep up with Gran Torino's speed. After the mock battle finishes, Gran Torino gives a hint about Izuku's problem with One for All, that he thinks it's special. Izuku ponders about Gran Torino's hint and realizes that quirks are simply body functions with One for All being no different. During the night on his first day, Izuku steps out of Gran Torino's apartment and goes to an alley in order to test out One for All by thinking of it as a simple body function. Izuku continues his practicing until morning. At breakfast, Izuku ponders why he still can't gain control over One for All. After a new microwave arrives and Izuku fails to cook the taiyaki properly, Izuku realizes his next problem, that he's only been using One for All in one section of his body and not letting it flow throughout his body. Izuku activates One for All throughout his body and asks Gran Torino to test him. Izuku battles Gran Torino while One for All flows throughout his body. This time, Izuku is able to keep up with Gran Torino, but Gran Torino decides to get serious and strikes Izuku. After the battle, the elderly hero notes to himself that Izuku has dramatically changed in such a short span of time and compliments Izuku for being able to graze him and a cut is shown on Gran Torino's face, even though he was using his own power earnestly. Gran Torino tells Izuku that he must get used to using One for All throughout his body and informs him that he'll continue training after breakfast. After breakfast, Izuku continues his training with Gran Torino. Gran Torino declares that he'll move on to phase two, which is workplace experience. Izuku cleans himself up and puts on his hero costume. Izuku and Gran Torino leave the apartment, and Gran Torino and Izuku leave for a train to Shinjuku. 
On the train, Gran Torino tells Izuku that they'll be fighting villains since they appear at night. Suddenly, the train experiences an emergency stop and a pro hero comes crashing into the train, much to Izuku's and Gran Torino's shock. Immediately afterward, a creature that looks similar to Nomu appears. Izuku tries to take action, but Gran Torino orders Izuku to stay put. Gran Torino jumps from his seat and slams himself into the Nomu-like creature, smashing the creature and himself out of the train and into the air above Hosu. Izuku goes to check on Gran Torino, but sees that a part of Hosu has been set ablaze. Izuku wonders what's transpiring and starts to worry about Tenya's safety. Izuku exits the train and starts running towards Hosu. In Hosu, Izuku witnesses the battle between the pro heroes and the two Nomu-like creatures. Izuku is surprised that Tenya is not at the battle and starts pondering. He quickly figures out that Tenya came to Hosu to find and hunt down the hero killer Stain. He leaves the apartment and searches for Tenya, and manages to find Tenya in an alley where he's on the ground injured and Stain's about to kill him. Izuku activates one for all throughout his body, dashes at great speed, and punches Stain in the face, preventing the hero killer from finishing off Tenya. Izuku announces his arrival and declares that he came to save Tenya. He asks Tenya if he can move, but Tenya tells him that he's immobilized. Stain praises Izuku for his efforts and then threatens him. Izuku decides that he must protect Tenya and the injured pro hero. Tenya tries to dissuade Izuku from fighting his battle. Izuku puts on a brave face and says that getting involved in other people's business is one of the principal qualities of a hero. He activates one for all full cowl and briefly fights Stain. Izuku's enhanced speed manages to allow him to avoid Stain's powerful strikes and attacks Stain from above with 5% Detroit Smash. However, Izuku's move doesn't do anything and Stain immobilizes Izuku with his quirk. Stain, impressed with Izuku's actions, decides to spare Izuku but prepares to kill both Tenya and the pro hero native. Izuku yells at Stain to stop, but to no avail. Suddenly, two columns of fire and ice attack Stain, but he manages to avoid the attack in the nick of time. Shoto reveals himself and tells Izuku that he texted him more information than usual and came running. Izuku watches Shoto's battle with Stain. He warns Shoto to not let Stain get his blood. Stain jumps into the air and prepares to stab Shoto with his katana. Izuku realizes that he can move and activates one for all full cowl again. Izuku, using enhanced jumping speed, appears before Stain and grabs him, attempting to throw him onto the ground. The hero killer retaliates by knocking Izuku away with his elbow, causing Izuku to fall onto the ground. Izuku and Shoto team up, Izuku attacks, but Stain easily strikes Izuku, licks his blood, and immobilizes him. As Shoto and Tenya battle Stain, Izuku is able to move again. Izuku and Tenya team up and attack Stain with their enhanced punch and kicks respectively. Stain makes one last ditch attempt to kill Tenya, but Shoto attacks Stain with his fire, causing him to lose consciousness. Izuku, Tenya, and Shoto remove Stain's weapons. The three, along with the injured pro hero, leave the alley with Stain in tow. Gran Torino appears and berates him for not following his orders. Tenya apologizes to Izuku, although Izuku admits that he should have been more of a friend. Suddenly, the winged Nomu appears and grabs Izuku. Stain awakens, frees himself, and kills the winged Nomu as well as saves Izuku. Izuku is shocked at Stain's actions. After Endeavor arrives, Izuku tries to break away from Stain. Stain's bandaged mask falls off and reveals his true face, shocking Izuku. Stain walks forward and declares that the only one who is allowed to kill him is All Might, unleashing a bloody malefic aura in the process. Izuku becomes terrified and unable to move due to the fear. After Stain loses consciousness for the last time, Izuku, along with Shoto and Tenya, are taken to the Hosu General Hospital to have their wounds treated. The next day at Hosu General Hospital, the chief of Hosu police, Kenji Suragame, appears to talk to them. Kenji tells Izuku, Shoto, and Tenya that the hero killer is undergoing treatment. Suragame states that they must be punished along with their mentors for not being with them. However, Suragame tells them that the event that transpired with Stain will be covered up due to a limited amount of witnesses. Kenji states that Izuku, along with Shoto and Tenya, have a promising future and thanks them for their heroic actions. Soon, Tenya tells Izuku that his left hand will not work properly and has decided not to get surgery because he wants his injury to remind him of his mistake at Hosu. At the end of the week, workplace training comes to an end. Outside Gran Torino's apartment, Izuku thanks Gran Torino for looking after him. Izuku praises Gran Torino for his training as it's allowed him to become stronger. Gran Torino advises Izuku to maintain his control and composure when using One For All and to not go over the 5% limit. Before leaving, Izuku tells Gran Torino his hero name, making Gran Torino smile. Class 1A has foundational hero studies next. All Might says that their lesson will be a rescue training race through Playing Ground Gamma, an industrial site with many densely packed lanes which makes it look like a labyrinth. Izuku, along with Mashida, Tenya, Mina, and Hanta are the first group that will be racing each other to reach All Might. The race begins with Izuku activating one for all full cowl 5% and begins leaping and running through the site with ease while outpacing the others to get the lead. 
All Might and a majority of Class 1A are greatly surprised and amazed by Izuku's extraordinary movements and better control of his quirk since they previously counted Izuku out. Izuku focuses on keeping calm and his power level steady. However, his foot slips from a small pipe and he falls into a painful faceplant. After Hanta wins, Izuku remarks that he still has much to learn and that he'll have to remember to take more care of where he jumps to. All Might approaches Izuku and is impressed with him. He asks Izuku to meet with him so that he can tell him about One For All's history. After Izuku meets with All Might in the break room, All Might reveals that Izuku's One For All quirk was not stolen by Stain, which is because One For All can only be passed on when the user wishes it. All Might tells Izuku about One For All's origin. Originally, a man who was quirkless was given a power storing quirk by his evil older brother whose quirk stole and passed on quirks. Unbeknownst to the older brother, the younger brother had a quirk which could transfer, thus the younger brother's transfer quirk and the power storing quirk mutated and became One For All. However, the younger brother couldn't defeat his older brother and passed on One For All onto successors until it was strong enough to defeat his evil older brother. Eventually, One For All was passed onto All Might and he used it to defeat the evil older brother. However, the evil older brother has returned. Thus, Izuku will face him in battle when the time comes. Izuku says that whatever task All Might gives him, he will accomplish no matter what as long as All Might is by his side. All Might thanks Izuku. Back in class, Shota reveals that Class 1A will be going to a forest lodge during summer break. Final exams arc! In the lunchroom, Izuku, Tenya, Shoto Ochako, Suyu, and Toru Hagakure eat at a table, discussing how they'll perform in the end of the term test. Back in class, Izuku reveals the content of the exercise test to the class, much to Denki and Mina's happiness before Katsuki berates them about being excited that they have no control over their powers. During the next three days, all students study hard to pass the written exam. Then they prepare to face the bots in the practical exam, but Principal Nezu reveals that Class 1A will be fighting against UA teachers in their exercise test. Shota says that Izuku and Katsuki will be paired together, much to their shock. Izuku and Katsuki become more surprised to learn that they'll be facing against All Might in combat for their exercise test. All Might tells the duo to cooperate together in order to defeat him. Izuku and Katsuki have two options of winning and passing the test exercise. They must either handcuff him, or one of them must escape from the battlefield. Izuku notes that this will test their fight or flight decision skills. All Might puts on super compact weighted bracelets to give himself a handicap. The test exercise begins. However, Katsuki and Izuku aren't able to agree on a plan of action and start arguing. Suddenly, All Might throws a punch which devastates the area Izuku and Katsuki are in, which causes Izuku to fall down. Izuku is shocked at the level of All Might's strength, even though he knows that All Might is handicapped and severely weakened to begin with. Katsuki attacks All Might but is not able to inflict any damage on him. After blowing Katsuki away, All Might turns his attention to Izuku. Izuku activates One For All Full Cowl and attempts to escape but jumps into Katsuki. All Might imprisons Izuku on a guardrail and punches Katsuki in the stomach, greatly injuring him and sending him flying backward. All Might prepares to finish off Katsuki. Katsuki tries to move but to no avail. Suddenly, Izuku activates One For All Full Cowl again and breaks free of the guardrail. He then punches Katsuki out of the way and the two escape from All Might. While escaping, Izuku convinces Katsuki to work with him by reminding him that he never gives up on winning. All Might chases after Izuku and Katsuki, which then Katsuki appears from behind and attacks All Might with an explosion which distracts All Might. However, one of Katsuki's grenade bracers is missing. Suddenly, Izuku appears behind All Might with Katsuki's missing grenade bracers equipped on him. Katsuki yells at Izuku to commence his attack. Izuku aims the grenade bracer at All Might and releases the trigger. An immense explosion blasts at All Might at point blank range. After the explosion's finished, Izuku and Katsuki dash towards the exit. Suddenly, All Might appears before the two, asking Katsuki what he plans to do after that, shocking Izuku and Katsuki. Before the young heroes can react, All Might disables the duo with his strength. Izuku tries activating One For All Full Cowl, but All Might stops him and throws him onto the ground. All Might decides to finish off both of them. Suddenly, Katsuki gets up and launches a big explosion against All Might, which distracts the symbol of peace. Katsuki decides to distract All Might long enough for Izuku to escape. As Katsuki blocks off All Might, Izuku successfully activates One For All Full Cowl and begins his escape while All Might smashes Katsuki onto the ground. Seeing Katsuki in trouble, Izuku rushes back to help and punches All Might in the face, then drags Katsuki with him. Izuku passes through the escape gate along with the unconscious Katsuki in tow, which allows Izuku and Katsuki to pass the practical test. After they both pass the exam, All Might carries them to Recovery Girl's tent to be healed. Back at UA in class, Izuku tries to help those who failed the practical exam relax by telling them that something will happen that will still allow them to go to the forest lodge. Shota arrives at class and announces that everyone passed the written exam and will go with all of the class to the forest lodge, which will be a boot camp, but those who failed the practical exam will receive very hard extra lessons. 
the class sees that there are many items on the list that they don't have. Toru suggests that Class 1A go shopping together in order to get the items they need for the boot camp. The next day, most of Class 1A, except Katsuki and Shoto, go to the Kiyashi Ward Shopping Mall, a shopping center that caters for all needs. Most of Class 1A splits up to go and buy their specific needs, leaving Ochako and Izuku alone. Izuku asks Ochako what she plans on buying and tells her that he plans on buying heavy wrist weights. Ochako says that she requires bug repellent, however, she begins blushing as soon as she looks at Izuku. The blushing Ochako runs off on her own, shouting bug repellent, leaving Izuku confused and worried as he thought that Ochako was referring to him as a bug. Suddenly, a hooded man asks Izuku for his autograph after recognizing him from the UA Sports Festival. The hooded man admires Izuku for surviving against Stain and living to tell the tale. However, after hearing him talk about the USJ, Izuku slowly realizes that the Hooded Man is a villain he had already met prior to the encounter with Stain. The Hooded Man reveals himself to be, in fact, Tomura Shigaraki. However, this time, he doesn't have his signature hand on his face. Izuku and Tomura sit in a plaza where Tomura explains to Izuku that he hates many things. However, what he truly despises above all is the hero killer Stain. When Izuku asks Tomura that Stain was one of them, Tomura reveals that Stain was never a part of the League of Villains to begin with, and that the media and society merely speculated that Stain was a part of the League. Tomura asks Izuku what the difference is between him and Stain. Izuku answers Tomura's question by telling Tomura that Stain and him were inspired by All Might and started their journeys thanks to him. Izuku says that Stain didn't destroy because he wanted to, he destroyed in order to try and change the world for the better according to his ideals. While he doesn't agree with Stain's methods, Izuku respects Stain for living according to his ideals and never giving up on them. Tomura feels exhilarated as he now understands why Stain and Izuku irritate him. It's because of All Might! Tomura also understands why he hates the current society as well, because they're all living happily and grinning like All Might. And with that, Tomura thanks Izuku for chatting with him. Suddenly, Ochako appears and wonders who Izuku's talking to. Tomura lets go of Izuku and begins leaving, warning Izuku to not give chase. Disappearing into the crowd, Tomura tells Izuku to take care of himself because the next time they meet, he will kill him. Ochako calls the police. After the police force closed down the mall, Naomasa Sukauchi takes Izuku to the police station to be questioned by him about Tomura and their conversation. Although the information Izuku provides is nothing new, Naomasa thanks him for the information and praises Izuku for being level-headed during his confrontation with Tomura, as well as keeping collateral damage to a minimum. While waiting for his mother, Izuku meets with All Might and asks him if there were people he couldn't save, to which All Might replies, yes. All Might says that the symbol of peace is hope for heroes and a deterrent for villains. Izuku's mother arrives, crying about what transpired, and Izuku tries to calm her down. My Hero Academia 2 Heroes After a special training exercise with several members of Class 1A, All Might receives a message from his former partner's daughter, Melissa Shield, inviting him to Eye Island for the special expo event to reunite with her father, David Shield. All Might runs into Izuku on his way home and asks him to be his plus one to accompany him to Eye Island, which he excitingly accepts. While on the plane, Izuku calls out to a daydreaming All Might as he wants him to check out the view of Eye Island from up in the sky on their plane. All Might chose to invite Izuku because their bond with One For All is thicker than blood. After the plane lands at the airport, Izuku sees All Might shift into his muscular form, and he explains that he must maintain this form the entire time to keep his weakness a secret. All Might double checks everything, including if Izuku got permission to bring his hero costume along. As they pass through immigration, All Might asks Izuku what he knows about the island and isn't surprised when Izuku's muttering habit starts. Eye Island is an artificial moving island built for scientists to research quirks. The pair tour the island before a young woman appears and shows familiarity with All Might. Seeing their talk, Izuku nearly mistakes her for the friend All Might mentioned until All Might introduces Izuku to Melissa Shield. They arrive at a laboratory where Izuku is amazed to see All Might's friend and Melissa's father, David Shield. David then has everyone leave while he and All Might talk, asking Melissa to show Izuku around the expo. Walking together, Izuku and Melissa continue getting to know each other. They go through the Eye Expo where they notice many pro heroes, including Godzilla, all invited to the event by sponsors. Everyone on the island is also invited to a reception party at the end of the night. Melissa asks Izuku if he's attending and he confirms it, realizing why All Might made him pack formal clothing to her joy. Izuku is taken by Melissa to the pavilion where she shows him several different inventions out on display. Izuku hears Melissa state she's a third year student at Eye Island Academy, studying to be a scientist in the same way Izuku is becoming a hero. They share the same goal of becoming like the people they admire. Izuku learns the rest of Class 1A is also on the island too. They just can't attend the expo until it's open to the public the following day. Just then, the group hear an explosion and go check it out. 
which turns out to be part of the villain attack attraction, where they find Eijiro and Katsuki fighting villain bots. Katsuki goads Izuku to take on the villain attack challenge, which he reluctantly accepts, managing to score second place behind Katsuki using full cowl at 5%. Melissa notices that Izuku's power is very similar to All Might's, though he's limiting his power. The group is then surprised by the arrival of Shoto Todoroki, who steals first place, ignoring Katsuki's complaints, forcing the rest of the boys to try and intervene. Afterwards, Melissa provides invitations for Denki and Minoru to join them at the after party as they all prepare to go together, with Melissa inviting Izuku to go to their lab first. Melissa gives Izuku an old support item she invented that was inspired by All Might, calling it Full Gauntlet, equipping it to Izuku's right hand. She says she could tell from his scars and performance that his quirk is too much for his body to handle, and that that device will greatly increase the amount of power he can exert. She asks him to become a great hero that can protect people. Izuku and Melissa soon go to meet up at the central tower outside the reception hall with the rest of the group in their formal attire, still waiting for Katsuki and Eijiro, who unbeknownst to them have gotten lost. Suddenly, they discover themselves locked up by the security system, with their cell phones losing signal and no access to the elevators. Knowing All Might's in the party, they quickly head up to the third floor above the reception hall to find out what's going on. Once there, they find All Might and many other pro heroes tied up while being watched over by villains. Izuku manages to get All Might's attention, and using Kyoka's quirk, they learn the situation. A group of villains led by Wolfram have taken control of the island's security system, holding everyone on the island hostage, and that they've taken David and his assistant Samuel with them. Tenya suggests that, since they still can't legally fight villains, they should try to escape with the rest of the group discussing about what the best course of action would be. Izuku stands firm that he wants to save everyone, and that they can do it without fighting, with Melissa saying that if they can try to get to the top floor of the tower, they can reset the security system and release everyone. Reinvigorated, everyone decides to work together to execute the plan. Izuku tries to tell Melissa to stay behind, but she refuses because she's the only one who can disable the security system and wants to help save everyone just as much as Izuku. They relay the message to All Might, who mostly disapproves but agrees that true heroes must act in situations like these, having faith in them. After heading up over 50 floors, a poor decision from Minoru leads the villains to learn about the students, as Wolfram sends his men to cut them off and neutralize them. The group ends up in the plant factory, where they hide when they notice the elevator carrying the villains makes their way there. At this same moment, Eijiro and Katsuki appear, unaware of what's going on, leading to a confrontation between the two and the villains. Shoto stays behind to assist in the fight, using his quirk to create an ice pillar that raises the others to the next floor. After passing a hundred floors, they realize the security resistance has lessened and believe that the villains are trying to lead them somewhere. Once on the 130th floor, they're faced with dozens of security bots. They attempt to destroy them with Denki's quirk, but when that fails, Izuku utilizes the full gauntlet for the first time, pushing the bots back with a 30% one-for-all smash. The group is ambushed by more security drones while in the server room. Melissa warns them that they can't afford to damage the room, so the group once again splits up to try and hold off the drones with Izuku, Melissa, and Ochako heading forward. The three reach the wind power generation system, where Ochako uses her quirk to float Izuku and Melissa to the emergency exit at the top of the tower. Just as she's about to be attacked by more robots, she's saved by Katsuki, Shoto, and Eijiro, who repel the robots. Katsuki and Shoto help readjust the wind turbines in air, allowing Izuku and Melissa to get back on course, which Izuku achieves by using a full power Detroit Smash. After recovering, the two are attacked by one of Wolfram's mercenaries, who attacks Melissa and is then quickly disposed of by Izuku. The two are shocked to not only find David and Sam in the vault by themselves, but also overhear them working with the villains, leading to a confrontation. A tearful Melissa demands to know why her father did this, which he admits is because his device, one with the power to amplify quirks, was taken and locked away by the island's sponsors, and that Sam provided him with the idea to hire fake villains to use as a distraction to steal it back. He further explains that he knows that All Might's quirk is disappearing, and that he wants to give it to him so that he can continue being the symbol of peace. Melissa angrily tells David about everything their friends did to save everyone, and everyone who got hurt in the process, confusing David. Wolfram then makes his dramatic appearance, revealing that they themselves being fake villains was all just a ruse. Izuku goes to try and attack, but he's quickly restrained by Wolfram's metal manipulation quirk. Sam betrays David and gives the device to Wolfram, claiming that David turned his back on him, only to in turn be betrayed by Wolfram, who's about to shoot to kill Sam, only to be saved by David, who jumps in the way of it. 
Wolfram grabs David, telling him he'll use him to keep mass-producing the device. Melissa pleads with them to let him go, and before they can kill her, Izuku escapes and fights back, forcing Wolfram to flee. Izuku tells Melissa he'll save David, while she disables the security system, releasing everyone from their binds and shutting down the drones. Izuku catches up to Wolfram as he plans to escape in a helicopter. Wolfram taunts Izuku, asking if he's there to rescue a criminal, with Izuku crying out that he's there to rescue the professor. He grabs a hold of the helicopter, attempting to take off, trying to rescue David, but is attacked by a barrage of metal pillars that eventually slam him back onto the ground. He cries out about letting the villains escape, but All Might soon returns, telling him to keep smiling. Greatly leaping into the air with great force that results in the helicopter losing turbulence, All Might rescues David as the two, plus Izuku and Melissa, reunite. Wolfram uses David's quirk amplification device to exponentially boost his power, transforming the tower's roof into a scrap metal hell. Before All Might can be crushed under a torrent of scrap metal, Izuku appears, breaking the iron prison apart and saving his mentor. As they thank each other, All Might asks Izuku to aid him in this final battle. Izuku arms his full cowl and places his faith in Melissa's full gauntlet as the two race into the heat of battle, rushing past an endless iron assault from their foe. As Melissa and the rest of the students cheer on the heroes, All Might and Izuku go beyond their limits to break through Wolfram's last-ditch effort with Double Detroit Smash, finishing the villain off with twice the full might of One for All. As the scrap metal hell disintegrates into dust, Wolfram is defeated. The quirk amplification device is destroyed, and David sees a proud Izuku, reminding him of All Might in his youth, realizing there's still hope for the next generation. Izuku then proceeds to meet with the rest of his class and take part in the expo proper, before eventually looking off into the city and thinking about the future as they prepare to leave. Force Training Camp Arc The first semester of UA ends and summer break begins. On the day of training camp, Class 1A boards a bus that'll take him to the Forest Lodge destination. An hour later, Class 1A's bus stops for a restroom break. However, Class 1A notes that Class 1B is not at the rest stop. Suddenly, two females wearing cat-like costumes and a small boy appear. Before they could speak, Izuku excitedly introduces the females as the professional hero team, the Wild Wild Pussycats. Mandalay explains to Class 1A that they have three hours to traverse to their base. Pixie Bob uses her quirk to send Class 1A down to the forest. They encounter a dirt beast. Izuku, along with Shoto, Tenya, and Katsuki, mobilize and destroy the dirt beast. After this, Class 1A begins traversing the beast's forest. The class arrives at the facility at 5.20 p.m. Pixie Bob admits that she thought they would take longer to get to the facility. Pixie Bob commends Izuku, Tenya, Shoto, and Katsuki for taking quick action against one of her Earth Beasts and concludes that they have experienced action against villains. Izuku then asks about the boy Kota and wonders if one of them is his mother. Mandalay explains to Izuku that Kota is her nephew and asks him to say hello to Class 1A. Izuku introduces himself to Kota. Suddenly, Kota punches Izuku in the crotch and begins walking away. The class fetches their luggage from the bus, puts it in their rooms, and heads to the dining hall to have dinner. They finish eating dinner and head to the hot springs for a bath. After Kota begins falling, Izuku catches him using one for all full cowl. Izuku brings the unconscious Kota to the cabin's office, who had passed out from the fear of falling. In the office, Mandalay thanks Izuku for being there to help him. Izuku's surprised that Kota has a jaded view on heroes. Mandalay explains that there are people in the world who don't like heroes, and if Kota had a normal upbringing, then he would have grown up to idolize heroes as well. Pixie Bob arrives and tells Izuku that Kota's parents, who are Mandalay's cousins, were once heroes. Pixie Bob tells Izuku about Kota's history, and after hearing it, Izuku is reminded of his encounter with Tomura and his similar resentments towards heroes. The next day at 5.30 a.m., Class 1A are outside the training camp cabin. Shota greets his students and tells them they'll undergo reinforcement training to strengthen and upgrade their quirks, which will allow Class 1A to obtain their temporary licenses. Izuku's training consists of intensive stretching, under the supervision of Tiger, one of the pussycats. When Class 1B arrives at the training area, Tiger asks that all strength-type quirks train at his boot camp, and to demonstrate how his training will be, Tiger asks Izuku to attack him. Izuku uses 5% Detroit Smash, but Tiger easily evades Izuku's moves and punches Izuku back and notes that his muscle fibers haven't yet teared. Later at 4 p.m., Izuku makes his own curry, and while walking back to his class, Izuku follows Kota's footprints and finds him. He offers the curry to Kota after surmising that he didn't have anything to eat. Kota harshly tells Izuku that he doesn't want any of his food or company. Kota expresses his contempt for the current society of heroes and villains. 
Izuku tries cheering up Kota with a story about someone born without a quirk and couldn't accept the reality, explaining the moral that it hurt to reject reality. Enraged, Kota orders Izuku to leave and starts threatening him. Izuku then walks away. The next day, which is the third day of the lodge trip, it's the afternoon and Class 1A along with Class 1B are undergoing their quirk strengthening training. Pixie Bob informs the students that tonight they'll be playing a game, a test of courage. That evening, both classes cook themselves dinner. During the test of courage later that night, Spinner and Kenji appear in front of the Pussycats and the remainder of Class 1A. They attack and knock out Pixie Bob. The Pussycats prepare to take action while Izuku realizes that Kota is alone and defenseless. Mandalay tells the Class 1A students to leave and orders Tenya to take the lead. As Tenya leads his classmates away, Izuku tells Tenya to go on ahead as he informs Mandalay about the villain's objective. At the cliff, Izuku appears in time to save Kota from Muscular's attack. Izuku concludes that no one can help since his phone got broken in the attack and the location he's fighting in is secret. With no other choice, Izuku activates One For All Full Cowl and prepares to fight the villain who's revealed to be the one that murdered Kota's parents. Izuku prepares to fight Muscular while protecting Kota. The battle between Izuku and the villain begins. However, Izuku is taken by surprise by Muscular's empowered speed, causing Izuku to be smashed into the rocky wall. The villain attacks again, but Izuku uses his one for all full cowls and hand speed to evade in the nick of time. Muscular kicks Izuku into the rocky wall again. Izuku lies on the ground injured and is shocked at the incredible strength and speed of the villain's quirk. He uses an enhanced one for all punch, but it does nothing. He is then knocked back. Muscular considers Izuku an inferior version of him. He torments Izuku for thinking that he can save the world with his hollow strength, mocking Izuku for being unable to back his words up and laughs at the injured Izuku. Before the villain can attack Kota, Izuku jumps at Muscular using one for all full cowl, telling him that he's the one at fault. Izuku analyzes the villain's speed and notices that it surpasses his own and the only slight chance of victory is to close their speed gaps. Izuku punches Muscular with his broken arm, trapping it between the villain's muscle fibers. With no other choice, Izuku decides to unleash his quirk's full power. Izuku uses one for all 100% against the villain, which blasts Muscular with great force into the cliffside and also partially destroys the cliff due to the great impact. Kota is sent flying away, but Izuku manages to grab Kota's shirt with his mouth and drags him back into the cliff. After apologizing, Izuku decides that they should quickly escape while the villain is incapacitated. However, Muscular used his muscle augmentation to reduce the impact of Izuku's one-for-all 100% smash, although Izuku's attack did injure the villain. Izuku orders Kota to grab onto him. He uses one-for-all full cowl to jump and run away from the villain. Izuku manages to avoid Muscular's first attack, but barely avoids the villain's second strike, which sends Izuku and Kota tumbling to the cliff again. The heavily injured Izuku thinks that getting back to the facility where Shota could erase the villain's quirk is a good plan, but starts to doubt the plan due to muscular speed surpassing his own. Izuku quickly forgets about the plan considering the grave circumstances he's in and decides that he has no choice but to defeat muscular. Izuku tells Kota to run back to the facility as fast as he can the second he clashes with the villain. He uses 100% Detroit Smash against muscular, which keeps him at bay. Izuku orders Kota to escape while he still can, but Muscular considers Izuku's struggle to be in vain. The villain begins overpowering Izuku's attacks and begins pushing him into the ground while demanding blood and death. Izuku is barely able to hold back Muscular's strength and is shoved into the ground by Muscular. Suddenly, Kota blasts water at the villain, demanding that he stop. However, the villain says that he'll kill Kota after he's done with Izuku. Furious, Izuku refuses to let the villain kill Kota and begins pushing back the villain, eventually pushing the villain off him. Izuku uses 1 million percent Delaware Detroit Smash against Muscular, a powerful smack with incredible force that smashes Muscular into the cliff. Muscular becomes incapacitated due to the great force of Izuku's attack, and Izuku roars with triumph. After defeating Muscular, Izuku takes Kota to safety. While running through the forest, Izuku finds Shota and asks him to protect Kota. Izuku eventually finds Mandalay, who's battling Spinner. He activates One For All Full Cowl and shatters Spinner's sword with a leg lunge. Izuku tells Mandalay that Kota is safe, and one of the villain's goals is targeting Katsuki. As Izuku sprints to the forest, Kenji tries to stop him only to be interrupted by Spinner's knife. Spinner then clarifies that the list belongs to Tomura Shigaraki, and tells Magne that Izuku was the person that Stain saw fit to save, thus being a man worthy of the title of a true hero. Izuku runs through the forest trying to find Katsuki. Out of nowhere, a giant shadow claw is about to attack Izuku. 
However, Izuku is saved by Mezo. He explains to Izuku the situation, and as a result, Fumikage has lost control over his quirk. Izuku and Mezo turn their attention to Fumikage. Struggling against a rampaging dark shadow, Fumikage pleads both of them to run away from him, otherwise they'll die. Izuku and Mezo are unable to fight back against the power of the rampaging dark shadow. Seeing that their situation is dire, Mezo asks Izuku to decide whether to rescue Katsuki by himself or rescue Fumikage with him. Izuku apologizes to Mezo because he can't make that decision, and says that he has a plan. Mezo and Izuku arrive to where Katsuki and Shoto are, along with Dark Shadow, in pursuit, with Mezo asking one of them to make light. Before he can explain further, Moonfish senses Mezo and Izuku's presence, and sends one of his teeth to attack them. The rampaging Dark Shadow uses its enormous claw to crush Moonfish, destroying Moonfish's teeth and knocking him out. Shoto and Katsuki are surprised at what happened, Izuku's plan was to lure the rampaging Dark Shadow to their location by creating decoys from Mezo's replicant arms, which worked. After the rampaging Dark Shadow effortlessly defeats Moonfish, Katsuki and Shoto manage to get close to Fumikage and use their quirks, which calms down Dark Shadow. Dark Shadow reduces in size and retracts back into Fumikage, allowing him to return to normal. After he apologizes, Izuku tells him that their top priority is to protect Katsuki, who is the target of the villains. The Bakugo escort squad, consisting of Mezo, Shoto, Izuku, and Fumikage, begin escorting a begrudging Katsuki back to the facility. The Bakugo escort team travel to the facility and come across Ochako and Tsuyu, who were fighting Himiko Toga. Seeing so many adversaries, Himiko decides to leave, but before that, notices a battered Izuku and falls in love with him. Mezo, Shoto, and Izuku turn around only to find that Fumikage and Katsuki are missing. Suddenly, a masked villain known as Mr. Compress appears on a tree branch and reveals that he used his magic to take Katsuki by turning him into a marble. The masked magician-like villain states that the heroes don't deserve someone of Katsuki's caliber and notes that Katsuki will shine even brighter on the villain's side. Mr. Compress also reveals that he captured Fumikage due to his great power, much to Izuku's anger. Mr. Compress begins escaping. Izuku refuses to give up and hatches a plan to save Fumikage and Katsuki that involves them flying towards Mr. Compress. The three fly Mr. Compress at high speed and reach him. Ochako deactivates her quirk, causing them to land on Mr. Compress and smash him into the ground at the villain's rendezvous point. Izuku, Shoto, and Mezo see that they're right in front of Dabi, Himiko, and Twice. Dabi launches his flames, which hits Izuku and injures his arm. Himiko decides to fight and attacks Izuku. Mezo smacks Himiko off Izuku while Shoto deals with Twice. When Mr. Compress finds that his pockets are empty, Mezo reveals that he took the marbles that Fumikage and Katsuke were in from Mr. Compress, much to Izuku's happiness. As Izuku and Shoto prepare to back up Mezo, Kurogiri arrives and blocks their path. Mr. Compress reveals that the real marbles are in his mouth, causing Izuku to chase after Mr. Compress. Suddenly, Mr. Compress is hit by Yuga's naval laser, causing him to spit out the marbles. Izuku, Mezo, and Shoto rush to grab the marbles, although Izuku starts succumbing to his injuries, which causes him to fall to the ground. Mezo grabs the marble containing Fumikage, thus saving him. Mr. Compress deactivates his quirk, which frees Fumikage and Katsuki. Dabi and Mr. Compress begin teleporting away along with Katsuki. Before teleporting with the villains while Izuku desperately tries running to save him, Katsuki tells Izuku to stay away. Dabi, Mr. Compress, and the captured Katsuki successfully teleport away. Izuku howls in grief due to being unable to save Katsuki. Two days later, at a hospital near the training camp, Izuku is recovering from his grievous injuries as a result of his battle with Muscular. Class 1A arrived to see Izuku. Tenya informs him about Toru, Kyoka, and Momo's conditions. Notwithstanding Katsuki, all 16 of them are here. Izuku is depressed about his failure to save Katsuki, and the fact that his quirk amounted to nothing when he needed it the most. However, Eijiro states that this time, they can save him. The previous day, he and Shoto overheard Momo talking to All Might about the tracking device she put on Nomu. Tenya deduces that Eijiro wants Momo to create another device so that Class 1A can track down and rescue Katsuki themselves. Tenya demands that they need to allow the pro heroes to handle the situation. He and Eijiro argue, and the latter encourages Izuku to go through with the plan as it will allow him to reach and save Katsuki. Izuku gives Tenya a pleading look, but Tenya is hesitant, as he knows fully well about the consequences they will face. Hideout Raid Arc The group wants to save Katsuki, but most of Class A are against the plan. A doctor enters and asks Class 1A to leave, so that he can speak to Izuku privately. As Class 1A leaves the room, Eijiro tells Izuku that they talked with Momo yesterday, and have decided that they'll rescue Katsuki tonight, inviting him to join them. After Eijiro leaves, the doctor informs him that although his arms are healed, his ligaments are deteriorating and should he gain the same injury twice, he'll never move his arms again. 
The doctor tells Izuku that he's being discharged and hands Izuku a letter from Kota. Later that night, in front of the hospital, Izuku arrives to see Eishiro and Shoto along with Momo. However, Tenyo arrives, who's angry that they're about to repeat the same mistakes he made at Hosu City. Shoto and Eishiro assure Tenya the rescue will be covert, while Momo says that she'll ensure that there's no combat involved. Izuku tells Tenya that he must save Katsuki. The group boards a train to a place called Kamino Yokohama. At Kamino Ward, Izuku, along with Shoto, Eishiro, Momo, and Tenya, puts on disguises to make infiltration easier, as well as prevent the League of Villains from recognizing them. The disguised group exit the clothing shop, and Izuku sees a video clip of the public apology issued by UA. After watching the clip, Izuku sees that UA are being treated like criminals, and that the mood of the people watching has become heavy against UA. Izuku, along with Eijiro, Shoto, Momo, and Tenya, continue towards the place that Momo's tracking device is detecting. After waiting for a while near the place, Momo notes that the villains have made no movements and states the possibility of Katsuki not being in the place, while Tenya reminds them that if he sees any combat, then he won't hesitate to stop them. Izuku thanks Tenya and starts thinking about their options in true Midoriya fashion, according to Eijiro and Momo. After Momo, Tenya, Shoto, Eijiro, and Izuku prepare to infiltrate the supposed League of Villains hideout, Izuku along with the group go to the back of the hideout and see a window. Izuku stands on Shoto's shoulders to see what's inside. After Eijiro sees the inside with his night vision goggles, he hands them over to Izuku. Izuku looks inside and sees that there are no moves, confirming that the hideout is actually a warehouse. Suddenly, Mount Lady destroys the front of the warehouse, which shocks Izuku. Seeing that the pro heroes, Best Genus, Tiger, Gang Orca, and Mount Lady are at the warehouse, Izuku and the group assume that All Might is with Katsuki as they speak. Izuku and the group decide to head home. Suddenly, a mysterious man appears to face the heroes, and with a simple but powerful attack, he defeats the heroes, destroying the entire warehouse along with the surrounding area being significantly damaged. The man's aura above them utterly terrifies Izuku, Eijiro, and Shoto. Izuku starts to realize who the man above them is, since All Might told him about All For One. Katsuki has been teleported near the man, which catches Izuku's attention. Izuku prepares to move, but Tenya stops him. All Might arrives and faces All For One. Izuku knows that they're in a crisis, and there's no openings to rescue Katsuki due to All For One's presence and Katsuki being outnumbered by the Vanguard Action Squad. Suddenly, Izuku comes up with an idea. Izuku says that the plan will not involve fighting, and that it'll enable them to rescue Katsuki and escape. However, the entire plan rests on Eijiro, because Katsuki will respond to him due to the friendship they've built during their time at UA. Izuku, Eijiro, and Tenya break through a nearby wall. Shoto creates a large ice ramp for them to scale, and they launch themselves high above the battlefield. All for One sees the trio and attempts to attack them, but All Might intervenes by punching him. Katsuki sees the trio, while Eijiro yells at Katsuki to take his hand. Tomura tries to take Katsuki, but Katsuki uses his explosion to launch himself towards Izuku, Tenya, and Eijiro. Katsuki grabs Eijiro's hand, and they make it to the air. Kenji and Spinner launch Mr. Compress into the air, but Mount Lady intercepts them, allowing Izuku along with Eijiro, Tenya, and the rescued Katsuki to get away. Izuku, Eijiro, Tenya, and Katsuki land on the ground far from the battlefield and begin escaping. Izuku and his group along with Katsuki safely escape into the crowd. Izuku sees All Might battling All For One on the broadcast screen and screams at him to win. After All Might defeats All For One, Izuku celebrates. After the battle, All Might points to the camera and delivers a message. You're next. The citizens watching take All Might's message as a warning to all villains out there, causing the citizens to praise All Might and start celebrating again. However, Izuku knows what All Might's message truly meant, that his time as symbol of peace has come to an end, and he, Izuku, is the next successor. Izuku now realizes that All Might's time has truly come to an end, and starts crying. Izuku, along with Eijiro, Tenya, and Katsuki meet up with Shoto and Momo. They take Katsuki to a police station for safety. Afterwards, Izuku says goodbye and heads home. Later that evening, Izuku receives a message from All Might. He runs out of his home and heads towards All Might's location. At the Takuba Municipal Beach Park, Izuku goes to All Might. However, All Might greets Izuku with a Texas smash as a part of his scolding. All Might reveals to Izuku that he can no longer use One For All and demonstrates this by entering his hero form, only to exit it in a split second afterwards. All Might informs Izuku that he's retiring as a hero since he's in a state where he can't fight anymore. All Might scolds Izuku for never doing what he's told and for his recklessness in rescuing Katsuki. However, All Might is glad that his recklessness didn't get him injured this time and is proud of Izuku for that. All Might hugs Izuku and apologizes for not being a proper mentor towards him. But from now on, he'll focus solely on Izuku's development and training. Izuku now fully understands that the age of All Might has come to an end. 
Koshinori visits and enters the Midoriya household, with Izuku and his mother flabbergasted that the number one hero has entered their abode. After the three sit down at the table, Toshinori asks Inko for her permission to send Izuku to the UA dorms. However, she's against it, much to Izuku's shock since they agreed that he can be relocated to UA's dormitories. She explains that she's worried about her son since his quirk damages him rather than helps him and is deeply concerned about her son's future as a pro hero after witnessing All Might's brutal battle. Inko states that she has no confidence in UA and is unable to entrust her son to them. Izuku tries to convince his mother that his injuries are a result of his inability to control his quirk, but Inko replies that regardless, it's still the responsibility of UA to take care of their students, which they haven't done. Inko understands that she's being a strict parent, but the safety of her child is her number one priority, and she's fine with Izuku continuing to become a hero since it's his dream, as long as he's in a safe environment, which is why she wants to send Izuku to another school. Although he understands his mother, Izuku wants to continue his dream at UA, since that's where Toshinori became a hero. Izuku runs out of the room while Toshinori understands Izuku's frustration. That it must be painful not being able to study at the same place his idol went to. Izuku returns to the room with a letter in his hand. The letter is a thank you from Kota. Izuku tells his mother that at the training camp, he saved a boy who hated quirks and heroes from a villain. Izuku declares that even if he can't stay at UA, he'll still keep dreaming to become a hero. Toshinori is shocked that Izuku is willing to continue his dream even though it's not at the same place as his idol. Toshinori transforms into his hero form and kneels before Izuku and Inko, bowing his head much to their shock. As All Might, he apologizes to Inko for his negligence as Izuku's teacher and understands that she's worried about the bloody path of a hero. All Might asks Inko to allow him to walk together with Izuku down his path so that he doesn't have a bloody future. All Might promises that he'll nurture and protect Izuku even at the cost of his own life. Inko is shocked at All Might's resolve, causing her to fall to her knees. Inko states that all she wants is Izuku to be happy, and tells All Might that he should never trade his life away for someone else's sake. Inko tells All Might to continue living and that as long as he can protect and nurture Izuku, she'll reconsider her decision to not send Izuku to live at UA. All Might pledges to protect and nurture Izuku while Izuku tells his mother that he'll not worry her. Outside, Toshinori compliments Izuku's mother, telling Izuku she reminds him of his master. Toshinori leaves and tells Izuku that he'll see him at UA. Provisional Hero License Exam Arc Following Katsuki's rescue and the retirement of All Might, Nezu transformed UA into a boarding school in order to protect the students. The Heights Alliance was built in just three days. Shota Aizawa meets with his students outside of a building. He states that they must start preparing to get provisional hero licenses like they had planned to during the training camp. Then, Shota scolds Izuku, Tenya, Momo, Eijiro, and Shoto. He knows that they were present at the site of Katsuki Bakugo's rescue and took it upon themselves to rescue him. He furthermore says he would have expelled everyone but Katsuki, Toru, and Kyoka from the school if it weren't for All Might's sudden retirement. Shota advises the group that went to save Katsuki to go through the proper procedures next time, which will also restore the trust between them. The girls talk the guys into a refreshingly lively competition to see whose dorm is the best among the rest, and will be crowned the room king to Izuku's horror. He tries to stop the girls, but they invade his room and notice it's filled to the brim with All Might merch and posters, Ochako calling it an otaku room. The next day, Class 1A begins their school life anew. In Class 1A's room, Shota Aizawa mentions that their first objective will be earning the provisional hero licenses. To prepare for the provincial hero license exam, Class 1A students will create at least two signature super moves that they'll use in combat with his help and that of Cementos, Ectoplasm, and Midnight. He also recommends them to upgrade their hero costumes. While all of Class 1A begins training, Izuku Midoriya is puzzled and confused as to what his special move should be. One of Ectoplasm's clones scolds Izuku for daydreaming. Izuku tells the Ectoplasm clone that he hasn't thought of any special moves because he must keep in mind not to try and break his arms in the process. The Ectoplasm clone advises Izuku to focus on developing his quirk instead. All Might arrives, wanting to see Class 1A developing their special moves since it's his job as a teacher to oversee the training of his students. All Might approaches him and gives Izuku advice. He's still trying to imitate him, which confuses Izuku. Before Izuku can question further, All Might goes to help Eijiro Kirishima. All Might is teaching Izuku to think independently. Following the recommendations of Shota, Izuku heads to the development studio for a costume upgrade. Izuku waits outside the door as Ochako and Tenya appear. Before they can greet each other, an explosion from the development studio sends Izuku flying back. As the smoke clears, Power Loader scolds the person responsible for the explosion. The person responsible for the explosion is none other than Mei Hatsume, who is landed on top of Izuku. Mei recognizes Izuku from the UA Sports Festival. 
May apologizes for the explosion she caused, and she asks the Class 1A trio for their names since she forgot them. Izuku, Ochako, and Tenya remind May of their names. Izuku asks for a costume upgrade, which catches May's attention. Power Loader reminds May that he's fine with her working on the development studio, but mustn't cause chaos, otherwise, he'll ban her. Power Loader turns its attention to Izuku, Ochako, and Tenya and invites them into the development studio. Power Loader explains to the trio about hero costume upgrades. Izuku asks Power Loader if there's something he can do to reduce the stress in his arm ligaments. Power Loader replies that minor tinkering to his hero costume will make it possible. Suddenly, Mei inspects Izuku's body and makes him wear a powered exoskeleton, much to Izuku's discomfort. Izuku suddenly realizes that his way of thinking has been wrong. People who invent are not bound by conventional thinking, and in order to improve himself, he must think outside of the box like Mei. Four days later, at Gym Gamma, in the midst of training, All Might shows up and Shota tells him that Class 1A is progressing nicely. Minoru comments on the change of Izuku's costume, causing Izuku to reply that he received arm support to lessen the stress on his arms. When Katsuki tests out his new special move called AP Shot on a rock, a move that creates an explosion beam, the AP Shot is successfully executed and penetrates a rock, but causes the rock to begin falling towards All Might. Suddenly, Izuku appears and destroys the rock with a kick. All Might is impressed that Izuku figured out his advice on his own. Izuku has realized that just because he's the new successor of One For All doesn't mean that he has to inherit the style of his predecessor. Taking Mei's words into consideration and Tanya's help, Izuku has decided to forego All Might's punching fighting style and redevelop his own fighting style. The technique Izuku used to destroy the rock is called One For All Full Cowl Shoot Style, a technique that's an application of Izuku's new kick-based fighting style. The class then headed to Takuba National Stadium. While there, Izuku sees some of Class 1A are nervous, but Shota encourages them to do their best so that they can pass this exam and further their goal in becoming heroes. Other participants of the exam recognize the students with berets. The people standing in front of Class 1A are students from the famous Shiketsu High School. Soon, they all enter the stadium. Inside Takuba National Stadium, a worker from the Hero Public Safety Commission explains that the first part of the exam involves thinning out the amount of people who can succeed by playing a game where people put three targets on their body and are given six balls to throw at the other examinee's targets. Those whose targets have been hit are disqualified. Participants need to eliminate two students to move on to the next phase of the exam. The room in which the students are in unfold to reveal the arena, in which there are varying environments to battle in. On the preliminary round battlefield, Izuku warns his classmates that the other students may know of their quirks from watching the UA Sports Festival, and decides that Class 1A should work together to pass the preliminary round. However, Katsuki and Shoto go off on their own, and Eijiro and Denki decide to follow Katsuki. The rest of Class 1A follow Izuku, who explains that working together is better because the other schools know their quirks and fighting styles. The preliminary round of the Provisional Hero License Exam begins, and as Izuku predicted, dozens of examiners from other schools approach them and are eager to take them out. One of them, Shindo, sees Izuku again and remarks that his quirk breaks his body every time he uses it. Shindo and many other examinees begin throwing balls at Class 1A. However, thanks to their training and costume upgrades, Class 1A students manage to avoid being hit by the balls. Yoshindo realizes that Class 1A has gotten stronger and tells his fellow classmates that he'll shatter their solid defense and use his vibrate quirk on the ground, unleashing a powerful earthquake that completely shatters the ground and causes members of Class 1A to disperse. Izuku escapes from the debris caused by Yo's attack and notices that Ketsubutsu has managed to split up Class 1A. He contemplates that Ketsubutsu Academy have done their homework on analyzing their quirks and decides that Class 1A must team up together in order to combat Ketsubutsu Academy's strong teamwork. Despite a disadvantage of being alone, Izuku can't help but feel excited by the idea of facing off against stronger students. Suddenly, Izuku is taken by surprise when Keimi from Shiketsu suddenly tags one of his weak points with a ball. Keimi scolds Izuku for zoning out in the middle of battle. However, she finds it weird that she can still smile after being put at a disadvantage and finds it to be cool. Izuku focuses and prepares for combat. Kami claims she's targeted Izuku because she has a lot of intel on him, and she wanted to face a UA student before they got eliminated. Izuku says that Kami talks too much and mauls over the possibility of Ketsubutsu students finding both of them. Kami throws a rock, follows up with one of her balls at Izuku, but he evades, and when he moves to counterattack, he is surprised because Kami's disappeared. She reappears behind him and tries to tag another one of its targets with a ball. He dodges, but she disappears again. Kami gets behind Izuku and pins him down before revealing that disappearing isn't part of her quirk, it's just one of her skills. He breaks free from her hold. 
Before he can counterattack, students from Ketsubutsu arrive to ambush Izuku and Kami. Izuku dodges their incoming attacks and then Ochako appears and offers her help. Ketsubutsu students attack her and she trips off a cliff. Izuku manages to catch Ochako and uses a powerful kick to destroy their footing. Then he runs away with her in his arms. The Ketsubutsu students lose their track. Izuku and Ochako hide behind some rubble. She tries to tag another one of his weak points and Izuku slaps away her ball. He reveals he knows she's probably from Shiketsu because Ochako would have used her quirk to save herself earlier. Also, he knows that the real Ochako would never jump into danger recklessly without a plan. Kami reveals herself and asks that Izuku tell her more about himself. But before she can attack him again, Hanta and the real Ochako arrive and force Kami to retreat. Hanta tries to go after her, but Izuku advises against it because Kami's targets aren't showing up on her naked body, and he reasons that there's no point in chasing after her. Izuku tells them that they need to move quickly because 30 people have already passed the exam. Izuku, Otako, and Hanta talk about their situation and how rival students are starting to split up. Izuku tells them that he'll act as a decoy while they keep a distance from him and try to immobilize as many examinees as possible. All of them prepare to enact their plan. Izuku activates one for all full cowl shoot style and dashes past the group of examinees, being chased by them. Hanta catches up to him and asks him to carry them both into the air. When they reach a safe height above the ground, Ochako releases debris attached to tape that traps their pursuers by sticking them to the ground. Izuku, Hanta, and Ochako place their balls on six examinees and pass the first phase. They head to the winner's waiting room and run into Katsuki, Eijiro, and Denki, who have also passed the exam. While their classmates celebrate their success, Katsuki asks Izuku if he passed, to which Izuku tells Katsuki that he did. Izuku finds it awkward to be speaking to Katsuki since it's the first time since the Kamino incident, but Katsuki even compliments his quirk and says he expected nothing less with his borrowed power. This surprises Izuku. Class 1A celebrates all of its students passing the first phase. Yoku Mera directs everyone's attention to the screen and they all watch as the arena is turned into a disaster zone. He announces the next and final phase of the exam will involve rescue operations. Mera explains that they have to rescue professionals from the Help Us company who have trained to act as citizens in need of rescuing. While waiting for the second exam to start, Izuku and Tenya Ida realize that the second exam is modeled after the Kamino incident. Tenya says that there were many casualties while their group was focused on rescuing Katsuki. The second exam starts and Izuku notices a boy crying and injured who screams that his grandpa had been crushed. Izuku finds that to be terrible, much to the crying child's annoyance. The boy, who's revealed to be one of the Help Us Company workers who's grading them, yells at Izuku and says he's lost points for not comforting the victim first. The boy explains that they need to help repair the situation so it goes smoothly when emergency responders arrive. Saying something like, this is bad, won't comfort the injured. Izuku realizes this is why All Might always smiles, and knowing the test's true purpose, Izuku tries again by smiling and using kind words to reassure him, which works. Izuku tells Ochako and Tenya that he'll take the child to the first aid station, but will return for them. Ten minutes later, most of the students appear to be doing well. Yokumito Mera comments that the test will include more adversity. Suddenly, Gang Orca and his men interrupt rescue operations and abruptly bust into the arena using a large explosion. The students taking the exam are tasked with juggling rescue operations alongside suppressing the villain presence. Yoshindo rushes past Izuku Midoriya and tells him to help to evacuate the first aid station while he holds the villains back. Although Yo manages to keep them back with his quirk, Gang Orca surprise attacks him using his Orcanist quirk to paralyze him with an ultrasonic wave attack. Then Shoto and Inasa arrive, and they both attack Gang Orca and his group at the same time. Mashirao returns to the battlefield and informs Izuku all the injured have been evacuated and reinforcements will arrive in no time. Soon after students appear to face the sidekicks, Gang Orca blasts apart the spiral with powerful sonic waves, but Izuku swoops in and delivers him a powerful kick. Gang Orca is able to block it, but the armor on his forearm cracks. Before they can continue fighting, Yoku Mera announces that the last people from the HUC are rescued and the exam suddenly ends. The provisional hero license exam has come to an end. Yoku Mera presents the results to all the students with a list of names of those who managed to pass. Class 1A look on the screen to check for their names. Everyone in class 1A has passed, except for Katsuki Bakugo and Shoto Todoroki. Outside, Izuku's holding his provisional hero license in his hands. Izuku cries tears of joy, which causes Ochako to question his tears. Izuku replies that the provisional hero license, the proof of his growth, is in his hands, and is happy that the help he has received along the way hasn't been in vain. Izuku plans to immediately show his license to his mother in All Might, while Ochako agrees with him. 
After passing his provisional hero license exam, Izuku sends All Might a message of a picture of his license. He is very happy, but is called on by Katsuki, who tells them they need to talk about his quirk, which makes him nervous. Izuku goes with him to Ground Beta, the site of the battle trial where he and Izuku fought for the first time. Katsuki remembers the time where Izuku was a quirkless good-for-nothing, and then suddenly out of thin air he manifested a quirk and by some miracle he was accepted into UA, and even received his provisional hero license where Katsuki failed. Izuku tells Katsuki that he got it for performing well, but Katsuki orders him to keep quiet and let him finish. When Katsuki states he had been putting the pieces together, Izuku was fully aware as to what Katsuki has discovered. His worries are confirmed as Katsuki states that he received his quirk from All Might since he witnessed All For One's ability to steal quirks and bestow them onto others as well as figuring out that All Might is an acquaintance of All For One. Katsuki hypothesized that All Might also has some form of quirk transference because he's become weaker ever since coming to UA and meeting with Izuku. Seeing that Izuku is not denying anything, Katsuki knows that he's right about Izuku gaining All Might's quirk. His secret out, Izuku simply asks Katsuki how knowing the truth about his quirk is going to help him. Katsuki knows that he and Izuku have always looked up to All Might, and seeing the person who he thought was a pebble on the side of the road being acknowledged by the person he looks up to is why Izuku is going to fight him here and now. Izuku questions the reason, as Katsuki states it's in order to gauge his talents and to vent out his anger after the Kamino incident, believing that All Might's retirement was his fault. Izuku will not attack. Katsuki attacks him first and demands he fight back. Reluctantly, Izuku agrees as he wanted to see if his new fighting style would work against Katsuki. Izuku is overwhelmed by Katsuki, which causes Izuku to increase one for all full cowl at 8%, which allows him to fight equally for the time being. Despite Izuku's increase in power and technique, he still ends up losing to Katsuki. After the battle, he's berated for his loss by Katsuki, who questions how he lost if he's the world's strongest power. Toshinori appears and reveals his relationship with Izuku and one for all. Katsuki then promised to keep the secret between the three of them and vows to surpass Izuku with his quirk as Izuku makes the same vow. They're then taken in by Shota who scolds them for having a fight on school grounds. Because he defended himself in the fight, he's given three days of punishment while Katsuki is given a longer time for initiating it. During their house arrest, Shota states that they'll be cleaning the dormitory common space day and night and they must write a written statement of regret. Shota tells them that if their injuries don't heal, they must go to the infirmary and they must not dare think about relying on Recovery Girl. Having criticized them enough, Shota tells them to go to bed. Shie Hasaikai Arc The next morning, all classes resume and the rest of Class 1A learns of Izuku and Katsuki's bout. They tease the boys about it before leaving. As they were leaving, Katsuki gives Izuku a few pointers on his new technique and tells him the flaw in his new fighting style. In the evening, as Izuku leaves to take the trash out, he overhears some of Class 1A talking about Hizashi's new grammar lessons and the hero work studies mentioned by Shota. Izuku feels that he's been left in the dark due to his three-day house arrest. Izuku asks Tenya Ida about it, but Tenya refuses to answer his question due to his misbehavior and being unable to relay information to him. Izuku goes to the garbage dump and is stressed that he's been left behind. As he walks to the garbage dump, Izuku sees a face on the wall, who tells him the garbage dump direction. The face disappears as Izuku is left confused. Suddenly, the face appears on the ground and comments on Izuku being one of the livelier first years. The face pops around the ground in Izuku's vicinity, to which Izuku asks what he is. The face tells Izuku that he'll know about him soon enough and encourages him to keep his spirits up. Three days later, he's released from his punishment and wants to eagerly catch up as his classmates are surprised but amazed by his determination. Shota Aizawa introduces Class 1A to the people who'll teach him about the hero internships, third-year students who rang among the top of all UA students known as the Big Three. Mirio Togata, Tamaki Yamajiki, and Nejire Hado. Izuku realizes that Mirio is the one he saw on his way to the garbage dump. The personalities of the three students leave Class 1A confused, who get even more confused when Mirio Togata challenges them all to a fight. Mirio tells Class 1A to attack him whenever and wherever they want. Izuku volunteers to fight Mirio and the class are further impressed with him. He attacks him but he's taken by surprise when Mirio's clothes suddenly fall off his body. He rushes to get his pants back on and Izuku kicks him in the head. Izuku's foot faces clean through Mirio's head and the former confirms Mirio's quirk allows him to pass through things. Using a combination of his quirk and technique, Mirio defeats half of Class 1A within a few minutes. Mirio turns his attention to the close-range combatants of Class 1A. Izuku tells the class that he analyzed that whatever Mirio does, he'll use a direct attack and during that moment, they should counterattack. Mirio charges and he begins submerging into the ground. Suddenly, Mirio appears behind Izuku, who correctly predicts Mirio's tactics and delivers a swift kick to the head. 
Mirio phases through Izuku's body and uses his super move called Blinder Touch Eyeball Crush. Mirio looks like he intends to poke Izuku's eye, to which Izuku closes his eyes. In actuality, Mirio fakes poking Izuku's eye by phasing his finger to act as a diversion. Instead, Mirio hits Izuku in the stomach. With Izuku defeated, Mirio proceeds to subdue the rest of Class 1A, hitting the rest of Class 1A in their stomachs as well, and defeating them. While Class 1A recovers, Mirio talks about his quirk permeation and advises Class 1A to participate in the hero work studies, as it'll help them improve their career to be heroes. Following Mirio's advice, Izuku reaches out to Gran Torino for work study opportunities. Gran Torino has to refuse because he's busy working with the police and recommends him All Might's former sidekick, Sir Night Eye. Izuku goes to All Might in the staff room and asks him to introduce him to Sir Night Eye for a hero work study. All Might refuses to help Izuku for several reasons, much to his surprise. Izuku tells All Might that if he's under the guidance of Night Eye, it'll serve as a strong point of comparison to him, and he must become stronger than anyone else. All Might doesn't dislike Izuku's determination, but he still won't be getting an introduction. Not from him. So he later asks Mirio if Izuku is fit to work under Night Eye. Mirio replies that there's no problem and considers Deku fit. Mirio takes Izuku to Sir Night Eye's office and tells him he must make Sir laugh to be accepted. Izuku messes up his first impression but gains Sir Night Eye's interest. Sir Night Eye claims he doesn't know how Izuku can be useful and asks how he can make an impact on society as All Might has. He challenges Izuku to take the stamp from him within three minutes. He's unimpressed with All Might's decision to pass on one for all to Izuku. He even tells the young student that he's unworthy and that Mirio should have been the one to inherit one for all. Izuku refuses Sir Night Eye's words and fights on. Sir tells him that he can't prevail over his foresight. The challenge ends, and despite his efforts, Deku fails to snatch the stamp from Sir Night Eye. However, he is impressed with Izuku's focus as he fights without ruining the All Might memorabilia posted across the office. Sir Night Eye decides to employ Izuku. Confused, Izuku says that he failed. Sir Night Eye replies that he never said he wouldn't employ the student if he failed. He claims he had planned on taking on Izuku only to see if he's really worthy of being the inheritor of One for All, and initially plans to put Izuku through many hardships. Izuku accepts the challenge, and day one of the work study begins immediately. Izuku learns of Sir Night Eye's investigation of the Shie Hasaikai and their leader overhaul. While on patrol, Izuku and Mirio Togata bump into Eri, who is being chased by Kai. Kai apologizes to Izuku for his daughter's behavior because she gets carried away with her fun and games. Mirio tells Izuku that he forgot to put his mask on. As Mirio apologizes to Kai, Izuku is aggravated by his mistake of letting Kai know that he and Mirio know each other, which will make Sir Night Eye's job more difficult. Izuku acts innocuously to correct his mistake while Mirio identifies Kai as a member of the Shia Saikai due to his mask to which Kai states not to pay heed to his mask as he simply dislikes dirt. Kai mentions that he's never seen the two of them before and wonders if they're rookies due to their youth. Mirio replies that they are indeed rookies. Kai asks Mirio of the hero office he's affiliated with and Mirio replies that they're still students participating in field training. Mirio and Izuku prepare to leave but Eri tells Izuku not to as she starts shedding tears. Izuku tells Kai that his daughter is frightened by something to which Kai replies that he scolded her. However, Izuku is not convinced since Eri is clutching onto him tightly and suspects there's more than meets the eye. Izuku asks about the bandages, which Overhaul replies that Eri falls down a lot, but Izuku is still unconvinced as she's completely frightened and finds the situation to be unnatural. Izuku breaks the ice and asks Overhaul what he's doing to the girl. Kai gives in and tells the heroes to follow him as his situation with his daughter is an embarrassing topic. Kai, Mirio, and Izuku holding Eri follow Kai into the alley. Kai comments that his daughter defies him all the time and finds understanding children to be quite difficult, especially when it comes to considering the kind of person they want to become. Izuku and Mirio see Kai removing his glove and has killer intent. Suddenly, Eri runs to her father, causing Kai to stop removing his glove. Kai apologizes to Izuku and Mirio for Eri's tantrum and thanks them for listening to his worries. Kai wishes the heroes good luck as he leaves with Eri. Mirio stops Izuku from going after Eri while commenting that Kai used his killer intent. Mirio asks Izuku to respect Sir Night Eye's orders because chasing Kai too far will make him harder to catch. Izuku and Mirio meet up with Sir Night Eye and Bubble Girl. Mirio apologizes for messing up, but Sir Night Eye refutes his apology and says it was his error since he should have been watching them from the start. Mirio tells Sir Night Eye that they gained new information. Overhaul has a daughter named Eri. Izuku mentions that Eri was extremely frightened and crying for help. Izuku wishes he should have helped her at that moment, but Sir Night Eye reprimands him by saying that he shouldn't act rashly because he would have failed and is not special enough that he can save anyone he wants. 
Sir Night Eye teaches him that he must first study and analyze the situation in order to predict the enemy's movements and goals and states that the world isn't so lenient that Izuku can save Eri with good intention. With his lesson finished, Sir Night Eye tells Izuku to return to his office for today. Izuku's first day of internship ends in a flash, but leaves an unpleasant truth in his mouth. It's the beginning of the week. Izuku can't focus in classes because of the latest revelations. Sir Night Eye being All Might's former sidekick, Mirio being the one who should have inherited One For All, and Eri's situation. Unable to keep going like this, Izuku goes out in search of All Might to ask him questions and finds him outside of UA jogging. Izuku asks him why he didn't tell him anything about Sir Night Eye and how he knew about One For All and that Mirio was supposed to be the one who should have inherited One For All. All Might states that there was no need to tell him everything, to which Izuku yells that there was and demands to know the whole truth. All Might decides to tell Izuku the truth, but he mustn't regret it, to which Izuku replies that he won't. All Might starts telling him that Sir Night Eye was his sidekick for years, but six years ago after his fight against All For One, they dissolved their partnership because of the differences in their values. Night Eye warning him back then to stop continuing his hero duties due to his grievous injuries and look for a successor. He refused because that would generate a period of fear and chaos. Sir Night Eye states that he'll stop supporting him if he doesn't, and the reason is because he predicted with his quirk that in six to seven years, he'll have a gruesome death at the hands of a villain if he continues being a hero. After their argument, they went their separate ways. Nezu recommended Mirio Togata, but he ended up meeting Izuku before he met Mirio. All Might didn't want to tell Izuku all of this since he was a fan and apologizes. Izuku is shocked and distraught with the truth All Might told him. Not only was he never meant to be All Might's successor, but also that All Might will inevitably die this year or during the next. All Might continues and tells him that when he met him, he considered him the perfect candidate to inherit the One For All. Izuku asks Toshinori if Night Eye's foresight can be changed. However, Toshinori's answer crushes Izuku's hopes. There is a margin of error in his estimation, but nothing can change the future he sees in his foresight. Toshinori tells Izuku that after he had accepted his inevitable death with ease, and because the goal was in sight, he ran full speed towards it. Toshinori reveals that the goal was his final confrontation with All For One at Kamino, and that he planned on dying there. However, Izuku is there, a timid, quirkless boy who day after day rose to meet his expectations. Izuku's determination and his mother's encouragement gave him the will to twist Night Eye's prediction and try to stay alive to see the boy grow into a hero worthy of being the symbol of peace. Emotional, Izuku agrees to fight fate alongside his master. Izuku asks All Might to get Sir Night Eye to use foresight on him again, but All Might still can't face him after all this time. A few days later, Izuku along with Ochako, Tsuyu, Eijiro, and the Big Three are heading out at Sir Night Eye's office and see that many heroes are gathered. Surprisingly, Shota and Gran Torino have also gathered. Thanks to the information all the heroes provided him with, Sir Night Eye was able to make substantial progress with his investigation of an organization named Shie Hasaikai. After Sir Night Eye and his sidekicks explain the situation regarding the organization and its relationship with drug trafficking, Fatgum intervenes. He explains that he, Eijiro, and Tamaki were involved the other day in a battle against a thug in which Tamaki was shot with a bullet that contained a drug that can damage the quirk factor, the one that allows a person to use his powers. Fatgum follows up by explaining that thanks to Eijiro's actions protecting Tamaki, they were able to obtain a bullet with the content still inside. Fatgum explains that after examining it, they discovered that inside the bullet were human blood and cells, which disturbs everyone. Sir Night Eye states that Kai's quirk and the quirk destroying bullet are related. He explains that Kai has a daughter that had no birth certificate, and details about her are unknown. A frustrated Izuku and Mirio lament their failure in attempting to rescue Eri, and condemn themselves for thinking that they'll be the best heroes. Both stand up and declare that this time, they will definitely rescue Eri. Sir Night Eye states that their objective will be to save Kai's daughter. With the meeting over, Izuku and Mirio explain to their classmates what occurred between them and Kai. They're crestfallen for being unable to save Eri when she was right in their hands. Shota spots his Class 1A students and talks to them about originally suspending their internship since the League of Villains are involved. Before they start protesting, Shota comments to Izuku that he still hasn't restored his trust in him yet. However, Shota believes that if he stops Izuku, he'll simply jump back in again. Shota gives Izuku permission to take part in Eri's rescue operation and signifies his decision by fist bumping Izuku's chest. To give Izuku encouragement, Shota tells him that while he held Eri, he gave her some hope and tells Izuku to keep moving forward to which a delightful Izuku replies he will. 
Two days later, late at night, all of them receive messages from Sir Night Eye informing them that they finally know where Eri is and calls everyone to another conference to prepare for the impending rescue operation. Hours later, everyone gathers together at Sir Night Eye's agency, and he reveals that Eri is being kept in the main hideout underground. The sidekicks of Sir Night Eyes state that they have a time frame of when they'll be home, and they got a warrant from the police, so all they need to do is get in there. These good news makes Mirio recover part of his energetic personality and tries to encourage Deku, which pleases him, and the classmates both. The next morning at 8am in front of the police station, heroes partaking in the rescue operation have been given detailed information about the Shiei Hisaikai. Everyone is ready, and the operation is set in motion. At 8.30 a.m., the rescue force are outside the Shiei Saikai headquarters and commence the operation. Suddenly, they're attacked by Rikia Katsukame, who sends some police force members flying, but Izuku and Shota are quick to react and save them. Ryukyu's group decide to take care of the Shiei Saikai member while the rest enter the mansion. The heroes are defeating and arresting the subordinates who try to stop them until they reach a room that connects to the underground routes that the Yakuza use to escape. Sir Night Eye's group heads down towards the basement but are surprised to find a dead end. After Izuku and Eijiro break through, Joy Irinaka, general manager of the Shiei Saikai and known as Mimic, uses his quirk mimicry to twist the hallway and closes off the basement's entrance. Mirio decides to go on ahead and phases through the walls, while Mimic causes the floor to open up beneath the heroes, who fall down into a separate section of the building where they meet three members of the Shiei Saikai. Leaving Tamaki behind to take care of the Yakuza, the group continues to advance along the underground route. Sir Night Eye's group is having trouble traversing the basement due to Mimic's interference. Mimic uses his quirk to close everything in an attempt to crush Sir Night Eye's group. Shota Aizawa is annoyed that he can't see Mimic's real body. Suddenly, the space opens up. Izuku charges forward, but Shota stops him. Izuku and Shota find themselves separated from Sir Night Eye's group. Sir Night Eye and a group of police force officers are concealed in one space, Izuku and Shota in another, and Rock Lock in his own space. Rocklock is attacked by Himiko Toga, and hearing his cry, Deku destroys the wall that separates them. Izuku and Shota see Rocklock on the ground and another Rocklock near him. Rocklock tells them that an imposter appeared and tried to attack him. Shota goes to check on the imposter and quickly realizes that it was a trap. He quickly uses his erasure on the other Rocklock when he was ready to stab Deku, revealing that he's actually Himiko in disguise. Shota uses his capturing weapon, but Himiko quickly avoids being captured, stabbing Shota in the back in the process. Fortunately, the wound isn't serious, but Himiko manages to escape. Shota berates himself for being careless and not thinking that there would not be casualties, and is surprised that Tomura Shigaraki and his League of Villains would side with Kai Chisaki. Joy Irinaka's angry yells are heard by Shota and Deku, and the latter manages to discern Mimic's location. Izuku activates One for All Full Cowl and smashes the ceiling, revealing the real Mimic. Shota immediately uses his erasure to disable Joy's mimicry, and Sir Night Eye throws his hyperdensity seals into Mimic's face, which knocks him out. Having dealt with and defeated Joy Irinaka, the heroes and police force decide on their next course of action. Rocklock tells them to leave the League of Villains to the police force while Sir Night Eye, Izuku, and Shota go on ahead to rescue Eri. Everyone agrees with his plan. With Mimic defeated, the underground labyrinth can no longer be modified. Three run to where Mirio, Overhaul, and Eri are. Since Mirio went ahead of the group to stop Kai and was fighting Kai to protect Eri, Izuku suddenly bursts through the wall. Once the three arrive at the place, Deku delivers a one for all full cowl punch to Kai's arm while Shota yells at Sir Night Eye to secure Eri and help Mirio while he and Deku face Kai. The leader of the Shiei Saikai tries using his quirk, but to no avail as Shota has disabled it with his erasure. Cornered with nowhere to run, a distressed Kai yells at Chronostasis. Shota notices something approaching them and pushes Izuku aside. Having lost his patience for the constant interference of the heroes, Kai uses his power to attract Shin Nemoto towards him and uses his overhaul to merge with this subordinate. Having fused, Kai feels relieved. Izuku analyzes the situation, Sir Night Eye is protecting Mirio and Eri, Shota has disappeared, and the transformed Kai has been healed. Kai mocks Mirio for wasting his time trying to become a hero, as it's been all for naught now that he's lost his quirk, and he could have avoided this tragic fate had he simply not got involved. Izuku and Sir Night Eye are surprised that Mirio has lost his quirk. Kai charges forward while Izuku appears above and throws a column of rock at Kai, who destroys it with ease, and counters by reconstructing the broken pieces into sharp stones. However, Izuku's iron souls protect him from the sharp edges, and he proceeds to smash Kai's constructed sharp stones into pieces. Seeing Izuku's simple battle style, Kai isn't impressed. Suddenly, Kai is hit by one of Sir Night Eye's hyperdensity seals but manages to block it. Sir Night Eye orders Izuku to protect Mirio and Eri while he handles Kai. Izuku reaches Mirio and Eri and sees that they're fine. Izuku smashes open the wall which reveals the path he, along with Shota and Sir Night Eye, took to get here. 
He decides that they should put distance away between themselves and Kai. Eri apologizes while Mirio looks back to see Sir Night Eye. During the battle between Sir Night Eye and Kai, Sir Night Eye saw into his future. Amidst the scene of his likely defeat, Sir Night Eye held on to a sliver of hope that Eri would be saved. The boy's safe and Kai defeated as well as imprisoned. Kai goes past the impaled Sir Night Eye and chases after Izuku. Izuku is horrified at Sir Night Eye's terrible condition as Kai launches rock spikes at Izuku. Izuku stomps on the ground using his enhanced might, preventing Kai from reconstructing the ground. Kai sees through Izuku's plan but is surprised that Izuku is displaying greater strength than a few minutes ago. The reason for Izuku's enhanced strength might be because he activated one for all 20%, even though it's making him feel great pain. Izuku charges at Chisaki while declaring that he will bend the future. Izuku fights Overhaul intensely and is narrowly able to avoid Overhaul and tries to deal a blow so devastating that the villain won't be able to recover from it. Aimed to be one blow to the top of the head, Deku unleashes Manchester Smash. However, Deku's powerful axe kick narrowly misses. Overhaul claims that compared to Lamillion and Night Eye, Izuku is easy to predict. Izuku tries jumping out of harm's way but is hit by Chisaki's spike attacks. Overhaul uses his quirk to fix the damage he received. Izuku is barely standing up due to having been impaled by a small stone piece in his arm. Wanting to end this fight, a mouth appears on Chisaki's hand and, using Shin Nemoto's quirk, asks Eri if she wanted all this. Eri runs back to Chisaki and replies to him that she never wanted any of this. A shocked Izuku tells Eri that she needs to stay with Mirio. Chisaki asks Eri if she thinks Izuku can overcome the situation by himself. Eri truthfully reveals that Izuku is not capable of doing so. Chisaki then asks her what she must do to resolve the situation, to which Eri replies that she must return to him, and in exchange, Chisaki must fix everything back to normal. Chisaki agrees that only she must be hurt since it'll be easier on everyone else. Chisaki taunts Izuku by telling him that his hopes in Mirio had been dashed, and that his actions to rescue Eri was a cruel choice to do to Eri, and because of that, he's unwanted. Izuku gets up and yells that even though it's none of his business, Eri was crying and no one will have to die because he'll save her. Suddenly, the ceiling begins collapsing and Ryukyu, Uravati, and Froppy come dropping in, falling down into the Shiei Saikai's underground where they land in the middle of the battle between Izuku and Chisaki. Kai is annoyed with everything being ruined and seeing the hole, an opportunity of escape, prepares his escape by reconstructing a large and long rock pillar to take him to the surface. Izuku refuses to let Kai get away. Izuku tries to chase after Kai. Eri's quirk begins activating which causes Kai and Shin Namoto to split apart, returning Kai and Shin to normal. Chisaki desperately tries to retrieve Eri, but filled with utter determination, Izuku unconsciously activates One for All 100% and prepares to attack Kai with a kick, while Kai launches reconstructed stone pillars at Izuku. Surprisingly, Izuku's body, despite using One for All 100%, along with all of his injuries, have been healed. Izuku realizes that his healed body is thanks to Eri's quirk ability. Suddenly, Izuku begins feeling the immense recoil of One for All 100%. After fuse with Rikia, the newly fused Kai appears, looking similar to a stone dragon. From the dragon's maw, Kai appears and reveals that Eri can rewind humans and depending on how she controls it, calling her quirk a curse and warns Izuku that holding on to Eri is dangerous, which is why he's demanding that Izuku return Eri to him because only with his quirk can he stop Eri's cursed quirk. Izuku vehemently refuses to hand Eri back and will hold on to her no matter what. Having experienced Eri's quirk, Izuku sees that the moment his legs broke, Eri reverted them back to normal, before he could experience any pain and thinks that Eri's quirk is a kind, gentle quirk contrary to Kai's thoughts. Understanding that Eri's quirk reverts any pain and grievous damage back to normal at blinding speed, Izuku decides that he doesn't need to hold back since all major recoil and damage accumulated by his quirk will be continuously reverted and healed thanks to Eri's quirk, therefore not needing to worry about turning into nothingness. Izuku charges towards Kai and starts pummeling Kai's monstrous stone body, shattering it as Kai is unable to counterattack. Izuku reaches Kai's own body and pummels away. Izuku questions that if he can't save one little girl in front of him, then he can never become a hero that saves everyone. Ochako and Sir Night Eye have reached the surface and bear witness to Izuku and Kai's battle. Izuku Midoriya has delivered a massive one for all full cowl 100% enhanced punch to Kai, which defeats him. As he lands on the ground, Izuku asks Eri if she's fine. Suddenly, Eri's quirk starts going out of control. Kai wills himself back into consciousness and attempts to attack Izuku with his stone hand in a last ditch effort to get back Eri. However, Eri's quirk spreads near Kai, which causes his fusion with Rikia Katakame to become undone, returning Kai back to normal. 
Ochako Uraraka apprehends the defeated Kai. Ryuko Tatsuma returns to the surface with Tamaki, Mirio, Shota, and Tsuyu and asks for a report on the situation. Ochako explains that they've called an ambulance for Sir Night Eye and that Izuku has defeated Kai, but his power is spiraling out of control. In reality, it's Eri's quirk that's causing Izuku immense pain. Tsuyu lifts the injured Shota so that he can see Izuku. Shota, thinking that he's erasing Izuku's quirk, disables Eri's quirk. Eri and Izuku fall unconscious as their quirks are deactivated. Outside, Izuku hands over Eri to the paramedics, telling them that she has a fever ever since she lost consciousness. Before heading into an ambulance, Sir Night Eye is surprised that the future he saw has turned out differently. Sir Night Eye tells Izuku that he really did twist the future. Izuku rushes to Sir Night Eye and tells him that All Might said that he's alive and is ashamed to look at him in the eye. Izuku asks Sir Night Eye to hang on long enough for him to see All Might again. Sir Night Eye closes his eyes, replying to Izuku that many heroes were injured to save one girl, and, although he finds the situation difficult to be pleased with, thanks Izuku. Ryukyu also takes a moment to thank Izuku for his incredible bravery. At 9.15am, the pro hero's rescue operation to save Eri has been completed. In the hospital, the doctor is surprised that Izuku barely has any injuries, but in those moments, he was worried about others. Shoto appears and calms him. While walking through the hallway, Shota apologizes to him for not being with him during the critical moments of the battle before going on to explain the conditions of the other heroes. Although with different severity, no one has life-threatening injuries and they'll recover with time. However, Shota explains that Eri still hasn't woken up. Also, she's currently in quarantine because her quirk is too dangerous and she can't control it properly so he tells Izuku that they can't rely on Eri's quirk. They meet All Might, Night Eye's sidekicks, and Recovery Girl and a surgeon gives them the bad news. The wounds that Sir Night Eye suffered during the fight against Kai proved to be too serious, and unfortunately, there's nothing they can do. Everyone goes to Sir Night Eye's room, and soon, Mirio Togata joins them. Izuku begs Sir Night Eye to live, as Sir Night Eye claims that he doesn't blame All Might and only wanted him to be happy and is fine with All Might fighting against fate. Sir Night Eye has wanted to change All Might's future where he was murdered, but he couldn't find any answers. However, Izuku showed him a way. Sir Night Eye hypothesizes that everyone's wishes for a better future changed the outcome. All Might and Izuku grieve as Sir Night Eye is satisfied with his changed view of the future never being certain. In his last moment, Sir Night Eye says goodbye to everyone. Thanks to have met All Might and Deku, Sir Night Eye passes away peacefully after telling everyone to keep smiling as society needs smiles and laughs to bring about a brighter future. Izuku, Mirio, and All Might can't stop crying. Next day, at the hospital, Izuku learns of the news that the League of Villains attacked the Shiei Saikai transport. Shota tells him not to feel responsible and explains that all students other than Mirio are to return to school. Eri will also remain behind despite Izuku's misgivings about leaving her. Izuku leaves to visit Mirio, who's spinning his legs with cheerful energy despite everything that's occurred. Recalling All Might's habit of this, Izuku feels tremendous guilt for allowing Night Eye to die and for allowing Mirio to lose his abilities. He knows that Mirio did more than anyone during the raid, and believes that if he had one for all, Mirio could have saved his master. Izuku goes as far as to propose that Mirio could take Izuku's quirk, indicating how Izuku believes that Mirio is truly the worthier candidate for one for all, like Night Eye had said. To his surprise, Mirio turns it down. He replies that he would refuse Izuku's offer, telling Izuku that by accepting his quirk, Izuku would suffer hardship. Although he doesn't understand why Izuku feels dejected, he reminds him that he's the hero and says that he has faith that Eri might master her quirk to restore his and believes in the words of Night Eye of being a hero. Mirio claims he's fine and urges Izuku to smile and continue on with a strong heart. Mirio's optimism convinces Izuku to accept the reality. Izuku tells Mirio that he'll be waiting for him to return to UA while he's taking a temporary leave of absence. After being discharged, Izuku meets Eijiro at the doors of the hospital. Then, the police appear to ask them to accompany them to the station to answer some questions about the Chihei Saikai raid. Remedial Course Arc Izuku, Eijiro, Suyo, and Ochako return to the Heights Alliance. When they finally arrive, the entirety of Class 1A greet them, glad they're alright, checking to make sure they're doing okay physically and mentally after their mission. Tenya Ida tries to calm down the class and asks them to be sensitive towards their feelings after everything they went through. Izuku thanks him for thinking about their feelings but ensures him he's fine. With the beginning of October, Izuku, Ochako, Eijiro, and Suyu were given permission to go to Sir Night Eye's funeral along with the big three, All Might and Shota. Eri regained consciousness even though her psychological state was still unstable, meaning Izuku and the others were still forbidden to see her face to face. Back in Class 1A, after a mathematics class with ectoplasm, Izuku, Ochako, and Tenya prepare to go to eat lunch. 
However, Aoyama suddenly approaches Izuku at that moment and puts a block of cheese in his mouth, surprising him. Izuku then states how his recent behavior left a strong impact on him, commenting that Aoyama was a man that he could never read. Later that night, Izuku writes some notes before going to sleep late as Aoyama stares at him through his window. Yuga watches a sleeping Izuku from the window before doing something outside and leaving the area. It turns out Izuku was aware of this and becomes scared by Yuga's strange behavior as he sees the latter left him a message in cheese to say he knows something about Izuku while he's scared by its state. Izuku meets up with his friends though internally notes he couldn't sleep with Yuga's strange behavior keeping him up before the latter casually greets him to his fear. In class, he notes that he's not really talked to Yuga much and wonders about him as the attitude he's shown in contrast to his flamboyant and lively persona. During training, Izuku ignores Eijiro's request to train together since he wants to do so alone. Katsuki questions him on whether he's made any improvements in his quirk, but Izuku states he hasn't. Katsuki berates him for his lack of initiative as he brings up Izuku's promise to surpass him before he leaves. Izuku is then called out by Yuga who shows him a new move he's created though it causes him severe stomach problems. Seeing his state, Izuku asks the instructor for permission to take Yuga away for him to recuperate before he asks him what he meant in his message. Yuga explains that he's aware of Izuku not being accustomed to his quirk as the latter wonders if he found out his secret. However, Yuga reveals that he went through a similar experience as he details his childhood of having to wear a belt to prevent his powers from leaking out and how he noticed it was similar to Izuku's initial lack of a control of his before they both overcame it. He then tells Izuku that he's not alone in hardships as it's better to face them together or they won't excel. Hearing those words, Izuku realizes that Yuga's actions weren't meant to scare him, but to encourage him as he smiles and thanks him for the support before Yuga suffers from another stomach ache. After this, Izuku and Yuga become good friends with some of the class noting on their frequent interactions. UA School Festival Arc At UA High School, Class 1A chooses to make a band and dance performance for the school festival. The lively Mina begins to show off her dance moves while her classmates, including Izuku, are stunned by her skill. Izuku is shown holding and presumably skimming through his notebook while observing Mina's movements carefully, mumbling various facts on the subject to himself. He later looks up rather solemnly and states that he should try it out. Mina responds by calling Izuku over to teach him a move named two-stepping, as a surprised and awkward looking Izuku goes to join her. After everyone's in their seat, Shota announces that the school festival is taking place soon, and the class is visibly amused. Since Class A also has to participate, Shota orders them to pick out a program to perform at the festival. Izuku suggests a hero quiz, but his classmates also have their own ideas, and they don't reach an agreement. At night, because he needs extra classes to recover the lost hours due to work studies, he can't participate in the meeting of his colleagues at Heights Alliance, who reach an agreement that the performance will be a musical one. Still, Izuku likes the idea. The next day, Izuku is excused by Shota to visit Eri, explaining to the class that the request to visit was exclusively for Izuku and Mirio. Once the two are in the room, Izuku apologizes for not seeing her earlier, while Mirio offers her a fruit basket. After setting it aside, Eri tells Izuku that while she was being saved, she never knew his name. Izuku quickly states his full and hero name, tacking alongside that she could refer to him as Deku, as it was shorter and easier to pronounce. Eri then begins to blame herself for the severe injuries everyone involved sustained. However, she's unaware that Sir Night Eye passed away. Eri is guilty that Mirio lost his quirk because of her, but Mirio tells Eri that she isn't to blame, and everyone is glad that she's safe, which comforts Eri. Suddenly, Izuku has an idea and asks Shota if Eri can come to the school festival. Mirio explains to Eri that the school festival is an occasion that UA High School hosts, where there'll be lots of events on display where people can enjoy themselves while tasting delicious foods such as candied apples, which catches Eri's attention. As Shota calls Nezu to get his approval, Izuku asks Eri about his idea. Eri wants to get to know the people who saved her and agrees to go to the school festival. Mirio comically adds on that he could take her on a supervised date, to which Izuku responds by curiously asking him what he meant. Izuku and All Might are situated in the break room, conversing about the festival. All Might then asks Izuku why he wanted to meet up at such a busy time, and Izuku starts telling him about his recent internship, stating that he could only muster up about 20% of his strength if he was under duress. He then monologues about how if Eri weren't there, his movements would have been too predictable and he would have been immobilized immediately. Izuku reveals that against long-range attacks, he's useless. All Might reacts by telling him he should have long-range attacks as well, while Izuku is flustered and instantly puts himself down. The scene then switches over to a forested area of the school grounds where All Might begins to teach him by having him bring out full cowl. Izuku's stance allows him to unleash an attack where he's positioned, and he unleashes a monstrous burst of wind, known as Shoot Style. All Might congratulates him and asks him to rethink through his journey. Izuku looks back on his six major steps he has accomplished. All Might states that, once Izuku's maximum limit had passed 15%, he had wanted to tell him that he was not always bringing out 100%. 
Izuku realized that he can't move long at 20%, so at the moment of impact, that is when he should briefly release an amount close to his limit. Izuku continues dance practice with the dancing team for the school festival. He confuses Mina's instructions and has to be corrected. A week later, Mina tells Izuku he's being switched over to the staging team from the dancing team to help maneuver Yuga during his part of the presentation. He's selected since he and Yuga have been getting along as of late. Realizing he'll still be able to perform, he accepts the change in position. Later on, he and All Might are out training in the forest before Mei Hatsume appears while following one of her gadgets that All Might caught. Izuku is noticed by Mei who tells him the item that he requested is similar to one of her inventions and is customizing it for his use, to which he thanks her. As Mei leaves, Izuku explains to All Might that he requested an item to help him with his new move. All Might surprises Izuku by revealing that he once had support items, but since it wasn't effective to him, he chose to fight relying on his own body. Early next morning, Izuku's training when Mei appears to tell him his new gloves, she had designed for him to use with shoot style with, are complete and gives them to him. Izuku was practicing to get used to the gloves until he is almost out of time. At 8.30, Izuku hurries back to UA after buying everything he needed. On the way back, however, he runs into the disguised duo of Gentle Criminal and La Brava. Gentle Criminal mentions Golden Tip's Imperial Tea, which Izuku remembers as the tea Momo served to everyone the day before. From that conversation, the disguised Gentle Criminal realizes that Izuku is a UA student, and after noticing that he made a blunder for talking too long, he and La Brava try to leave. However, he's too late, as Izuku recognizes Gentle Criminal as the criminal from the videos he saw with Ochako and deduces that he's trying to do something at UA. So, he begs him not to attack the festival. Gentle uses Gently Rebound on Izuku, which blasts him across the street as he comments on his dislike for using violence to solve his problems. As Gentle and Labrava attempt to make their escape, Izuku charges at them. Gentle turns around and uses his quirk on the ground, and Izuku gets caught by Gentle's Gently Trampoline and is shot into the air. Gentle Criminal waves farewell to Izuku while he and Labrava bounce away in the air. In midair, after clearing his head of all doubts and focusing the one for all power to 20% in his fingers, Izuku strikes Gentle with Delaware Smash Air Force. Without giving him time to recover from the attack, Izuku charges Gentle and smashes him into a construction building. Gentle tries to convince Izuku to let him continue with his plan because all he wants is to infiltrate the festival, not harm anyone, but Izuku refuses because his actions would cause the cancellation of the festival for which everyone has worked so hard on and with which he tries to make Eri smile with. Izuku charges at a fleeing Gentle until the latter starts bouncing around Izuku with great speed by turning the construction beams around him into elastic. Izuku shoots Gentle another air blast, but the villain uses his quirk to make the attack rebound, hitting Deku himself. Then to distract Izuku, Gentle uses his quirk to make one of the seal beams fall, forcing Izuku to jump in the way of the seal beam to catch it to keep it from crashing a bystander underneath him. Gentle uses his quirk and turns a crane's hook into elastic to slingshot himself and Labrava out of the construction site and fly towards UA. Using his enhanced strength to lift up the beam with one hand, Izuku fires another Delaware Smash Air Force from a far distance at Gentle and Labrava. Gentle dodges Izuku's attack and notes his tenacity. Using his quirk, Gentle and Labrava land safely in the forest area that surrounds the school, but Izuku appears above them, ready to shoot another air blast. Gentle raises an elastic invisible barrier to protect himself and Labrava from the attack, but it doesn't occur. Instead, Izuku uses the same aerial trampolines Gentle created to get behind him and aims precisely to shoot out his barriers to ricochet his attack right at Gentle. Without giving him time to react, Izuku manages to pin them down on the ground. Unfortunately, Labrava uses her quirk to grant Gentle enough strength to throw Deku off them. Gentle creates several aerial elastic barriers and jumps from them all over the vicinity before charging at Izuku. On the ground, Izuku fires four Delaware Smash Air Forces at once, striking Gentle in the leg. Gentle loses his balance in midair and using this opportunity, Izuku sneaks up on him and ends up taking down Gentle with a St. Louis Smash. Izuku apprehends Gentle and admits that out of all the battles he's fought, the one with him has been the toughest so far. Izuku watches as Labrava returns to the area and sees that he's been defeated by Izuku, as Gentle orders her to run away. A flabbergasted Labrava instead demands Izuku to let Gentle go, and while hitting Izuku, yells that Gentle poured his heart and soul into their UA infiltration plan and that she's unable to live without him. Gentle musters up the remaining strength given to him by Labrava's quirk and pushes Izuku off and into the air, using his quirk to bounce Izuku away. Izuku Midoriya has landed outside the forest. He rushes back, having understood what Gentle wanted to do. Once he arrives, he sees that Gentle has surrendered to the teachers, and he lies to them with the intention that Labrava will be given a lesser sentence. Izuku decides to play along when he's asked about what's happened, saying he and Gentle had a small disagreement, but that everything's fine now. Ectoplasm warns Izuku that All Might is worried about him, and there's less than an hour left for Class 1A's performance to start. 
Thankfully, he arrives at 9.50 a.m. and Yuga Aoyama, who is waiting for him at the entrance, gives him his suit for the performance. The clock turns 10, Class 1A's live dance performance begins. The curtains open up and as the crowd begins cheering, Izuku's with his classmates and waves to the crowd, much to Eri's happiness, who smiles in return. The music performance starts and Class 1A manages to pump up the audience with their singing and dancing. Izuku performs in the dance and is able to see Eri at the show. The show ends with applause and a great ovation from the audience. After the performance, Izuku is reprimanded by All Might for having forgotten his cell phone. Toshinori is well aware of the situation from Hound Dog and Ectoplasm. Then, Izuku is scolded by Hound Dog. Although he praises Izuku for not getting injured and for preventing the festival from being cancelled, he scolds him for being out of line since he failed to contact any heroes in the vicinity and reminds him that he's not the only hero out there protecting the peace. Izuku acknowledges his fault which satisfies the teacher who sends Izuku flying towards the festival, telling him to have fun. Izuku enjoys the rest of the festival together with his friends and Eri until finally everything ends and Eri must return to the hospital. Pro Hero Arc As November comes to a close, Izuku, Ochako, Suyu, and Eijiro are informed by Shota Aizawa that Eri will be taken in by the school. Shota states that's because she doesn't have anyone who can take care of her and he's the only one who can prevent her quirk from going out of control again. Izuku listens to Mirio explain the growth of her horn and states he'll also help Shota monitor her and welcomes Class 1A to visit her once in a while since they'll all be busy. Then Shota tells his students to return to their dormitories as they'll have visitors. Afterwards, Izuku and his class meet the Pussycats again when they visit UA. Izuku is happy to see Kota again. He thanks him for the letter by stating he treasured it. Mandalay points out the new shoes Kota has to Izuku, which look exactly like Izuku's shoes. Later at UA dorms, Izuku and his classmates watch a television report of a Nomu attack in the city and are horrified as it shows Endeavor being overwhelmed by Hood's attack. A worried Izuku looks to Shoto who walks into the room to watch the scene of his injured father laying defeated. Izuku continues to watch as Endeavor battles the Nomu and sustains more injuries before launching a counterattack. Izuku then sees Endeavor take down the Nomu and stand proud before watching as a relieved Shoto fell to his knees. Not long after, Izuku is exhausted from training and falls asleep. He experiences a dream where he sees the previous users of One for All more clearly than he had before. Izuku sees a flashback of All for One and his brother, the first user of One for All. Izuku notices that apart from him, only seven successors of One for All are beside him when there should be eight. Izuku gets a glimpse into the past, during the chaotic time when quirks were first appearing. He recognizes All for One's voice and turns to see All for One and his brother arguing about society's current state of affairs brought upon by the advent of quirks. Izuku understands that he's watching the rise to power of All for One, the defiance of his younger brother towards him, and the series of events that led to the creation of One for All. Much to Izuku's shock, it's revealed that the first user had intentionally shared his memory with him. When the first user interacts with him, Izuku realizes that he's experiencing something All Might had told him was impossible. The brother notes he wanted to show Izuku more, but Izuku's current level won't permit it, though he assures Izuku that he's not alone. And the latter wakes up. Izuku is found on the floor by Yuga Aoyama, who finds the room a mess, and Izuku with a glowing arm. Joint Training Arc Following his dream, Izuku is questioned by Yuga on the state of his room, but he excuses it and goes on a jog, unable to fall back asleep after his dream. He recalls the last part of his dream when All for One's brother reached out to touch his hand, and all of the past users of One for All were looking directly at him. He later meets All Might in Yue's nap room. Izuku tells him about his dream. All Might tells Izuku that he also experienced similar visions. His master told him that they're vestigial remnants of the prior generations of One for All rather than the usual simple dreams. He also tells Izuku that she taught him the impossibility of the prior generations communicating with him, which likely makes Izuku the first user of One for All to experience this phenomenon. However, All Might recalls the discussion with his master where she told him that even if she dies, they'll meet again within One for All. Izuku asks All Might about what All for One's brother meant by the singularity. All Might tells Izuku that he truly doesn't understand what happened that well and they should search for answers together. Izuku and All Might soon encounter Shota and Hitoshi leaving the neighboring room. Izuku excitedly greets Hitoshi, mentioning that he saw him with Shota before. Hitoshi smiles at Izuku and confirms his memory. Shota tells Izuku to get ready as they have a busy day. Izuku and the rest of Class 1A group up at Ground Gamma from the final exams. He speaks with Katsuki on his costume changes and starts to theorize on why he made the changes he did, putting Katsuki into a rage. Mashirao comments on Izuku's costume, bringing up the glove upgrade that Mei made for him before UA School Festival. Izuku then witnesses the arrival of Class 1B, with Nato claiming that the momentum is now moving to their side. Izuku then hears Shota and Sekijiro tell the two classes they'll have a special guest, Hitoshi Shinso, who's trying to transfer to the hero course. 
Izuku and Mashirao react to seeing Hitoshi commenting on his prototype costume, noting his mask and the capturing weapon he's wearing. Yuga talks with Mashirao that when someone responds to Hitoshi, they're brainwashed by his quirk, but Minoru remembers that Deku was able to break free. Izuku replies that at that time, it was just a fluke. At Shota's urging, Hitoshi introduces himself to the class. He tells everyone that his goal is to become a great hero who can help people with his quirk, and while he looks at Izuku, he finishes his speech by saying that he isn't here to make friends. Despite his words, Izuku is eager to face him. Then, Class 1A and 1B draws lots to determine their teams. Izuku teams up with Ochako, Mina, and Minoru. His team will face Monoma's team in Round 5. Hitoshi draws his own lots, being placed into Class 1A's team in the first round and Class 1B's team in the fifth, which means he'll face Izuku again. The first round's about to start and Izuku is eager to see how much Hitoshi has improved since the last time. Izuku watches the first round, which confronts Suyu's team against Ibata's team. The match ends with victory for Class 1A, where Hitoshi had the relevant role. After seeing this, considering that he'll face him in the fifth round, Izuku gets tougher with his team to start battle planning and come up with some countermeasures. After the second round, where Momo's team faces Kendo's team, All Might appears behind Izuku so he can have a word with him, and the two move to a quieter corner. All Might asks Izuku if he's felt anything weird since his dream about the previous users of One For All. Izuku replies that he hasn't, and All Might tells him that he'll ask Gran Torino if Nanashimuro ever mentioned anything about him having similar visions. All Might tells Izuku to be careful in his match against Hitoshi, as Hitoshi seems to be a piece of the puzzle as far as his visions are concerned. Suddenly, Katsuki appears behind Izuku, scaring him. Katsuki asks about what Izuku and All Might were just talking about, reminding the two that he's also in on their secret. They tell Katsuki that One For All managed to activate on its own when Izuku had his dream, which surprises Katsuki. Finally, fifth round comes. The two teams head towards their respective starting points, with a full cowled Izuku leaping forward while Ochako, Mina, and Minoru walk on discussing their plan. Ochako and Mina gloomily believe that they're at a heavy disadvantage, as all of them have more physical quirks and are therefore vulnerable to Class 1B's long-range attacks. Izuku appears to cheer them up. Upon arriving at their checkpoint, Izuku signals his teammates to move aside as he prepares to lure out 1B's members into attacking him. Activating his full cowl power-up, Izuku searches the area while remaining cautious around his surroundings. Suddenly, a flying oil barrel flies straight into Izuku's direction, with the latter realizing that Reiko is using her poltergeist quirk to attack him. As he braces himself for the attack, Izuku hears Ochako screaming and turns around, only to find a smug Nato Monoma to reveal himself from the shadows of the battlefield. Nato admits that he has to be on full guard since he's aware of Izuku's outstanding fighting technique. Izuku might be attempting to provoke him. Nato then starts questioning Izuku about his strategy and taunts the latter for not staying with his team for cooperation purposes. Nato comments that his team must have ambushed 1A with the help of Hitoshi's powers, even to the point of sadistically taunting Katsuki in his involvement for ending All Might's career as number one hero. This prompts an enraged Izuku to charge at Nato, preparing to unleash a concentrated Delaware smash. Just when he's going to shoot, Izuku's arm once again glows as All For One goes berserk and he shoots out black energy tendrils. Unable to control the new sensation, Izuku orders for everyone to take cover while he struggles in pain, but Ochako clings to Izuku and has Hitoshi use his brainwashing to save him from being absorbed into the black energy created by One For All. Hitoshi removes his mask and asks Izuku if he can have a proper rematch. Hearing this, Izuku confirms the offer and allows himself to fall under Hitoshi's spell once again. The mysterious black power disappears as he loses consciousness and his powers deactivate. While unconscious, he finds himself in an unknown area and hears a loud voice calling him, revealed to be one of the former users of One For All. A bald man wearing goggles and a black jacket with a silver belt. The user tells Izuku that although his quirk has finally manifested, he's using it in a wrong way. Izuku is told that he needs to stop activating his power with such idle thoughts. The man then encourages Izuku to try harder to control the quirk. The previous One For All wielder continues the lecture he was giving Izuku. He tells him not to give up and then proceeds to inform him that the black tendrils he was emitting earlier in the match were actually the manifestation of the previous One For All wielder's quirk, Black Whip. The reason it suddenly appeared is because Izuku was thinking about how he wanted to capture Nato Monoma, fitting the nature of the quirk perfectly and so causing it to appear. He says that this core has started expanding and growing larger, and that the same is also happening to One For All itself. The predecessor also says that its strength has also increased due to the power of One For All, and after he tells Izuku to do his best and that all the predecessors are there with him and supporting him, he vanishes. Ochako immediately shakes Izuku to wake him from the brainwashing. Ochako calms Izuku down as they float in midair. Izuku expresses shock and concern for her injuries and what had transpired. Nato takes advantage of their guard being down and ambushes Izuku from behind while floating on an enlarged metal nut, attempting to touch him and copy his quirk. He manages to knock Izuku over and Ochaku tries to subdue him using gunhead martial arts. Reiko arrives in time and saves Nato by using flying projectiles to distract his attacker. Ochako dodges as everyone from both teams join the fray, the once technical battle turning into an all-out brawl. 
Hitoshi sends his capturing weapon flying Orochako, but Izuku darts out in front of her and grabs it, ready to face Hitoshi once again. Despite Izuku's chaotic outburst, all of the students are still eager to win the fight. Izuku explains to Ochako that he can't use his quirk after what happened earlier, saying he'll have to rely on her powers to aid him against Satoshi. Nato throws a projectile at Izuku and Ochako, but the latter deflects it with her wrist guard. As Nato touches Izuku and therefore copies his quirk, he attempts to activate one for all, but it doesn't appear to work, allowing Ochako to jump in and swiftly pin him down. Hitoshi realizes his teammate's been caught and calls out to him, readying his binding cloth to support Nato. But Izuku uses Ochako's quirk to float up to his position above the battlefield, distracting him from his captured teammate. They both start grappling and Hitoshi reminds Izuku of their last bout, and Izuku knows Hitoshi is too big of a threat not to neutralize now. Hitoshi claims he's not the same as before and tries to bring the pipes down on Izuku the same way he did in round 1. Izuku recalls the short time he spent in One For All after falling under Hitoshi's brainwashing. He spoke to a former One For All user and was told to use his new quirk Black Whip by keeping his heart under control. This man reminded Izuku of All Might, and that gives him enough heart to focus and use the black tendrils to suspend the pipes in the air. Hitoshi is surprised by this new development and asks if Izuku was only faking being in pain before. Izuku suddenly gets some painful physical backlash for using Black Whip, realizing his body isn't ready for its power yet, and he must master one for all first. To avoid another outburst, Izuku adjusts full cowl to 8%. Izuku spins off a wall to completely evade Hitoshi's capturing weapon. Izuku pins down Hitoshi, reminding his team of the claim for a victory that he made before the match began. Class 1A's team manages to turn the battle around. Midnight reveals that Class 1A won the battle overall, and the winners celebrate their victory, leaving the losing class to lament over their loss. Before adjourning, Shota questions Izuku about the new move he used with everyone else interested too. Izuku claims that he isn't sure what it was, describing how his power overflowed and saying that he didn't know why the tendrils suddenly appeared. He thanks Hitoshi and Ochako for saving him. Mina also adds that Ochako did latch herself onto Izuku's body to prevent him from losing control. Both Izuku and Ochako began to blush rapidly in embarrassment. However, Hitoshi reveals that he didn't save Izuku out of benevolence nor Ochako's orders, but only because he wanted to fight his old rival and win a satisfying victory. As Hitoshi admits that he acted on his own desires, Shota proceeds to scold his pupil, much to the shock of Izuku and Ochako. Shota points out that everyone in the hero course trained hard to become a hero, and they can't help others if they don't have the will to act on their own, commending Hitoshi for demonstrating the demeanor of a real hero. Izuku follows on by praising the hero in training on his skills throughout the exercise, mentioning how his new equipment gave him an upper hand in taking down opponents with no ease. Izuku also feels like he hasn't made himself reliable just yet. Later, he has a conversation with All Might and Katsuki about the Black Whip. Katsuki asks All Might how he knew about using previous wielder's quirks, but All Might admits that he knows nothing. Then he asks Izuku if there was a trigger that caused Black Whip to manifest, but the latter denies and wonders if there could have been some sort of external catalyst. Katsuki theorizes that maybe this turn of events has anything to do for All for One. Izuku and Katsuki engage in a sparring match at Jim Gamma to activate the Black Whip ability, but nothing happens, so All Might stops the fight, and Izuku and Katsuki return to their dormitories where the students of Class 1A mingle with the students of Class 1B. Once there, Shoto stops to converse with him by asking Izuku if he has two quirks like him, and if he was still hiding his power during their fight at the sports festival. Izuku hurriedly replies that the Black Tendrils might be an extension of his original quirk, and he wasn't holding back against him. Shoto believes him. The next day, Eri, Izuku, Mirio, and Nato are standing outside the teaching staff dormitories. Shota wants Nato to copy Eri's rewind quirk, and Izuku and Mirio are with her because he doesn't want to leave Eri alone with Nato, as his eccentric personality might be bad for her mental health. Shota explains to Mirio and Izuku that as Eri doesn't understand how to properly use her power, he hoped that Nato's copy quirk would help her and make it easier for her to learn it as well. Eri feels sad and apologizes for causing everyone trouble, saying that everyone would be better off if she didn't have her ability, but Izuku reminds her that it was her power that saved him, stating that what she said is not true at all. He explains that what power is worth is all about how it's used, comparing it to how a knife is dangerous initially, but when used right, can make all kinds of food and saying that her power is an amazing one. These words encourage Eri, and she says that she'll try her best after all. Internally, Izuku promises himself that he'll master one for all. My Hero Academia Heroes Rising During fall, the Hero Public Safety Commission devises the Hero Work Recommendation Project to help train the new generation of heroes due to All Might's retirement. Weeks go by, and shortly after winter begins after the hero interview training, Class 1A is sent to Nabu Island, a remote place in southern Japan. The pro heroes who protected the island are about to retire, so the students will take care of the place, performing duties as real heroes, acting like their own hero office until the arrival of new pro heroes. 
Because Nabu Island is quite isolated from the rest of the country, and therefore far from any villain activity, there hasn't been a notable incident since the last 30 years. For this reason, their work on the island basically involves mostly minor deeds. Ochako gets a call from a little girl who lost his brother somewhere on the island, and calls across the room and asks if anyone can help her find the lost kid. Izuku and Kyoka volunteer to help. The three search the island and find the little boy named Katsuma Shimano at a nearby park. His older sister, Mahoro Shimano, suddenly appears and scolds Izuku for taking so long to find them, revealing that she was timing Izuku and the others on their arrival to their location. After the two kids leave, Wachako and Kyoka are confused by the exchange, but Izuku doesn't mind about being scolded by the child. He's just happy the little boy is with his sister. Later on that night, Izuku's practicing his kicks to keep training with one for all. Coming back from his patrol, Katsuki finds Izuku training and tells him to hurry and master his quirk. They're interrupted by Katsuma, who tells them a villain has appeared in the castle ruins. Katsuki and Izuku rushed over to where Katsuma said the villain is located. Katsuki arrives on the scene first to confront the giant mantis villain, but quickly realizes it's nothing but an illusion created by Mahoro's quirk. Katsuki angrily scolds Mahoro and Katsuma for having faked a villain attack before Izuku restrains him while the two kids run away. The next day, Izuku comes across Katsuma again, who apologizes for his sister's prank last night. After Katsuma leaves, a neighbor informs Izuku the kid's mother died and the villagers watches after them while their father's away working. By sunset, Katsuma meets back with Mahoro at the same park where he met Izuku and is about to tell his sister about becoming a hero when Nine and his gang invades the island. Mahoro calls the agency to tell Katsuki about the villain attack. He doesn't believe her at first, but Izuku hears the exchange. Just before Izuku can answer back, the phone service is cut off after Chimera destroyed the communications tower. Izuku immediately runs off to help the kids, and the rest of the classmates soon realize the situation and organize to face the villains. Izuku arrives at the island's port, finding it completely destroyed. He tries to communicate it to his friends, but discovers that his cell phone doesn't work. Concerned by Katsuma and Mahoro, Izuku recalls the previous conversation with the neighbor, and thereby deduces where the children must live. Izuku arrives in time to the place and rescues the kids from Nine, using his quirk to escape through a forest area and get the kids to safety. Izuku tells them to run away while he faces Nine in the forest area. During the fight, Izuku discovers that Nine is not only the owner of several quirks, but also has the ability to steal them just like All for One. Thanks to this, Nine overwhelms Izuku in the fight and tries to seal Izuku's one for all, but when he fails, Nine decides to dispose of Izuku. Mahoro and Katsuma try to help Izuku, but he orders them to flee. Before Nine gets rid of Izuku, Mahoro creates a giant illusion of the young hero and gets Katsuki's attention. Katsuki arrives and works with Izuku to defeat the villain, but his weather manipulation quirk strikes both students with a powerful lightning, defeating them. Before losing consciousness, Izuku realizes that Nine suffers from an illness if he abuses the use of his quirks too much, rendering him unable to fight. Slice arrives to take Nine away and signals to her fellow villains to retreat at the same time Izuku, Katsuki, and the kids are rescued by other students. Later on that night, Class 1A regroups and shelters everyone to treat the wound and feed the hungry. Izuku and Katsuki are both unconscious and the doctors can only use their quirks to close their wounds, but they can't treat them any further. Katsuma arrives and helps the clinic by using his cell activation to heal both Izuku and Katsuki. They try to figure out what the villains are after, and Katsuma reveals Nine is trying to steal his quirk. He offers to surrender to Nine to save everyone, but Izuku appears and stops him, telling Katsuma he has an amazing quirk that he should never give up. The whole class unanimously agrees to fight the villains and protect everyone on the island. Izuku devises a plan of action for the class. By relocating all the civilians to Mount Shiroyama in the smaller island where the ancient castle is located, it can hold all of the residents in the large cave safely. This way, the villains only have one route to get to Katsuma, and everyone has an escape route if needed. The next morning, Nine and his crew arrive at the entrance to the island. They fall into Class 1A's trap and are forced to split up by Yuga and Momo's ultimate moves. And as planned, the students take turn attacking him to force him to use his quirks as much as possible. Despite their attempts to stop him, Nine gradually defeats the students until it's Izuku and Katsuki's turn to face him. As the villain is about to defeat him, he reaches his limit and starts to reel in pain from his illness. Izuku and Katsuki seize the opportunity, but Nine activates his life support to take a heavy dose of empowering drug and goes beyond his limit, summoning a massive lightning strike that seemingly vaporized Izuku and Katsuki. The remaining students try to apprehend Nine, but the villain easily defeats them and catches Katsuma and Mahoro up. He holds Mahoro hostage and threatens to kill her if Katsuma doesn't surrender his quirk. Katsuma runs towards Nine to save her, but Nine tosses Mahoro to the side and tries to seal Katsuma's quirk. Before he can do it, Izuku and Katsuki enter the fray to save the children. Izuku kicks Nine's face, and the force of the blow throws the villain several meters away from Katsuma. Then he apologizes to the little boy for the delay and praises him for his bravery. As the kids flee to safety, Izuku and Katsuki proceed to fight Nine. 
Izuku and Katsuki gain the advantage after Nine is reaching his limits of using his multiple quirks and overwhelms him with a combination of Detroit Smash and Explosion. On the verge of defeat, Nine uses the entire empowering drug in his life support system which amplifies all his quirks to the maximum and proceeds to decimate Izuku and Katsuki with his bullet laser and uses his Hydra to start crushing them to death. With the entire class down and wounded, Izuku makes the desperate risk. He transfers one for all to Katsuki, breaking the grip from Nine. Infuriated, Nine attempts to kill them by summoning another massive firestorm on the island, destroying much of the island's infrastructure. Katsuki reaches one for all full cowl 100% and together with Izuku, they use Detroit Smash to stop the storm. Nine is just shocked by what he had just witnessed. Still, he refuses to give up on fulfilling his dreams and engages Izuku and Katsuki in intense combat, releasing all his quirks at maximum power. After a lengthy fight, Izuku and Katsuki finally manage to defeat Nine once and for all using the Explosion Quirk, combined with St. Louis Smash at 100%, effectively ending the threat. Both heroes pass out. As Izuku loses consciousness, he thanks One for All for everything as its last embers are extinguished inside him. After Class 1A emerged victorious over the threat, the military and a large number of heroes arrive on Nabu Island, rescuing the civilians, medically treating Class 1A, and putting the villains into custody. All Might recovers the barely conscious Izuku and the unconscious Katsuki. He cradles Izuku in his arms and says he did well, as Izuku asks if Katsuki's okay. Izuku then starts crying as he apologizes to All Might for giving one for all to Katsuki because he had no other choice to protect the people of the island before losing consciousness. All Might forgives Izuku saying he's brave and deserving of one for all, and then miraculously, Izuku's body glows with the power of one for all coursing through his veins once more. All Might says it's a miracle, but perhaps the predecessors willed it for Izuku to hold this power. All Might takes both boys to be healed. Later, they're healed by Recovery Girl and Katsuma. For the next two weeks, Class 1A continues to stay on Nabu Island to help repair the damage done by Nine and his villains until the Public Safety Commission suspends the program and orders them to be sent home. With the island being repaired by the military and the heroes, Class 1A boards a ferry to leave. Izuku had a conversation with Katsuki, who suffered amnesia where he doesn't remember using One For All. Katsuma and Mahuro, who are reunited with her father, say their goodbyes to Class 1A for protecting them and saving the island. Katsuma promises to Izuku that he'll get strong enough to be enrolled in UA High School in the future. Endeavor Agency Arc Izuku is shocked by Katsuki's rough and harsh attitude during an interview along with Shoto. When the interview staff had cut him out of the interview, Izuku comments that Katsuki's behavior wasn't very All Might-ish, which makes Katsuki angry and orders him to shut up. Later, Izuku checks on the daily news and hears about the Deka City incident that happened nine days ago. Despite having fewer casualties, the destruction was greater than that of the Kamino Yokohama incident. The mentality of society regarding heroes is changing, and when they were once very critical towards heroes, now they're showing them greater support. In response to this change in attitude, Mount Lady's invited to UA to give Class 1A hero interview training lessons. One by one, the students participate in a simulated interview, and when it's Izuku's turn to be interviewed, he gets so nervous that his body turns all stiff and can't help but stutter. Mount Lady decides to stop Izuku's stuttering by mentioning that many of his moves are throwbacks to All Might's. With this, Izuku excitedly goes on to talk about his dedication to following All Might's steps, but Midnight questions him about his newly developed Black Whip quirk. Izuku decides to demonstrate his newfound power, focusing on his inner strength as he visualizes what unlocking the ability will be like. With enough concentration, Izuku unleashes a small wisp of his Black Whip ability. Even though he's happy and excited about his progress, nobody else is impressed. Days later, the Hero Work Recommendation Project takes place. Shortly after they return from Nabu Island, he celebrates Christmas with his companions. With the Hero Work studies about to start, he still has no one to do it with. Later, Shota brings Eri to the Heights Alliance to enjoy Christmas with Class 1A. Everyone celebrates Christmas and has fun holding a surprise gift exchange. Izuku is ecstatic after receiving Ochako's gift, while Ochako herself smiles and blushes for receiving an All Might keychain from Izuku. When the party's over, Shoto approaches Izuku and Katsuki and offers them a chance to intern at his father's agency with them. Both accept the offer and talk to All Might about it, who thinks it's a great idea that both do the second work studies with Endeavor. Izuku is a bit worried about his training with One For All, but All Might replies that he doesn't expect that he'll experience more outbursts because he's mastered the image of locking and unlocking. For New Year's Eve, Izuku returns to his apartment to enjoy the holiday with his mother Inko. On the morning of New Year's Day, Inko says goodbye to his son Izuku and asks him to do his best. When Izuku, Shoto, and Katsuki meet with Endeavor, the current number one hero doesn't hesitate to tell Izuku and Katsuki that he only accepted them because his son asked him to, and he would have preferred Shoto to come alone. 
Despite his words, Izuku thanks him for accepting them as interns, recalling the conversation they both had during UA Sports Festival months ago. While walking down the street, Endeavor remarks the words that Izuku said to him at the sports festival about how Shoto isn't like him. Suddenly, Endeavor runs off saying that he won't be wasting time training others than Shoto, telling them that if they want to learn, then stay behind them, only to be surprised to see them already in their gear ready for action. A sonic boom goes off in the city while the boys try to keep up with their new employer. Izuku notes that Endeavor took off before anyone even noticed the commotion, which takes more than just speed. They found that a villain known as Star Servant is causing panic with his glass manipulation quirk. Endeavor's intervention forces the villain to flee down an alley and call his minions. When they come out at the other end, Star Servant's minions are ready to attack. The next moment, Izuku and Katsuki take on the minions directly. However, in an even faster flash, Hawks appears and effortlessly dispatches them with his feathers. After the villains are arrested, Hawks briefly chats with the three interns. Izuku introduces himself politely. Endeavor asks Hawks what he wants, to which Hawks deflects the question completely before promoting the Paranormal Liberation Front's book. Seeing how Japan's number two hero recommends the book, Izuku expresses his desire to read it too, and Hawks gives him, Shoto, and Katsuki extra copies that he carried with him. Once they arrive at Endeavor Agency, Endeavor asks his trainees what they want to achieve. Izuku says he wants to be able to control his power and use it with maximum performance. Endeavor recalls that he has a super strength quirk that's powerful but self-destructive. Izuku replies that he found the method to control it enough not to injure himself, but recently his quirk has manifested in a different way and unleashes a small wisp of his black whip quirk to show to Endeavor. He wants to use this new power as a weapon and has been thinking about applying some of the concept of his Air Force on it, and to help Endeavor to better understand what he wants, Izuku gives a very lengthy and detailed explanation of how his Air Force works and what he wants to achieve with his black whip. Surprisingly, Endeavor actually follows what Izuku is saying and what he wants. After listening to Katsuki and Shoto, Endeavor starts the work studies. He explains that his agency is governed by three fundamentals, rescue, evacuation, and battle. With his training, they'll make these processes their MO. Endeavor ends the lesson by telling Izuku, Shoto, and Katsuki that, during the winter break, their task is to beat a villain faster than him, even if only once. During the following days, the three students try to surpass Endeavor's test, but the veteran hero always manages to catch the villains before them. Endeavor doesn't hesitate to criticize them, telling them in what facets they need to improve. During a break, Endeavor asks Izuku if he's able to max his output for a second subconsciously. He replies that with full cowling, he has no problems, but with the Air Force, he still needs focus. Then Endeavor tells Izuku to forget about his secondary ability for now and focus only on using Air Force. When Izuku asks about the parallel processes, Endeavor advises him to learn to do two things at once subconsciously, and when he succeeds, throw in another thing. A week later, Endeavor brings Shoto, Izuku, and Katsuki over to his house for dinner per his daughter's suggestion. Dinner starts, well, with Izuku praising the food Fuyumi cooked, but ended up being quite awkward due to the complicated relationship between Endeavor and his children, and specifically due to Natsuo's resentment towards his father, and after he finishes, he quickly leaves, unable to sit near his father. Although it's clear that Endeavor regrets what he did and now tries to do his best for his family, it's hard for his children to forgive him. Izuku tells Shoto that he feels he's getting ready to forgive Endeavor, as he feels that if Shoto truly hated him, it would be fine to not forgive him. Fuyumi and Shoto tell Izuku and Katsuki about their older brother Toya, and how close he was to Natsuo, to the point he blames Endeavor for Toya's death. Although family relationships have improved a lot, there are still many wounds to heal. Endeavor then comes in and tells the three of them that he'll be taking them to UA High School. As the three of them thank Fuyumi for the meal, Fuyumi thanks Izuku for being Shoto's friend. While Endeavor's chauffeur drives them back to UA, Endeavor tells the boys that they'll have to keep going to his agency to continue the training on weekdays and weekends if their schedule allows. Just then, a villain appears in the middle of the road, holding Natsuo as a hostage, and calls out Endeavor to come face him. Endeavor leaps out of the car to save his son. The villain, introducing himself as Ending, is obsessed with Endeavor and wants the hero to kill him. Ending takes a step back when he sees the interns giving Endeavor an opportunity to attack the off-balance villain. However, when he sees Natsuo being held in front of Ending, Endeavor slows down not wanting to endanger him and allowing the three students to pass him in order to rescue Natsuo and defeat the villain. Disappointed, Ending threatens to increase the death toll if the flame hero doesn't kill him, sending several incoming cars into the air. As Izuku sees all the cars on the road flying in the air, he jumps into the air using Delaware Smash Air Force while thinking back to what Endeavor said about doing things subconsciously and successfully unleashes Black Whip, saving all the cars while yelling that he won't let any of Ending's wishes come true. The shocked Ending is then defeated by a fire-covered punch from Shoto. Izuku checks to make sure if any of the people were injured and claims to the other two that this was a complete victory for themselves. Paranormal Liberation War Arc Winter break ends, and students return from their hero work studies to show their progress with their quirks and skills. 
In the boys' changing room, Eijiro praises Izuku for controlling his other quirk, to which Izuku tells him he can only handle it for a moment and that it doesn't have many uses, but he considers it strong. As the students go outside, Izuku continues explaining that he needs to let his body adapt to it because it throws off his sense of speed so his brain can't keep up. When the students arrive at Ground Alpha, they meet with All Might, who's replacing Shota Aizawa because he had an emergency to attend to. One by one, the students battle villain bots to show off their new skills and super moves they've developed. Finally, Izuku, Katsuki, and Shoto show off what they learned working for the number one pro hero Endeavor at his agency. Izuku shows off the results of his experience and his improved control over Black Whip. After their exhibition, several of the classmates congratulate the three students for their improvements. Izuku then spots Uchako and approaches her, thanking her properly for helping him get Black Whip under control during their joint training battle. Ochako brushes him off and reveals that his new abilities inspired her to add wires to her costume. She thanks him for helping her get stronger and says that they both helped each other up, fist bumping Izuku. Later, All Might meets Izuku and Katsuki at the teacher's lounge, congratulating the two on their improvements before placing a notebook on the table that contains all the information he could find about the previous One For All users and their quirks. Although he reveals he couldn't find anything on the second and third users, Izuku tells All Might he can only manifest Black Whip for a sec, so he can't compete with Hantasero or Shota Aizawa, but considers it a powerful support type quirk. All Might asks him if he made contact with the other users, to which he says no. By checking the information in the notebook, they realize that the previous users didn't possess particularly powerful quirks because All For One hunted those who possessed powerful quirks. They also check that they died very young fighting All For One. All Might informs Izuku that the next power to awaken will be Float. After the two return to the dorms at night, they prepare to help the other students with a hot pot party to energize everyone for the new term. As they continue to socialize, Izuku internally reflects how his life has improved since he entered UA, feeling blessed. Over the next few days, Izuku trains his quirks. The months go by until they arrive at the end of March. Thanks to the police investigation and its spy hawks, the Hero Public Safety Commission had uncovered the plans of the Paranormal Liberation Front and its allies. With this information, the commission organized a large force of pro heroes to take down the villain organization. A team of heroes has the mission of storming the Gunga Mountain Villa, the main headquarters of the Paranormal Liberation Front, while another team led by Endeavor will do the same at Jaku General Hospital, where the Nomu are created, and also because Tomura Shigaraki is located there, undergoing an operation to become more powerful. Finally, a third team made up of mainly students and led by Burnin will be in charge of evacuating the residents of the city near the hospital and taking them to a safe place. Izuku is part of this team. When everything is ready, Endeavor orders the start of the operation, and Burnin signals the students to start evacuating the citizens. As Izuku and the students evacuate the citizens, Endeavor and his squad arrive at the secret laboratories below the hospital after defeating all the Nomus that Dr. Gadaki releases in an attempt to stop them. However, when the heroes think they've already won, at that moment Tomura Shigaraki wakes up. Despite the distance between the two, Izuku gets a bad feeling that something terrible is coming. Soon, the voice of the first user of One For All, whom he hadn't heard from since the joint training battle, begins to warn him of Tomura's awakening, and urges him to stop him. When Izuku fixes his gaze on the Jaku Hospital, the building suddenly crumbles to dust. Then, the disintegration begins to spread rapidly, reaching in a short time the city itself. Izuku charges up 45% of One For All and unleashes a St. Louis Smash Air Force at the spreading disintegration to push it back. But despite Izuku's best efforts, it continues with no sign of stopping. The students begin to run as fast as possible while evacuating the civilians who were still in the city as best they can. Izuku himself uses Black Whip to drag an entire bus full of civilians away from danger. The students manage to get everyone to safety before the decay finally stops after destroying much of the city. While fleeing, Burnin tried to contact the hospital raid team without success, until shortly after they managed to escape, she radios Endeavor, which is facing Tomura. Apparently, Tomura is going after something he calls One For All. Neither Endeavor nor Burnin know what he's talking about, but Izuku, who overhears her, knows exactly what's going on. Izuku tries calling out towards Burnin, but she orders the students and civilians to evacuate while he leads a force of heroes against Tomura, who for some reason they don't understand, is heading to the city. Izuku knows that Tomura is going after him and his quirk, and in order not to put anyone in danger, he decides to get away from there as soon as possible to lead Tomura away from the civilians. Izuku deduces that Tomura can't see anyone from his location, but just in case he finds him, he has to move. He contacts Endeavor via the private channel and tells him that he believes Tomura is looking for him, though he doubts he can move him to a place where there's no people. Endeavor demands an explanation, but Izuku assures him that he'll explain later, but now he needs to know Tomura's position, because with all the dust up in the air, he can't see Tomura, and if there's any way, Endeavor can redirect them. Endeavor tries to tell them that there's no time for that, but right at that moment, Tomura suddenly changes course, heading southwest, and communicates it to Izuku. Izuku thanks him and says he'll buy time for evacuation before hanging up. 
While running, Izuku tells Katsuki that Tomura is coming, and Katsuki retorts that he overheard, so he needs to draw him closer. Izuku then asks why Katsuki is coming with him, and Katsuki answers that in a situation like this, the only one who can make the people understand quickly enough is himself. Izuku accepts the reason and thanks him. Tomura finally catches up to Izuku and Katsuki, demanding he give one for all to him as he reaches out his hand to grab Izuku, who experiences the image of death like during the Kamino incident, seeing both himself and Katsuki disintegrating. When Tomura is about to grab him, all of a sudden Gran Torino rushes in and grabs the two of them before flying in the opposite direction. He explains he heard everything about Tomura and tells Izuku that facing him now is a bad idea because his decay is insanely powerful. Izuku tries to protest, but Gran Torino reminds him that there are other heroes that can still fight. Gran Torino drops Izuku and Katsuki in a safe place as he explains to Izuku that Eraserhead is blocking Tomura's quirk with his own. Tomura is not only much stronger and faster than before, but also has All for One's quirk. And if Izuku lost one for all, it'll be the worst case scenario. While arguing, the three watch in shock as the situation worsens even more as a large number of Nomu appear, attacking the hero force who came to help in the fight against Tomura. Gran Torino moves to Eraserhead's location to help him against Tomura as he tells Izuku and Katsuki to hide. However, they both disobey the order and charge at Tomura. Izuku manages to arrive in time to tackle the villain before he can kill Shota Aizawa, while he yells that the worst case scenario they could face is losing his teacher, the teacher who has been looking after them since day one. Izuku and Katsuki begin to attack Tomura, but even with their efforts and with Shota canceling his quirks, they barely manage to contain him, having to receive help from Endeavor. Izuku is shocked to know that Tomura's physical strength is on par with All Might's, Endeavor tells Izuku and Katsuki that they can act without his direction in this situation, but he wants them to support Eraserhead and protect each other. Tomura moves forward, hoping to grab Izuku in One For All, but as he demands the student give him One For All, he ends up calling him his little brother, a statement that leaves both of them confused. The heroes continue to attack Tomura constantly, and little by little they begin to overcome him thanks to their teamwork and combination of quirks. But Tomura's will remains strong and continues to battle, managing to seriously injure Gran Torino. Izuku screams in anguish upon witnessing his mentor be pummeled, but when he tries to strike him with Black Whip, Tomura rushes past both him and Katsuki as he's aiming for Eraserhead, because his Eraser quirk doesn't allow him to use all his quirks, nor his regeneration, to heal his wounds. He gets stopped by Ryukyu, who grabs him in her hands as Tomura realizes he's losing stamina. Izuku grabs Tomura with Black Whip successfully and yells at him that he won't forgive him. Tomura in turn says that he won't forgive anyone too, as he elbows Izuku right in the gut. Izuku endures it, turning the rage he had toward Tomura into strength for his Black Whip, which manages to keep Tomura restrained, allowing Katsuki and Endeavor to charge forward. However, he notices Tomura manages to pierce Ryukyu's claws with his hand, and he's holding quirk-destroying bullets between his fingers and warns the others. He immediately uses his new super move, 100% Wyoming Smash, to stop the villain. However, he's unable to stop Tomura from throwing a bullet at Eraserhead, successfully hitting him in his crippled left leg. Eraserhead quickly pulls out his knife and cuts his leg off before the drug could spread throughout his body. Tomura doesn't hesitate to praise Eraserhead for doing that, but nevertheless, he continues to be a problem to him. He unleashes shockwaves to break free of Izuku and Ryukyu. He grabs Eraserhead's face at the same time that Izuku manages to catch his legs with Black Whip. Izuku yanks him back with Black Whip at the same time Tomura is struck by a pillar of ice from Shoto, who had decided to follow Izuku and Katsuki. Izuku strikes Tomura in the gut and sends him flying back before going over to his teacher. To his horror, he sees that he's closed his eyes due to the wound that Tomura caused to his face, deactivating his quirk. As a result, Tomura is successfully able to heal himself with his super regeneration, and he looks to the hero saying that as much as they delayed it, the only fate that awaits them is total destruction. Seeing his teacher Shota injured, Izuku is enraged. Rocklock tells him to run away, but Izuku refuses to do so. Tomura sets out to destroy them, but then his body rips apart. Although his super regeneration will heal the wound, Tomura is confused by this as the operation is supposed to have improved his body. This makes him ask Izuku about today's date. Upon seeing what happened, Izuku realizes that Tomura's body cannot maintain the incredible power of All for One similar to his first experiences with One for All. This is due to his capsule being destroyed when he was at 75%. Nevertheless, when his regeneration finally kicks in, Tomura attempts to use his decay quirk again to finish off everyone. But Izuku jumps into the air carrying everyone with Black Whip and for the first time activating Nana Shimura's quirk float. Izuku realizes that only he can prevent Tomura's mass destruction by putting him in midair. Tomura says to Izuku that he'll take one for all from him in the sky and send him straight to heaven along with everyone else. 
but Izuku yells he won't let him hurt anyone anymore as he pulls Tomura closer to him. Izuku activates One for All at 100% and unleashes devastating attacks against Tomura, with no intention of sparing the villain and not caring that his own body can end up messed up. Izuku severely injures himself by smashing 100% of One for All's power into Shigaraki over and over again. Despite the pain, he continues his assault on Tomura, who notes to himself that the damage is exceeding his regeneration. On the ground, the heroes are impressed by the combat, but Katsuki knows that Izuku won't be able to continue fighting soon. Along with Shoto and Endeavor, the three fly into the air as Endeavor tells Katsuki to aim for when Black Whip is completely extended, and when he gets up there, the two need to get back to the ground or they may get caught up in the fire. The conditions are met, and when Izuku is about to strike Tomura again, Katsuki and Shoto launch Endeavor at the villain, and Endeavor charges in and holds Tomura, yelling for Izuku to get down as he incinerates Tomura with a point-blank, prominence burn. While being burned alive, All for One's consciousness appears in Tomura's mind to offer his assistance. Desperate, Tomura accepts, giving All for One the opportunity to take control of his body. From Tomura's charred back emerge black shadowy tendrils that impale Endeavor, who can't believe he's still alive. Tomura says something unintelligible before firing the wires at Izuku, calling him his little brother. At that moment, without even thinking, Katsuki pushes Izuku out of the way and gets stabbed by the black wires. Izuku watches in shock as Katsuki falls to the ground badly injured, being grabbed by Shoto. Tomura mocks the sacrifice of the heroes and especially Katsuki's, which snaps Izuku, feeling a strange and painful sensation in his head. Blinded by rage, Izuku goes berserk on Tomura, destroying the tendrils on his way, but his anger leaves him open to being touched by his enemy. Tomura takes the opportunity and puts his hand on Izuku's face and proceeds to extract one for all. But all does not go as planned, as the move brings Izuku and his foe into his mindscape. Izuku finds himself back in the mist-covered wasteland of his dream, and in front of him, he sees all for one half-fused with Tomura, trying to take control of his body as Tomura tries to reject him. Izuku tries to move towards them, but instead trips and falls. Nana Shimura appears and puts her hand on his head, saying that he still can't move in his dream, but they will do something about it. The All for One manifestation notices her presence and begins to mock Nana, indicating to Tomura that she's his grandmother. During his rant, All for One talks about the strange phenomenon of people inheriting an organ donor's personality after a transplant surgery, which is why he has memories of the people whose quirks he stole from, and why he can see and talk to his brother now thanks to All for One and One for All's quirks. Nana tries to talk to her grandson, but Tomura just calmly tells her he despises her too. Tomura's anger causes One for All to start to erode, at the same time that he tries to destroy his master's manifestation. The eroding stops as All for One realizes his rage is not enough, as his younger brother, the first user of One for All, appears as well and stops the decay, saying to be just as stubborn as himself. All for One's brother proclaims he doesn't intend to allow him to harm the boy they've chosen as their new heir, as he and Nana start to push the influence of All for One back. In a grand explosion, Izuku wakes up from the dream as he and Tomura fall away from one another in the sky. Izuku realizes Tomura failed to steal one for all, as All for One tells Tomura that the reason why was because his body hasn't fully adapted to his new quirk. He tells him that his body needs to reach perfection and to retreat, while Izuku pleads with Tomura to stop moving. Shoto catches Izuku while still holding on to Katsuki, and his father drops them on the ground with relief that the three of them are still alive. However, Tomura is still not defeated. Nejire and Tenya arrive to help, and Shoto asks him to take Izuku away from there, but he replies he still needs to stay close to Tomura because he's still after his quirk, and tells Ingenium to help Katsuki and Endeavor escape. Shoto and Nejire confront Tomura, taking advantage of his weakened state to completely defeat him, but Giganto Makia eventually makes it there to assist his master. On his back, he carries several lieutenants from the Paranormal Liberation Front, including Dabi. Izuku listens to Dabi's speech, who claims that at that moment, he's broadcasting to all Japan his relationship with Enji, as well as many of his dark secrets and several cruel acts committed by heroes, like Best Genus and Twice's murder by Hawks. When he's done, Dabi is ready to attack with his quirk, but to his surprise and many of those present, Best Genus himself jumps from a plane with several carbon fiber containers and uses his fiber master quirk to tie up Gigantomachia, Tomura, and the paranormal lieutenants. Dabi manages to free himself using his fire and clashes with his brother Shoto, as Gigantomachia struggles against Best Genus wires after receiving an order from a semi-unconscious Tomura. Likewise, several of the near high-end Nomu receive an order and rush to where they are to attack Best Genus. When he sees them approaching, Izuku tries to tell himself to move because he knows if anything breaks Best Genus' focus, Gigantomachia will break free, believing if he uses Black Whip and Float, his busted limbs won't matter. He yells at himself to not be the worthless Izuku who can't save anyone and to support Best Genus. 
All of a sudden, Mirio arrives, using his quirk to punch away the near Hyann's approaching best genus, leaving Izuku shocked. Izuku asks Mirio how he got there. He replies that they received a message about the current situation in Jakku City from the Villa team, so he rushed there at once using his permeation special mode of travel. This makes Izuku remember that the day before the raid, Mirio had asked Eri to use her rewind quirk on him so that he could get back his quirk and help in the incoming battle. While Mirio, Nejire, Tenya, and Katsuki protect best genus from the Nomus, Shoto continues to fight his older brother in midair. Dabi manages to grab him and prepares to use his quirk at full power to incinerate him completely to make their father suffer. Suddenly, Black Whip separates them. The villain looks in confusion as it's revealed that Izuku shoots his quirk from his mouth, a technique he dubs Froppy Style after being inspired by his classmate Tsuyu during the training several months ago. Dabi unleashes a blast of flames to destroy the Black Whip, yelling that this is a family affair and he shouldn't mess in it. Izuku replies that it's his business because Shoto is his dear friend and Endeavor is his mentor who made him stronger. He agrees that the past can never die, but he's seen how much Endeavor wants to become a better person and how he wants to watch that. He yells to Dabi that he isn't Endeavor, which seems to help break Endeavor out of his trance. Just then, Izuku feels again a painful sensation in his head and notices that Giganto Makia is going to break free from Best Genius Fiber. Fortunately, Endeavor reacts and uses every bit of strength to knock the giant back, knocking himself out as a result. After this, Izuku loses consciousness due to Dabi's attack. After spending a few minutes unconscious, a voice inside him wakes him up. Izuku looks to see Shoto recuperating on the ground, much to his relief. Suddenly, he starts feeling another sharp pain emerge within his head, just like what had happened when Katsuki was injured by Tomura and Gigantomachia was about to break free from Best Genus' cable. He figures that this is Danger Sense, the quirk of the fourth one-for-all user. Due to being unprepared for it emerging like this, his senses start to overload in his head. Then, Tomura manages to wake up but Izuku realizes that All For One's consciousness has taken control of Tomura's body, using his radio waves to call a large number of near high-end Nomus to get him out of there, along with a handful of allies. Everybody tries to stop them, but they fail. Izuku uses Black Whip Froppy Style to jump into the air to confront Tomura slash All For One. All For One tells him that they'll meet again once his body is perfected, using radio waves to send him flying away as Izuku screams out to Tomura. In the aftermath of the battle, Izuku, along with the other injured heroes, are taken to the central hospital to be treated. However, after several days, Izuku is the only one to still remain unconscious, being watched over by All Might while his arms and legs are completely bandaged up. In actuality, the consciousness of Izuku is back in the Vestige world, encountering the predecessors of One for All, while All Might senses him from the outside. Yoichi reveals to him that over the past couple months, One for All's power has grown so exponentially that the users can now more freely communicate with each other. After Izuku manages to find a way to communicate with the users through his partly manifested mouth, he's introduced to Hikage Shinomori, the fourth user and the original wielder of Danger Sense. He also learns from him the truth behind his cause of death, which All Might had scribbled out in his notebook, which is that he died of old age. He reveals that he had decided to use his turn with One for All to hide out, away from the world and all for one, training the power for the next user. However, after 18 years, the quirk started to break his body and that possessing multiple quirks had ate away at his life. Izuku is shocked and confused by the statement since All Might held the power for much longer than anyone. However, he's soon able to realize the reasoning that the other users also managed to figure out, that All Might was quirkless. The users discovered that when One for All is transferred to a user with an existing quirk, it would result in the contents of the vessel being warped and spilling over, eventually resulting in a shorter lifespan, and that All Might held onto it for 40 years because the quirk took the place of his previously empty vessel. The users and Izuku take this information to realize that now, especially after the quirks of the other users have emerged, One for All can't be transferred to an ordinary person. That it was a miracle both All Might and Izuku, two quirkless individuals, managed to have the quirk bestowed to them, and that due to the slowly diminishing percentage of quirkless people in the world, Izuku may end up being the last successor of One for All. After this revelation, Nana approaches Izuku and asks him if he will be able to kill Tomura Shigaraki. To his surprise, she continues that she and the other users could sense Izuku's feelings during the previous encounter with Tomura and how he saw him as someone who needed saving. Yoichi reveals that the will of One for All could be overwritten through a being with strong negative emotions and that All for One purposefully raised Tomura this way to consume him with so much hatred to steal the quirk. Nana proceeds to confirm that Tomura is her grandson and became this way due to abandoning his father at a young age, feeling guilty for what happened. Despite knowing the selfishness of placing the burden on Izuku, she warns him that if Tomura reaches his potential, he'll be unstoppable, and that if he looks like someone who needs saving but can't, does he have the resolve to stop him? 
Izuku reflects on the instance when he connected with Tomura's conscience in One for All, and how in the deepest parts of his mind, he was able to sense Tomura as Tenko crying. He thinks back to all the villains he had faced during the past year, noting that he never got the opportunity to learn why they became villains, and wonders if things would have turned out differently if he did. He knows that despite all the bad Tomura has done, he stands his ground believing that One for All is a quirk meant to save lives, not kill, something he learned from All Might. He states that through All Might and the users of One for All that cultivated the power, they have saved countless lives and brought hope to so many out there that he believes the power's purpose has changed. He admits that while it's still possible he'll have to kill Tomura, he doesn't know what he'll do yet. He still wants to try and save that little boy. Yoichi thanks Izuku for his answer, comforting the crying vestige of All Might and Nana, who apologizes to Izuku for testing him and thanking him for sticking to his beliefs. While Yoichi asks the second and third users to help their successor, Izuku learns more about Hikage and En's quirks in preparation. While he was unconscious, the media had learned of the name One for All after word spread of several heroes overhearing Endeavor's mention of it during the battle with Tomura, and with Hawks and Best Genus learning from Endeavor it had something to do with Izuku. All Might tells the three of them the truth. Sometime after he awakens, Izuku writes letters to each of his classmates in 1A, revealing the truth behind his quirk being a power passed down to him by All Might, and that All for One and Tomura are now after him because of it. By the start of what would be his second year in April, Izuku leaves UA High. Villain Hunt Arc Prior to leaving the hospital, Izuku, alongside All Might and Inko, learn from the Central Hospital doctor that despite initially being warned that more extreme injuries would have left him immobilized, the situation is different now. He explains how in the past the injuries were contained within the body, going off like little explosions, but this time most of the injuries came from the surface. He also adds that thanks to him using Black Whip to wrap and reinforce his limbs to keep them from shattering, as well as the drastic changes to his body since then, going from being able to handle 5% to 45% capacity, the injuries were nowhere near as severe. Despite this, he still warns him to be careful in the future. After the doctor leaves, Inko asks for an explanation, which the two agree to give, thus sharing the secret of One for All with her, including him being a target because of it. All Might tells her that they're making arrangements to protect him at UA, but Izuku cuts him off saying that he won't be returning. Inko becomes increasingly concerned as her son explains that Tomura can locate him at any time, like now, and he states his desire not to see anyone else get hurt anymore, resolving to stop Tomura and All for One before they can reach full strength and that he'll get stronger. Despite Inko unable to properly deal with all the revelations, Izuku reassuringly takes his mother's hand, telling her that whenever she thanked him and smiled, she made him extremely happy. But that's why he has to go, to help others, promising to return home to her. All Might then jumps in and declares that he knows he can't stop Izuku from going, so he offers to join him. Before checking out, Izuku visits Gran Torino and gives him Nana's regards, which he accepts with a smile. He admits he should have tried to finish the job with Tomura himself and advises Izuku to not be so rigid with his beliefs, saying that death can be seen as another form of salvation, handing him his cape as he leaves. All Might contacts Best Genus, informing him, Endeavor, and Hawks of Izuku's plan to leave UA, which they believe would work perfectly for their own plan, utilizing Izuku as a way to lure out the League of Villains and determine Tomura's location while they follow suit maintaining a safe distance. A newly modified Izuku and All Might head off for their team up with the top three heroes. Surveying a nearly abandoned city, Danger Sense alerts Izuku to a nearby threat, which he goes to investigate. He discovers Grand battling an escaped villain, which turns out to be Muscular, and right before he's killed, Izuku, as Deku, saves Grand by blasting Muscular away with a smash, emerging from a shroud of smoke, wearing his hoodie and mask. Recognizing Izuku from their previous encounter, Muscular joyfully reacts to his reappearance, piping himself up for a rematch, while Deku looks down on him, holding the unconscious Grand. Muscular jumps toward the bottom of the building to Deku's surprise, throwing it into the air, forcing him to jump away. Deku makes his way to the Taguchi building where the civilians are held up, and, all while shrouded in smoke, quickly hands Grand over to Turtleneck. He reflects over how many buildings have been destroyed, but declares to make sure no more damage occurs. Deku proceeds to converse with the sixth user of One for All, N, asking if he overdid the use of his quirk, Smokescreen. N provides him some advice to keep control over it and suggests he try to relax a little, and that rather than seeing the user's quirks as ultimate moves, to think of them as tools in his arsenal to strategically organize a plan. Deku proceeds to use Float to hover above the city, as well as Smokescreen to reduce Muscular's vision, covering the streets below. Remembering the tactics from their fight, he uses Danger Sense to dodge Muscular's incoming attacks, and finally Black Whip to grab a hold of him and keep him contained on the ground. 
Muscular is annoyed at the cheap party tricks while Deku asks him where Tomura and All for One are. Muscular replies that he doesn't know as they just told him to go wild after he was freed, and instead proceeds to berate Deku for just talking and using all these gimmicks rather than having a proper fight. Deku continues anyway, asking why he rages like this, if he has any regrets, and if there's any other path he could go towards, referring to him as Gotoi Masuji, but Muscular simply responds he just wants to indulge in blood and violence, and it's useless to try and sympathize with him. Hearing Muscular's declaration, Deku thinks back to his previous thought about how if he truly understood the villains, maybe things would turn out differently, and how even if the fight now is inevitable, he still wanted to learn at least what makes him tick deep down. As Muscular breaks free from Black Whip and tries to fight back, Deku notes how the tendons in his muscle augmentation have started to unravel thanks to his initial battle with Grand and his vibrations, and that was the reason he was purposely keeping his distance. Muscular screams in annoyance as Deku comes at him with a smash to the stomach, knocking him out with one punch, declaring that this is his full power. Wrapping him up in Black Whip, Deku quickly flies away from the city delivering the unconscious muscular to the Dyna police station before again speeding off into the air to the officer's confusion. With Danger Sense calmed down, Izuku contacts All Might and meets up with him in an alleyway. All Might inquires about his condition, which Izuku says he's alright, thanks to his new support item that All Might ordered from America, the Midgauntlets. All Might reminds him that it's still a prototype and they were made for endurance, so they'll reinforce his body but won't be able to handle 100% output, so he can't go overboard. Just as All Might receives a phone call from Hawks, who's fighting a villain alongside Endeavor and Bastionis, asking about Izuku's status, he gets another alert from Danger Sense and once again leaps away off toward the trouble. As night falls and it begins to rain, Deku comes to the rescue of a large woman with a mutant quirk under attack by civilians who mistake her for a villain. He manages to calm them down and comforts the woman by telling her that everyone's scared and that he'll make sure everything goes back to normal. After All Might arrives on the scene to take the woman to a shelter, he gives Izuku a box lunch which he happily accepts. While observing the city, he converses with Daigoro Banjo, who compares what's happening now to what it was like during his lifetime. Izuku mentions that they still have no information regarding the League of Villains or Tomura's location, and that unless he can draw out all of One for All's full power, he will never be able to stop all the chaos. With all the successors now ready with their full support, Izuku once again prepares to head off. Trying to get in contact with All Might, Deku is shocked when his phone is suddenly shot by an unknown assailant from afar. With the phone pinned to a nearby building, a voice coming from the microphone attached to the bullet directly addresses Deku, which he recognizes as an assassin sent by All for One, as she tells him to come with her and if he complies, he can keep his limbs. He quickly realizes said assassin is former pro hero Lady Nagant, you know, named after the sniper rifle Mosin Nagant. I only know that from Metal Gear. An incredibly skilled marksman who's someone that even Snipe envied, and Hawks' senior at the Hero Public Safety Commission. Deku recalls an earlier conversation with Hawks back before he left Central Hospital, where the hero tells him that due to them dismantling all of Kyudai Gataki's facilities during the war, All for One and Tomura have no way of preserving a dead body, so they must capture Deku alive to steal one for all. He adds that while he knows he shouldn't have trouble with most run-of-the-mill villains, he warns him about Lady Nagant, and that if he happens to encounter her, to run at all costs. Recovering his broken phone, Deku tries to flee but is constantly shot at by Lady Nagant, who, using her quirk rifle, transforms her right arm into a rifle along with using her pink and dark blue hair to create any kind of bullet she requires to blast at him from afar. Deku tries to use Danger Sense as well as Black Whip to swing across the buildings to avoid the bullets, but they continue to curve and chase him, as he's forced to try and block them head on. After thinking about how if it wasn't for Danger Sense, he would have been finished by now, he's able to deduce the location of Lady Nagant based on where the previous shot came from, and decides instead of trying to endure the barrage and escape, to confront her directly. He heads towards the building she's stationed on, zigzagging between the other buildings to stay out of her line of sight until he's suddenly caught off guard by a bullet coming at him from behind, which he deflects only for another one to graze his stomach. He's confused at how she was able to shoot at him from two different angles and temporarily wonders if she has backup until realizing what's really going on. All for One gave her another quirk. As she continues to shoot at him from afar, Deku realizes that the closer they get, the more intuitively she can shoot, which means he won't be able to react fast enough to guard or dodge. Without any options, he lands and unleashes a smoke screen at full blast, filling the city with smoke, and reappears to scold Deku for releasing so much because once he emerges, he'll be easily exposed to her. However, Deku tells him that he isn't planning on escaping, as N realizes what he's planning to do, leading him to advise against it. 
he's backed up by the third user who recognizes that he's attempting to use his quirk, warning him that he hasn't tested it out yet. Dagu tells him that he knows it's too late to properly train, but he can't waste this opportunity to stop Lady Dagon and force her to tell him where All for One and Tomura are. Deku uses several of his equipment, including Gran Torino's cape, his backpack, and his mask to act as decoys to distract Lady Nagant long enough for him to activate the third user's quirk, Fa Jin, releasing all the kinetic energy he built up in his body, allowing him to completely blast through a building, catching Lady Nagant off guard and managing to grab a hold of her arm. While he tries to get her to tell him where All for One is, she proceeds to use her rifle to punch him off of her, allowing her to escape and continue to shoot at him. He asks her why she's working for All for One since she used to be a pro hero, but brushes him off that he just doesn't understand the real truth. During the chaos, Deku realizes that due to using Fajin for the first time, his parallel processes are screwed up, forcing him to attempt to readjust himself while still avoiding the shots. Lady Nagan proceeds to explain her history with the Hero Public Safety Commission to Deku, how she believed all she was doing was preserving the fake society by secretly killing rogue villains and corrupt heroes, and how she killed the former president after she was threatened for voicing her resignations. Deku is shocked by the revelation, since the news was that she had killed a fellow hero in an argument, while she continues saying that he's just ignorant, that a superpower society is an illusion, and bringing back the status quo will have history repeat itself. Deku, however, admits that while he had been ignorant in the past, he's started to realize the world isn't all black and white, but mostly shades of gray, and that's exactly why he needs to lend a helping hand. As Deku makes his way over to Lady Nagant's location using Black Whip, she turns her rifle to a man on the skyscraper above them, Kai Chisaki, who Deku is surprised to suddenly see as well. Shooting the bullet directly at him, Lady Nagant plans to use Deku's hesitation to catch him off guard. However, to her surprise, he immediately swings himself forward toward Kai, using a combination of Fajin and One For All at 45% to create a sensation of faux 100% One For All, becoming faster than the bullet and knocking Kai out of the way. After telling Kai they'll talk later, Deku uses Black Whip to realign himself, as using One For All at 45%, Fajin, Danger Sense, Black Whip, Smokescreen, and Float all in rapid succession cause caused his parallel processes to get screwed up and needed to take a moment to readjust. Using the last bit of Fajin stored up in his leg, he utilizes a faux 100% Manchester smash to break Lady Nagant's rifle before she can start shooting again. As she starts to fall, Deku grabs a hold of her, telling her that he recognized that the shot headed toward Kai was off and that she could have shot him right from the beginning rather than give him a chance to surrender, meaning she's not truly on All For One's side. He tells her that because she's seen the darkness, she can also recognize the light, and asks her to join him since he still sees the soul of a hero within her. As Lady Nagant smiles and starts to tell Deku he's the real deal, she suddenly self-destructs, causing Deku to scream in fear. Hawk soon arrives to catch the unconscious Lady Nagant, followed by Endeavor to back him up. Due to still not having enough feathers to fly and carry someone, Deku uses Black Whip to grab a hold of them, but can't carry them due to running out of strength. He manages to tell them that Lady Nagant had received the quirk from All for One, and because of that, he believes that the self-destruction was part of a trap he implemented. Landing on the ground, Hawks gets Lady Nagant to briefly wake up and inform them of the location she was supposed to deliver Deku to, as well as warning them about other criminals All for One hired to go after him. Endeavor returns carrying Kai, who berates Lady Nagant for not fulfilling her promise, as he just wants to apologize to his boss. Hearing his pleas, Deku confronts Kai asking if he remembers what he did to Eri, as he goes off saying he wishes she was here too. Deku tells him he understands he wants to apologize, and that if he can direct those feelings toward Eri as well, he will honor the deal in Lady Nagant's place. All Might arrives as the heroes prepare to fully apprehend Lady Nagant and Kai, as well as deliver the former to medical aid, which Hawks also suggests Deku do as well, all the while he festers up the rage towards All for One. Sometime later, Deku, the top three heroes, and the Lurkers locate the former Creature Rejection Clan's hideout in Haibori Woods. Despite Endeavor's pleas not to be reckless, Deku enters only to find it abandoned, which Endeavor had anticipated. They are then faced with a pre-recorded message from All For One, taunting Izuku for expecting him not being able to abandon someone like Lady Nagant and falling into the trap. He continues on about how society labels people who don't fit in as villains, and that all the fights Izuku will have to deal with continue to wear his soul down. He concludes, revealing that he was the only one he kept thinking about in prison, and that he no longer cared about All Might, stating that it's his turn, as the hideout suddenly explodes. 
Shortly after escaping the explosion, the pro heroes regroup to plan their next move while Deku continues his endless quest to hunt down the villains. He's soon attacked by another hired assassin, but almost immediately takes him down with ease. He quickly leaves the body behind, warning All Might to be careful in case he's rigged to explode, but before he can leap away, All Might yells at him to stop. He tries to hand him another lunchbox, however Deku tells him he doesn't need to follow him anymore, since he can practically move his body at 100% capacity without injury just like him, so he shouldn't worry about him. Despite All Might's attempts to reach out to Deku and tell him to take it easy, he's left behind as Deku heads off all alone. Endeavor attempts to contact the lone Deku, informing him that the foreign hero should be arriving soon to assist, and that he should take his time to rest. But he refuses to stop and continues his search for the villains. At the same time, the previous wielders of One For All also try to get Deku not to push himself, but he also ignores them as he jumps towards danger. He arrives at a mall where he protects a group of civilians from some thugs, but after they retreat, a woman cowers over Deku's appearance, seeing his multiple quirks and believing he's working for All For One. He quickly shoots that down as they are nervously relieved, running to safety. He continues running from location to location whenever he receives a notice from Danger Sense, endlessly fighting villains and protecting civilians caught in the middle with barely any sleep or eating time. During his escapades, rumors begin to pop up regarding Deku, with some believing him to be some kind of Nomu, and others seeing him helping people, although also noting he looks nothing like a hero. As his costume becomes more tattered and his black whip more out of control, contributing to his monstrous appearance. Meanwhile, in his mind, all he can think about is tracking down All for One and the League of Villains, and doing everything in his power to save everyone. Also, he can once again reunite with those he cares about, specifically his classmates, so he can smile with them again. In the city, Deku's exhaustion starts to get to him as he's confronted by the next assassin sent by All for One, Dictator. Using his squirk despot, Dictator takes control of an army of civilians which he uses to attack Deku. He recalls how he was previously defeated by Crust several years ago and that in order to deactivate his quirk, either the victims need to receive a large shock or Dictator needs to be taken out. However, unable to use Air Force properly without his gloves, nor Black Whip being too dangerous, the civilians dogpile Deku as they apologize for attacking him, tearing off his costume. He silently understands as he attempts to think of a way to help them, but slowly starts to fall unconscious. Suddenly, Katsuki arrives on the scene, shooting Dictator with an AP shot and informing an outside party that he's found Deku. When the rest of Class 1A arrive on the scene, he asks why they came and they answer that they wanted to help him. Izuku responds saying he's fine and for them to stay away, causing Katsuki to mockingly applaud him before asking if he can smile now. Izuku says that he needs to keep moving if everyone can smile again and demands everyone get out of his way, prompting his classmates to fight him. Deku tries to use smokescreen to make an escape, but Katsuki uses his landmine blast to blast away the smoke, asking him if he believes that now he's one of the big shots if they're all just a bunch of NPCs to him. Koji uses his quirk to command birds to halt Deku, yelling that Nezu has asked him to come back and stop running away. He tries to use Black Whip to free himself, but Cellophane uses his tape to grab a hold of it, commenting how freaky it looks. Earphone Jack, yes I'm using their hero names now, then uses her heartbeat wall, forcing him to jump away as she tells Deku how happy she was back during the cultural festival. Tailman then arrives, grabbing a hold of Deku with his tornado tail dance, telling him that he'll never forget how frustrated he got for him during his fight against Hitoshi at the sports festival, and they all can't overlook how ragged he's become fighting alone. Deku continues to insist that he'll put everyone in danger and he doesn't want All For One to take them away from him, which is why he had to leave. Tsukiyomi appears next, using Dark Shadow to grab onto Deku, knocking him into a building. Sugar Man, after rescuing Earphone Jack and Tail Man, yells at him that while he may have a special power, they all share the same feelings. And to think about what they said, or else he won't let him use food coloring for Aerie's candy apples. Still attached to Dark Shadow, Deku is suddenly restricted by a machine created by Kreati, who says that they've been authorized to use their quirks to help Endeavor and the other heroes with the intention to join him and ensuring his safety. Recognizing it's a machine to put him to sleep, Deku breaks free, yelling at them to stop wasting their efforts on him. Charge Bolt grabs a hold of him next, telling him that even though One For All is important and they may not have any hobbies in common, he's still someone he considers a friend so he'll force him to listen. Tentacle uses his dupla arms covered in insulation tape created by Kreati to cover up Deku and Charge Bolt, reminding him of Deku's words during the training camp how everyone together can even give All Might a scare. Tsukiyomi finishes it off by using Dark Shadow to completely entomb the two with Ragnarok Womb, reminding him how using Dark Shadow's offensive power as defense was his idea as well. As Charge Bolt sends his electrification through the containment, Deku still manages to break free, blasting away from the building. Fighting back tears, he thinks about how he knows everyone is truly worried 
wait for him because Danger Sense hasn't alerted him at all, but still continues to shout and insist he's fine. He suddenly smacks right into a heaven-piercing ice wall as Shoto looks down on him, seeing his broken face telling him to let him share his burden. On a building close by, Froppy appears to be shedding tears and tells him that it's okay to cry when you're scared and that if he wants to remain strong like a comic book superhero, they won't let him go at it alone. Shoto yells at Deku that his current state is part of All For One's plan and could take the opportunity to attack UA, so he should consider a backup plan if he hasn't been able to find him, to protect the school by letting them all fight alongside him. But as All For One's words continue to ring in his head, Deku refuses, yelling that this is a fight between One For All and All For One, and the others can't keep up. He breaks free of the ice attempting to flee when Grape Juice latches onto him using a chain of balls. He cries that he never thought his power was what made him awesome, and what made him so cool to him was how he led everyone to victory despite being scared himself. Deku, however, says that that version of him is gone, striking Grape Juice with Black Whip, slamming him into a nearby building. Deku prepares to make a gateway using foe 100%, but Uravity comes from the sky trying to grab him and tell him the situation is different, desperately trying to ignore her words as he dodges her and blasts into the air. Nearly escaping his classmates, Ingenium suddenly appears to grab a hold of his hand, having been blasted into the air through a combination of nearly everyone putting their abilities together to push him forward. Deku demands he let him go, but Ingenium refuses, saying that Ingenium is the hero who will grab the hand of a lost child and repeats Deku's earlier words to him, that giving help that's not asked for is what makes a true hero. Finally starting to break down, Deku tries to break free of Ingenium's hand, but doesn't have the mental strength to let go, just as Uravity deactivates her quirk, causing both of them to fall out of the sky. Thankfully, Red rides there able to catch him. He then tells Deku that he remembered an old story on the news about a kid his age that rushed to save a friend from a villain and figured it was him that day. He says that being a hero has nothing to do with being special or strong and his behavior from back then is what everyone else is doing now. Everyone else catches up as Pinky tells Deku she doesn't want to lose anyone anymore and to return to UA so they can have classes together. Deku stands up and says he wants to come back but considers it too dangerous for all of the people already there and he says he can't go back to the way he was before. For. Dynamite walks over to him though and asks if he remembers what he said when he got stabbed by Tomura during the war. When Deku says he doesn't, Dynamite, aka Katsuki Bakugo, reminds him that he said, stop trying to win this on your own, and continues telling him that in that moment, his body had moved on its own. Dynamite admits he looked down on Deku because he was quirkless, and therefore he felt he would be far behind, but the truth was, he always felt he was above him. Dynamite tells him that he couldn't accept the way he was, which led him to bullying him over the years and trying to prove his superiority. But after entering UA, he kept losing, and he started trying to understand Deku's strengths and weaknesses. Dynamite tells Deku that even if doesn't change anything, he has to speak his current truth. He apologizes to him for everything he had done up until now, even calling him by his first name. Dynamite's words snap Deku to his senses as Dynamite tells him that his choices weren't misguided, but he can't handle it by himself anymore. If he encounters a hurdle, he can rely on his friends to help him, and the only way to surpass All Might is for everyone to protect Yue and the civilians together. Deku weakly collapses and apologizes for what he said about everyone not being able to keep up with him, which Dynamite accepts as he catches him. When Izuka wakes up, he's greeted by the face of 13 and the front of the massive Yue barrier that encompasses the entire surrounding school area. 13 informs Izuku how most of the civilians have been evacuated to various centers, with only the anti-hero vigilantes and violent pillagers left to deal with. Though also notes that those numbers have been dwindling due to the anti-hero civilians' exhaustions and the pillagers being easy to catch. She also thanks Izuku for everything he did to help him on his solo journey. Being let down by Mezzo, Hanta tells Izuku about some of the barrier's security features, with Toru adding it can even combine to Shiketsu High. Izuku still believes he can't go back, and his beliefs seem to be enforced by a group of protesters within the school demanding he not be let in. The civilians say they knew he's the rumored boy Tomura's after, and since they were convinced by Nezu, UA would provide them guaranteed safety, allowing what they consider a ticking time bomb in is a horrible idea. They said he should go somewhere else, and Izuku even considers leaving, but Ochako grabs his hand to stop him from leaving, and tells him not to worry. Despite Best Genius attempt at reassuring the civilians by informing them of Izuku's purpose and their plans, their hatred and anxiousness continues to boil over, overloading Izuku's danger sense. Suddenly, Ochako floats her way above the crowd towards the top of Yue, where she gives an impassioned plea to let Izuku stay. 
She lets them know that he has a special power that can stop the villains, but he's also been running himself ragged all by himself, begging them to look at him and let him stay. As Izuku remains speechless through her proclamations, Katsuki turns to Izuku and reminds him that he and the others will step up when he can't handle things alone, and Tenya tells him that everyone is fighting, including Ochako, causing him to start to tear up. Ochako concludes her speech declaring to the crowd that Izuku is just a high school kid and that it's up to everyone else to help when the heroes are hurting. All her words cause Izuku to finally break down in exhaustion and relief, collapsing to his knees and crying hysterically. Kota and the mutant girl Izuku had saved several days earlier rush their way out of the crowd to comfort him. Kota apologizes for being too scared to run, but after hearing Ochako's words, he knew he had to move, tearfully telling him not to cry anymore because he's here. The girl picks Izuku up and tells him that she had been refused by several shelters for being a mutant, but she's glad she ended up at UA because it meant getting to see him again as the two give him a hug. As the civilians look on and see Izuku for who he truly is, they discuss amongst themselves about what they should be doing and how they must become more than mere spectators now. One of the boys turns to Izuku, talking about the rumors of a man dressed in rags with multiple quirks who's either a villain or a true hero, asks if him staying will give them back all the lives they once had. Izuku confidently responds that now that everyone's together with him, he'll bring it all back. The civilians agree to let him stay as they and his classmates escort the tired Izuku inside. The boys of 1A immediately rush Izuku to the bath, stripping and washing him thoroughly before throwing him in and joining in with him. Katsuki yells at everyone for poorly scrubbing him before jumping in himself, as Fumikage states that even after his heartfelt apology, he still hasn't changed. Katsuki, however, reminds everyone that his goal to become number one hasn't changed, which makes everyone his rival still, including Izuku, who he tries to refrain from calling him Deku. Izuku tells Katsuki that he doesn't have to force himself and can still call him Deku. After the bath, Izuku learns that Ochako has fallen asleep after her speech, as well as some others too, with the rest of his classmates drying off in the common room. Izuku once again apologizes for the trouble he felt he caused and they forgive him, while also asking some questions about one for all. Shoto tells everyone to leave Izuku be so he can rest, but Izuku tells him he feels he can't, at least not until he apologizes to All Might for pushing him away. Suddenly, All Might appears in the dorm and apologizes himself to Izuku for not helping him enough, despite Izuku's protests. After All Might tells everyone he's gained new information to help them in the fight, Izuku speaks up and tells him that the food he made for him gave him strength and chalked his hardships to not having him at all. Now, they all will fight for what they love together. All Might promptly leaves to regroup with the other heroes as Izuku finally passes out on the couch where Shoto covers him up in a blanket. UA Trader Arc Two days later, Izuku and the rest of Class 1A learned that during this time, Tomura had fought American number one hero, Star and Stripe. And while she was killed during the battle with Tomura, successfully stealing her quirk New Order, thanks to her actions, the quirk acted like a virus within his body, destroying several of his quirks and delaying his procedure by about a week. All Might informs all this to the class, telling them that this is now their perfect time to prepare for the inevitable all-out war. Katsuki yells at All Might that they've already been preparing, with the rest of the class revealing that since the war, they've continued their training with the Wild Wild Pussycat cats, all with the intention to fight alongside Izuku until Tomura is defeated. Izuku says that Katsuki and the others agreed to practice with him in order to help master one for all, but Katsuki barks back at him just like he usually does, claiming that he only wants to test out his new cluster moves on him to his shock. The rest of the class each respond with enthusiasm as they all prepare to go out and train, with All Might looking on proud and satisfied. In the courtyards in front of the school, Class 1A train amongst themselves, with Izuku and Katsuki sparring between each other. He asks about how he's starting to learn how to focus on saving sweat for a barrage of explosions rather than one big explosion, while Izuku also notices Shoto going for a different approach, working to make both halves into one. The class proceeds to discuss how they'll be able to deal with Tomura and All for One, specifically how they have no way of tracking down All for One, that they only have half the heroes remaining from the previous battle, and that the villains are the ones with the edge on deciding when the battle starts. Izuku says that it's because of that they need to try and dictate how they enter the fight, and that how he's going to rejoin the search soon before being reprimanded by Tenya reminding him that we will be rejoining the search. Looking around, Izuku asks if he can go for a quick stroll, which Tenya says is okay as relations between the hero students and the evacuees have grown warmer since Ochako's speech. Izuku goes out into the woods looking for Yuga, who had gone missing and who he had noticed was acting weird ever since he came back to school. He ends up running into a panicking Toru who is also looking for Yuga and overheard a conversation between him and his parents revealing a devastating truth. Yuga is the UA traitor. It turns out that Yuga was born quirkless and his parents approached All for One who gave him his naval laser quirk, also putting the family in his debt. Izuku and Toru approach the Aoyamas, telling them he heard the details from Toru. 
The parrots try to feign ignorance, while Izuku tells Yuga that he noticed how gloomy he's been looking, believing something is wrong and came looking for him. After hearing those words, a tearful Yuga sorrowfully admits to Izuku that he was the one who helped the League during both the USJ incident and the training camp, declaring himself a despicable villain. With the truth revealed, Yuga's parents attempt to escape with their son, while Izuku and Toru give chase. Yuga tells Izuku that after reading his letter and finding out that he too was quirkless, he fell into utter despair. Izuku's danger sense goes off as Yuga prepares to fire at him with a naval laser, with Izuku ready to defend, but Toru jumps in front and refracts the laser away. After Toru confronts Yuga about how his actions have affected everyone, with the parents trying to rebut, Izuku uses Black Whip to restrain all three of them, with him telling Yuga for them to put an end to this all now. The Ayamas are taken to the UAAV room where they're interrogated by All Might, Namasa, and the police force the UA staff, and Class 1A who are all devastated by the betrayal. Among everyone's reactions, Katsuki simply states that it's a small world, that he's another one of them that started it as quirkless. The parents explain how they know nothing about All for One, only carrying out his orders, fearing for their lives if they disobeyed, while Yuga himself confesses, feeling that he is terrible for having the nerve to try and smile with everyone like they were friends after everything he's done. Especially after seeing Izuku, another former quirkless person fighting so hard against All for One made him realize how pathetic he was, wallowing in his own despair, and that he's just a villain through and through. However, Izuku bluntly retorts, asking if that was true, then why did he try to save Katsuki and Fumikage during the training camp? as well as asking about his cheese message, now realizing that it was a cry for help, and that's why he's crying now. He continues that he knows of another hero who was manipulated by All for One, but her soul wasn't crushed, only her spirit. He states that doing wrong doesn't make you a villain for the rest of your life, as he extends his hand to Yuga, telling him he can still be a hero. Namasa dismisses Izuku's pleas, reminding him that no matter the circumstances, he still conspired with All for One, and even then, they still aren't sure if he's booby-trapped like Lady Nagant was. So, they can't allow him to talk again until he's examined at Central Hospital. He continues to interrogate the Aoyama parents only for Izuku to cut him off, reminding them that they have no way of locating All for One. This causes his classmates to remember Izuku's point about steering the villains to enter the fight, realizing Yuga may be the only one able to deceive All for One. Present Mike asks Class 1A why. With them being the greatest victims after all this, they're so willing to trust him. But Tenya simply responds that what happened is in the past. And with them being unable to realize how he's been feeling all this time, they carry some responsibility. So they must reach out to him as friends in order for them to become equals again. Ajiro also tells Yuga that while he may have thought it was impossible to go against All for One, now Izuku has finally given him and his parents a chance to break free from him, reminding him that they would never blame someone for being quirkless, or would hate them for holding back their tears and hiding their pain in secret. Namasa reminds the class that the Aoyamas already told them All for One won't believe any lies, so they need to keep a level head when Izuku is called on by Shoto Aizawa, watching him from a tablet held by President Mike. He asks Izuku if he has a plan, which he says no, followed by him addressing Namasa, taking full responsibility for not recognizing and siding with the rest of the class, informing Yuga that he has no intention of expelling him from UA. Shota reveals that he has an idea, and after the Aoyama family's ears have been covered, he informs Class 1A, the UA staff, and the police force of his plan. After the discussion, Nezu states that it seems possible, while Namasa has the Aoyama family escorted back to their HQ, telling everyone not to say a word to anyone else about the plan. Before he leaves, Izuku shouts out to Yuga, with the rest of the class looking on suddenly. Back at Heights Alliance, Class 1A takes a breather before getting ready to gear back up as everyone, with fire and rage in their eyes over the betrayal, prepares to bring down All for One once and for all. Izuku and Tenya go to the development studio in order to fix up their hero costumes, when Izuku is suddenly caught in a very familiar explosion blast. Mei Hatsume emerges from the smoke, once again landing directly on top of Izuku, as she asks him what he needs, all the while his face keeps a stern expression. Mei asks Izuku and Tenya what they need from her, with Izuku lamenting how his danger sense didn't activate. Tenya tells Mei that they came looking for repairs for their hero costumes, with her confused why they don't just take them to the item agency. Mei's increasingly nonchalant reactions cause Izuku to realize that Mei has no idea what's going on outside. Power Loader emerges from the explosions, inviting these students to see the new setup in the development studio, revealing they are in charge of both developing and controlling the UA barrier. Izuku hands Mei his mid-gauntlet, asking if she can fix it for him, but she immediately says no, as due to how damaged it is, she'd have to create a new one, and they don't have the amount of codenium required for the compression mechanism. She also quickly shuts down Tenya's requests as well, as two of her classmates approach them saying that they'll make it. 
Tenya is surprised that Mei would turn down the offer due to how much she loves making things, as Izuku looks on to see her currently working on the evacuation shelter blocks. Power Loader tells them that Mei was brought on to help strengthen the barrier, and she's been busy creating new mechanisms in case of mass evacuation. Power Loader compliments her inventive mind, and she responds with how she always needs to try and think up new babies to improve themselves. Izuku compliments Mei on how focused and busy she is with her inventions that she had no idea how the outside world was, but Mei responds calling him dense, saying that even she is aware of the trouble heroes are facing now. And while they aren't fighters, they're also doing everything they can to protect people, inventing stuff being how the support course does heroics. Before Izuku can react, Mei throws a pair of Air Force gloves attached to new makeshift gauntlets right at his face, saying that she couldn't make an exact copy but it's the best she can do, surprising Izuku that she did all that with just her left hand. She proceeds to throw a new piece of armor for Tenya right at his face too, exasperating the support students that she did it all so fast. She concludes, saying for them to tell the rest of the hero students that they'll all win this. Outside, Izuku and Tenya meet up with the rest of Class 1A and Mount Lady, who reminds them that even after learning what they've dealt with, their main objective is tracking down and eliminating the remnants of the villains, and they must do it all without haste. Mina wonders if Yuga will still take their hand and help them, with Izuku and Shoto replying that they believe he will come back. Following Izuku, the Class 1A search squad assembles and heads out. Later that night, Class 1A ended up with nothing and no information about the villains' whereabouts. After returning to Heights Alliance, Izuku laments the lack of any free time given to them due to the number of prisoners still being on the run and the whereabouts of All for One. As his class takes a break, he thinks about how he hasn't been able to thank Ochako properly yet. All Might, along with Namasa and Nezu, burst into the dorm to inform them about their secret finalized plans for the second upcoming war. They explain to the class the full extent of their plans, that they've been purposefully running themselves around to make All for One, who's presumably observing them through search, believe they're being exhausted, allowing them to catch him off guard and utilize Yuga to choose the location to lure him out. Class 1A, especially Izuku, reacts in joyousness over Yuga's involvement, but when asked about how to get around All for One being able to perceive their lies, they bring in Shota's next part of the plan, Hitoshi Shinso. To the class's further surprise, he reveals that he's trained his quirk to allow himself to be able to make people speak when brainwashed, and that they can use this in order to get the Aoyamas to communicate with All for One without affecting their emotions. When asked about what happens after they lure the villains out, and if it's possible to deploy all the heroes without being found out, All Might states that the heroes don't have to be there in advance, revealing Shota's next piece to use Nato to copy Kurogiri's warp gate. They proceed to assign each of the students to different teams to face down the villains, with Izuku obviously chosen to deal with Tomura. During their bath after the discussions, Izuku talks to Shoto about his worries for him fighting Dabi, but he tells him it's his decision and he needs to face him himself. Shoto then shows off his new technique, Flash Fire Fist Phosphor, which gets Izuku really excited. After he explains how it works, Shoto turns to Izuku, now feeling more confident in affirming the reason why he was born in this family, thanking him by repeating the words said to him at the sports festival, that it is his power. The next day, Nezu announces to the civilians within UA that Tomura will make his big move in four days, with Class 1A giving their thanks to everyone at the entrance, and Izuku saying he's had more than enough time to clean himself up, with them all ready to head back out. Class 1A each say goodbye to their family members and their friends. Izuku reunites with his mother Inko, Kota, and Eri one last time. Class 1A reconvenes at the makeshift fortress, dubbed Troy, a fortified structure where they can stay. After moving in, Izuku spots Ochako reflecting outside and jumps down to see her. He thanks Ochako for what she did earlier, which she simply brushes off, before saying she's just watching the city. She proceeds to tell him she feels weird, as back when she was shouting from the top of the building, Himiko popped into her head. She tries to brush off her feelings by thinking of all the wrong they've done, but Izuku replies that he understands her, having seen a little boy crying inside of Tomura, and that even though there's no way to avoid the battle, he can't ignore that side of him. Final War Arc Izuku stays with Class 1A at Troy until he's contacted by Yuga and agrees to meet him at a disclosed location in a parking lot nearby. He asks if he's supposed to be detained, and Yuga says his parents' lawyer had him released. Yuga proceeds to tell Izuku about All for One's true goals, to become the demon lord of the world after chaos spreads throughout the world unchecked. With Japan fallen, the economy is shattered, along with various villain attacks all over the world, facing an immense crisis like the Great Depression or even the period of the advent of quirks. Chaos has already begun to spread unchecked. Izuku declares that he'll never let that happen, with Yuga apologizing as All for One finally re-emerges from behind him. All for One congratulates Yuga and prepares to attack Izuku, when Yuga overcomes his greatest fear and betrays All for One, hitting him with his naval laser. 
Izuku deploys Smokescreen to cover Yuga, telling him how good his performance was that they managed to trick him. Annoyed, and since using Search, he can tell all the heroes Tamara faced are miles away, All For One uses his warping quirk to summon an army of villains to over one one for all once and for all. However, All For One is once again taken aback when he spots Kurogiri's warp gate starting to appear behind them, with Neito Monoma appearing from one of them. As the rest of the heroes begin emerging from the gates, Yuga declares to All For One Japan isn't finished with them, and that today is the day where he falls. With all of the villains in one place, All Might activates the Troy system as cages emerge from beneath the battlefield, trapping all the villains in individual metal containers. Neito summons several more warp gates around the cages as the heroes prepare to shove them all in to split up the villains. Izuku blasts all of the villains with air force to push them all through the new warp gates. However, before he can follow Katsuki into his warp gate to face Tomura, he's suddenly cut off guard by a whip, forcefully dragging him into a separate gate to his confusion. Izuku ended up getting warped to an aquarium in Okoto Island, along with Ochako and Suyu, by Himiko using her whip. He's confused that his danger sense didn't even activate, staring down Himiko. He contacts the UA Flying Fortress where he was supposed to be, and asks for a warp gate at his location, but Shota reveals that he and the other heroes cannot help him due to the new abilities of Tomura, despite Neito using erasure on him to keep the villain from using his quirks. He tells Izuku that he's on his own to find a way back to the mainland. Before he can leave, Himiko ambushes him, declaring her love and asking Izuku not to go. He's still surprised that even when she's charging at him, his danger sense isn't activating, wondering how someone like her could get so far in life. Izuku asks what she wants as Himiko tells him to be her boyfriend, leading to confused reactions from him and Ochako. Izuku freaks out with flabbergasting reactions, asking what she's talking about, leading Himiko to confess that she's felt this way ever since they first met, since he was so beaten up and looked exactly like her first crush, her face twisting, saying she wants to suck his blood and become him. Himiko asks him what he wants to do with her, and Izuku responds by saying that he too wanted to become like All Might, and that he understands her and how fulfilling it feels. However, he proceeds to say he could never share the same heart and mind as him or think about hurting the ones he loved. Enraged, Himiko attacks him and Ochako with her knives and whips, with Suyu and Ochako holding their own against Himiko. Ochako tells Izuku to leave now to deal with Tamara and to trust in them to handle Himiko. Izuku nods in agreement and speeds away. Using Float, Fajin, and his Air Force, Izuku blasts his way across the ocean. However, laments that he's still too slow, noting that there's nothing for Black Whip to sling off of, so he's unable to use his faux 100% technique. He thinks about needing to get faster when the second user of One For All appears, telling him not to lose his cool. He reminds him his gear can't withstand using One For All at 100%, asking if he plans on hurting himself before he even reaches the battlefield. He then asks if he tried to activate his meta ability, which Izuku responds yes to. He tells him that it's only to be used as a last resort, as after melding with One For All, it has evolved into a unique power and something which can't be wielded like it used to. He tells him to believe in his friends who are all out there for their own reasons and to focus on his own battle. As Izuku continued to travel across the ocean, Yoichi senses something and informs him that he has a bad feeling, much to his surprise when multiple figures start to appear in the distance. These turn out to be the American fighter jets, planning to escort him back to UA. As he uses Black Whip to sling to the side of the jet, the Bravo leader informs him that they were meant to defend the aerial space around UA, further saying that they've remained in Japan even despite their orders to retreat because their gal decided to wager everything on him, having inherited All Might's power. The fleet proceeds to create a path of jets for Izuku to swing off of, telling him to go so he can take down the greatest villain once and for all. Izuku eventually makes it to the Flying Fortress, using Black Whip to cling onto two poles outside, waiting for the electromagnetic barrier to be opened. Once it finally is, after Mirio is able to distract Tamara for long enough, Izuku prepares to slingshot his way in, as he and Tamara both exchange glances, releasing himself right into Tamara with a smash. Arriving in the battlefield with the barrier closing, Izuku apologizes for being late and asks if everyone is okay, only to be stunned into silence after witnessing an unconscious Katsuki laying on the ground. Seeing the other barely conscious heroes around sends Izuku into a further induced stress. All the while, Tamara mocks him for his tardiness, figuring that Himiko had something to do with it, and asking if he has any excuses or reasons to run away from his responsibilities like everyone else. The fear and rage over everyone starts to once again overwhelm Izuku's emotions as his quirks begin to spiral out of control, unable to move. As Tamara begins to make his way over to him to take advantage of his current state, Mirio reappears to Izuku, attempting to talk some sense into him. He tells him that everyone is still breathing and that Edshot is saving Katsuki's life, so they need to keep on fighting 
because they haven't lost anyone yet. Tomura claims it's all merely empty talk to avoid facts and reality, but Mirio continues that as heroes, they have to talk the talk in order to turn their ideals into reality. Remembering back to All Might's words of encouragement and Daigoro's words to keep his emotions under control, Izuku calms down and comes to his senses, apologizing to Mirio. He then turns to the villain, calling out to All for One, and with the One for All vestiges backing him up, asks if Tamara is still in there. In response, Tamara claims that he no longer exists, that Tamara and All for One have fully merged into a new being, with All for One primarily in charge, telling the hero that despite what he's scheming, he won't get his ideal ending. However, Mirio retorts back, telling Izuku that when he spoke harshly to him, it caused him to throw a fit as if he were a child, and the more he was provoked, the more unstable he became, figuring he isn't as fully merged as he believes. Looking at the disembodied faces of the Shimura family on his left arm, Nana sees Kotaro's looking at her, causing her and Izuku to realize he's still in there. With all of his powers, Tomura jumps into the air, shaking the entire fortress, charging at Izuku and angrily declaring that he's taking back one for all. His smash erupts throughout the whole battlefield, but Izuku is able to stop the attack, telling all for one he's the one who won't get his ideal ending. He uses a combination of Black Whip and Fa Jin to create the boosted binding combo, Black Chain, wrapping it around Tomura his arm and sending him flying. Tamara attempts to try and wrestle the chain off, only to be surprised when Izuku undoes it himself. Concentrating to himself, the second user tells him to make it quick, because once he starts using his quirk, they need to finish him off in five minutes or the world is doomed. Izuku activates the second user's quirk, gear shift, powering his ultimate move, transmission, where in the blink of an eye, he appears under Tamara, punching him with second gear, third gear, and finally top gear, sending him flying upward. Thanks to the quirk's ability to let the user change the target's speed when touched, Izuku enables gear shift overdrive, turning his 100% power into 120%. Yoichi declares to his brother that today is the day they finally end things, as Izuku unleashes a fully powered Detroit smash directly into Tamara's stomach. Thanks to gear shift's significantly increased power after melding with one for all, Izuku is able to greatly enhance his speed, and unleashes a Detroit smash quintuple at Tamara, revving around the arena too quickly for him to defend. The villain tries to predict where his next attack will be, but at the last moment, Izuku shifts into low gear, causing Tamara to miss the swing as the quirk is able to adjust speed while ignoring the laws of inertia. Tamara attempts to counter, but Izuku uses danger sense to detect the threat and immediately blocks his vision with smokescreen. He then uses float to quickly rise into the air, restraining and reeling Tamara up with black whip, preparing to combine the power stored up thanks to the quintuple attack with Fajin, executing another blast of overdrive with gear shift, unleashing the full might of one for all. Thinking about everyone that has been injured in battle, Izuku declares that he's gonna give it all he's got, telling All For One he won't let him hurt anyone else, pounding Tamara with his ultimate smash, breaking many of his fingers apart. As Tamara's body falls with a gaping hole in his chest, Yoichi states how One For All and All For One have begun to resonate with each other, able to see his brother within. He continues to say that what Mirio said is correct, that the course of the battle and the events that led to this moment has shaken the balance of their melding. The second user tells Izuku to remember what Nana said, and not to take it easy yet, as he attempts attempts to recover. Just then, Tamara screams out as the heroes realize he still isn't done. Meanwhile, Shota, Manuel, and Nato were caught off guard by the sudden arrival of Kurogiri, who teleported himself and present Mike from a warp gate, along with another portal containing twice doubles conjured by Himiko that begin to swarm them. The doubles proceed to attack Manuel and Shota and dogpile on Nato, causing him to shut his eyes and undo erasure. At that moment, Tamara unleashes a massive explosion, destroying most of the UA fortress. With the power line busted and the electromagnetic barrier barely standing, Mandalay then reports in that someone has hacked into their system and they've lost control of the flight system, causing the fortress to be on the verge of falling to the ground, warning them of what will happen if Tamara escapes. Izuku notices a warp gate beginning to emerge near Tamara, realizing it is Kurogiri and wondering what happened at Central Hospital. He also sees after Tamara's explosion, his body has started to molt away, as if he were shedding his skin. Tamara then surprisingly addresses Izuku, asking what he's going to do if he said he's here now, telling him that they aren't going to have a chat at the mall since he's his villain. Izuku realizes that Tamara's original persona has emerged. He begins to worry about how he needs to stop Yue from crashing to save everyone inside, but also needs to keep an eye on Kurogiri so Tamara won't escape. Due to the immense power after using gear shift, he finds it harder to breathe. As he knows when his cells don't get a moment to rest, his body won't get enough oxygen and he will be at the 
risk of breaking down. The second user reminds him that he can't fall yet. However, he continues that there is a silver lining, as thanks to One for All and All for One resonating with each other, they can see inside each other, and can see All for One currently unable to manipulate Tamara's body. He tells Izuku to do whatever to make his body act, as the chain of events leading to this moment will be his power. As both Izuku and Tamara attempt to regain their bearings, Tamara's words continue to ring through Izuku's head. As Yue continues on a collision course toward the city, suddenly they're saved when Yue is stopped in the air through what Mandalay describes as a trampoline in the air. Izuku immediately realizes what she's talking about and happily cries out to Gentle. The reformed criminal had joined the fight and used his ultimate move, Gently Super Lover, to prevent Yue from plummeting, while La Brava worked alongside the police force to hack back into the systems. However, Daigoro warns Izuku that Tamara was starting to move again, and even though they averted the crash, if he touches the ground, it will all be for nothing. Tamara finally gets a handle of things again and prepares to make the first move by touching the ground with his decay. However, before he can do so, a speeding bullet is suddenly shot from nowhere and hits Tamara, splitting his right arm off. Izuku recognizes the shape of the bullet and is greatly surprised to see that another former enemy has returned to aid them, Lady Nagant. Lady Nagant also proceeds to shoot his left arm off as well, giving Izuku enough time to recover. With All For One's control of Tamara losing grip, he tries to command Kuragiri to transport him to his other self at Gunga, but Kuragiri begins to stutter, failing to comply. Tamara manages to regain complete control of his body, revealing that he kept his origin hidden deep within All For One so that it could fester and reclaim control in defiance of All For One's attempts to absorb him. Tamara decides that he doesn't need One For All and that he won't be controlled anymore, vowing that his heart will never Waver. Tomura tells Izuku that Tomura Shigaraki and Tenko Shimura have one and only hope, the destruction of everything that stemmed from the abusive house he grew up in and will stop at nothing to eradicate everything associated with it, which will be the only thing that will save him. Just then, Izuku grabs Tomura and blasts both of them outside of UA. As he thinks about how since Tomura can use his quirks again, he can't fight him in the tomb anymore. Landing on the ground near the city ruins, Izuku states that while he won't let him do that, he also can't pretend he didn't see him crying back there, as both both arch enemies prepare to fight once again. Unbeknownst to them, the students from the business course were recording the brutal battle from above UA, which is then broadcast live by La Brava. The battle between the hero and villain proceeds at a stalemate, as Izuku uses Black Whip to keep Tamara restrained, unable to use his quirks. All the while, Tamara continues to cackle maniacally in his efforts to break his hold. Over the course of their battle, a rewinding All for One has been making his way over to their location in order to forcefully give Tamara his copy of the All for One quirk, thus solidifying his control over the body. An armored up All Might attempted to distract him, but eventually proved fruitless. All for One tries to use his warping quirk to teleport Tamara to him, but he simply swallows the gloop, telling his master not to butt in. In response, All for One grabs the battered All Might by the leg and flies over to greet them personally. Tamara attempts to distract Izuku by telling him to go back and save All Might, thinking it perfect as then in the meantime he could go back to UA and break everyone who beat him earlier. Still keeping his grip, Izuku looks over at the dangling All Might in the air and thinks about how he thought he put his tearful days behind him, but now he's holding back his tears once again so he can be the best apprentice. However, he senses the vestige of All Might within One for All starting to prematurely fade away, and can't help but let his emotions out as he screams to All Might. At this moment, All Might is preparing to detonate himself to take out All for One for good. However, instead, All for One destroys All Might's destructive device, preventing him from achieving a heroic death and now having him completely at his mercy. Still keeping his grip on Tamara, all Izuku can do is horrifyingly watch as All for One carries All Might's body above his, ready to rip it apart in front of everyone and around around the world. Izuku starts to tear up and desperately begs for someone to save him. Just then, from above the floating UA, Izuku turns around and sees a figure emerging from the smoking structure. He's completely astonished to see an alive and well Katsuki standing there, as the two look on at each other. Despite being critically wounded, Katsuki remains determined and starts blasting downwards towards Izuku and Tamara. Izuku realizes what Katsuki was trying to do, and while still keeping his hold on Tamara with Black Whip, he reaches his arm out, grabbing Katsuki, and the three begin to twist. The second the second user calls out to Izuku, warning him about using gear shift again as it will cause the recoil blowback to hit harder for him, and must only be used after he's found the assured path to success. 
However, seeing the disappearing All Might vestige within One for All, Izuku goes all out and uses Gear Shift in conjunction with Katsuki's cluster and throws him over, sending Katsuki barreling through the skies at insanely blistering speeds. Tomura comments how he won't make it in time, telling Izuku how the All Might inside him used to look all faint because he was still alive, but now he's looking more solid and taking true form, indicating that he's about to die. He happily states how the man showed the world a dream, and with his death it will be over and will bring everyone back to harsh reality. In spite of that, within mere seconds, Katsuki defies fate and successfully steals back All Might from All for One's hands. The vestige within One for All suddenly turns back into a spirit, surprising Izuku and the second user, as Katsuki yells out that they're going to win. With All Might safe, Izuku refocuses on his fight with Tamara. Tamara manages to partially break free of Black Whip, saying he will destroy his hold on him again and again. Izuku thinks about how he's been able to use Danger Sense to keep his distance from Tamara's reach, but still doesn't know how he has a way to deal with Tamara's regeneration generation, decay, and his enhanced body. He knows his next gear shift will be his last one since the blowback will prevent him from moving again, knowing he will have to end this fight right here and now as he activates it, ready to go beyond. Personality Izuku is a very timid, reserved, and polite boy, frequently overreacting to abnormal situations with exaggerated expressions. Due to years of being looked down on by Katsuki for lacking a quirk, he's initially portrayed as insecure, tearful, vulnerable, and non-expressive. These traits are especially present around Katsuki, who also constantly harangued him for his aspirations to become a hero. However, after being accepted into UA, making new friends, and facing Katsuki during the battle trial arc, Izuku gradually matures into a more confident and brave person who's always eager to prove his worth as a hero. Eventually developing strong leadership skills, which combined with his passion and strategic abilities have turned him into a central figure within class 1A alongside Katsuki. Izuku is a diligent and strong-willed student, being extremely and sometimes scarily enthusiastic about topics related to heroes. His dream drives him to write down notes about everything he learns in regards to heroes' quirks and fighting capabilities. Thanks to this practice, Izuku has developed a great analytical mind and can form complex battle plans in a few seconds, factoring in the best ways he can utilize the quirks of allies and enemies alike for his own advantage. Izuku externalizes his observations through endless mumbling, a habit that annoys and or creeps out his peers. Izuku often writes down his observations in a variety of notebooks he titles as Hero Analysis for the Future, checking on them regularly during school activities or at night. Izuku is caring and emotional, never hesitating to help or rescue someone in danger, even if he knows that he might not be strong or otherwise qualified enough to do it. Often, he does this on instinct, taking a more careless approach than the usual overthinking he goes through and putting himself in peril in order to protect someone. All Might claims that this trait gives Izuku the most important natural and innate instinct to be a hero, the pure and genuine desire to help people. However, Izuku putting others' lives above his own can go to the extreme, to the point where he has little to no sense of self-preservation. Katsuki speculates that the bullying Izuku received for being quirkless made him internalize that his life had less worth. Izuku will routinely break his arms for the sake of others, even if it's not completely necessary, such as demanding Shoto to unlock his full potential by using his fire side. This can make Izuku somewhat short-sighted as he continued to break his arms despite warnings that he could permanently paralyze them and cut his hero career short. Eventually, Izuku relented, adapting a battle style to put less strain on his body. Though, when he's in a particularly tight situation, he will pull back on old habits. Izuku is known to help or lecture people with personal and emotional problems, regardless regardless if it's his business or not, claiming that a hero should meddle in other people's lives. This audacious spirit, while initially viewed as perplexing or even insane by others, is also recognized by many, and has earned him the loyalty, gratitude, and respect of characters that were previously antagonistic towards him, such as Tenya Ida, Shoto, Hitoshi Shinso, Koda Izumi, Sir Nightai, and even the likes of the hero killer Stain and Lady Nagant. He has a strong fascination with heroes and is shown well-versed in their history, sometimes even surprising the heroes themselves with his vast knowledge of their abilities and past exploits. He's prone to geeking out and rambling on about the heroes he meets, often bringing up their history and accomplishments, while also being eager to share his knowledge with others. Of all heroes, the symbol of peace, All Might has impacted and modeled Izuku's life the most. Many of Izuku's decisions and actions result from his desire to become a pro hero, similar to All Might, and thus he has a great devotion to him. Izuku is an avid collector of All Might merchandise, has knowledge of his numerous feats of heroism, no matter how minor, 
and emulates many of his traits. Having inherited his quirk, one of Izuku's current priorities is to be able to live up to his idol's legacy, as he's always looking for ways to improve his usage of one for all, being aware of the immense pressure that comes with succeeding the greatest hero of all time. The unwavering trust and approval Izuku receives from All Might has been vital to his development as a hero, especially when the aforementioned feelings of self-doubt and unworthiness plague his mind. Izuku appears to have a more brash and abrasive side to him, which typically shows up when he finds himself in combat. This side of him drives him to act more like Katsuki, being rather loud and unwavering with a strong drive towards victory. He claims that this is because he sees Katsuki as the embodiment of what someone who strives for victory should be. He's also admitted that he doesn't like this side of himself very much and tends to try to keep it in check. He does, however, find himself giving in to this almost feral rage when in dire situations and faced against opponents who would brutally hurt people he cares for, like in his battles against Overhaul and Tamara. Izuku also possesses an empathetic side and has developed a desire to want to understand the villains he has faced and potentially save them from themselves. While initially believing Tamara to be a madman who just wants to meaninglessly hurt others, after learning about his tragic story and sensing the pain in his heart through the connection between One for All and All for One, this reinvigorates his belief that a great hero is someone who saves others, not kills them, and because of this, desires to learn how they became villains and to see if there is any way to prevent a fight, though he does concede that he may very well have to kill Tamara. While he is not naive in this ideology and will resort to violence if there is no other option, like during his second fight with Muscular, he truly wishes to reach out and help villains recover and reform themselves, even giving Kaichisaki, who he was still bitter towards, the chance to save his boss should he make amends with Eri. At the same time, Izuku desires to save Tamara from his life of villainy and pain, even when such a notion feels unlikely and is deemed pretentious by others, showcasing his great sense of humanity. Following the conclusion of the Paranormal Liberation War, Izuku has begun to drastically change his behavior. After suffering from the trauma brought on by the war, seeing countless innocent people have their lives ruined, ruined by the current state of society, having all for one relentlessly target him for his quirk, and bearing the responsibility of protecting his friends, Izuku became more cold and distant toward others. When All For One vowed to break him both mentally and physically, he became increasingly paranoid about how much harm he would bring to those around him. The overwhelming stress and burden resulted in him rushing into fights and leaving behind All Might and the other heroes looking after him so that no one else would get hurt. His disregard for his own well-being becomes the worst it ever has as well, neglecting to look after his basic needs like sleeping and eating. Kotsky has noted this behavior to be very similar to how All Might was when he was the symbol of peace. This increasingly driven, serious side of him has even caused civilians to note that he doesn't look like a hero. After his friends from UA get through to him and take him back in, these traits seem to have diminished, with him now being determined in stopping all for one alongside his friends, teachers, and allies. Abilities Izuku's greatest asset prior to receiving his quirk was his vast knowledge of fundamental hero skills and tactics. Izuku studied pro heroes for years and is able to apply that knowledge during crisis situations in a practical manner. His immense bravery and desire to become a hero were also important factors in giving him the mentality to protect others. Before gaining his quirk from All Might, he took on the Sludge Villain and rescued Katsuki because of his boldness and application of heroic skills, something that deeply impressed the number one hero. Upon training with All Might, Izuku inherited one for all from him and was granted the ability to harness a stockpile of powerful energy. He can move faster than the eye can see and take down an enormous villain bot in a single punch, but the physical backlash at that time prevented Izuku from being able to fight properly or compete with his peers on an even playing field. Even so, he still possessed impressive physical durability, and his drive allowed him to withstand the drawbacks of one for all for the most part. Despite the intense drawbacks of one for all, Izuku's wits provide him with ways to use one for all that are still effective in battle. He also retains his ability to act instinctively based on his notes and possesses basic hand-to-hand -hand combat knowledge. By applying those correctly, Izuku is able to fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with even the strongest students of Class 1A, such as Katsuki and Shoto. Under the tutelage of Gran Torino, Izuku acquired more control over One for All, leading to the creation of Full Cowl, a technique that would eventually become a key component of his fighting style. With Izuku gaining greatly enhanced maneuverability, strength, and a significant reduction in in the physical backlash created when using his quirk uncontrollably, he was able to drastically improve his overall fighting capabilities. His newly attained abilities garnered praise from Gran Torino, who noted that Izuku was on a higher level than he was compared to the sports festival. This specific improvement enabled Izuku to compete more closely with his classmates in the physical aspects of the hero course, and even allowed him to fight properly against top villains like the 
hero killer Stain, who had single-handedly bested various pro heroes. As Izuku's mastery over his quirk improves, so do his practical skills. Also, when his skills and experience increase, so does his confidence, which is said to be a source of inspiration to his classmates as well. His body, however, still remains relatively vulnerable to one for all's drawbacks, which gives Izuku a disadvantage against enemies like Muscular or Overhaul, whose quirks were proven to be too powerful against one for all's weaker outputs, forcing scenarios where Izuku had to sacrifice his body in order to go all out. In order to protect his own body, particularly his arms, Izuku eventually develops his own unique fighting style, diverging himself further from All Might's. Currently, Izuku is acknowledged by his classmates as a strong, reliable, leading figure, with both his strength and intelligence being respected equally. However, Izuku's quirk is still an enigma for them, including Izuku himself, which makes him an unpredictable ally for better or worse. As Izuku keeps growing, so does One For All, and with the prospect of having new abilities unlocked in the future, Izuku has to work even harder in order to fully dominate the quirk which was passed down to him. By the time of the Paranormal Liberation War, Izuku's skills have grown exponentially to the point where he's able to fight alongside exceptional pro heroes such as Eraserhead, Gran Torino, and even the current number one pro hero, Endeavor. But his biggest feat thus far is holding his own against the Grand Commander of the Liberation Front, Tamura Shigaraki, who is powered by All for One and a modified body with strength comparable to All Might, and forcing the all-powerful villain on the defensive despite the latter easily overpowering the top pro heroes. Following the aftermath of the Paranormal Liberation War, Izuku has displayed even greater mastery over his quirks and showcased the ability to easily outmaneuver his enemies with Black Whip and 45% of One for All, detect danger without gaining sensory overload, prove and wrong by creating a new ultimate move using smokescreen, and easily alternate between his arsenal of quirks in his fights with Muscular and Lady Nagant. In his fight against Class 1A, Izuku displayed himself to be easily capable of fighting on even terms with some of UA High School's most powerful students and was shown capable of completely dominating them even when severely outnumbered before succumbing to exhaustion and stress. During the course of the final war, it's stated that Izuku is the only one who has a chance at defeating the fully powered Tamara, and in their final encounter, he's achieved equal standing with him in terms of strength and speed, despite the latter changing into his final form. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out all these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.